Greetings, everyone. Welcome to THL Pride Cup. Um, I am Lotus Knight, one or your stream operator for today, and I am joined by Ron Mexico. Um, one second, so everyone can hear you, Ron. Ron, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great, man. I'm very excited to be helping cast this tournament. We got a, a a nice little standard tournament lineup for you, too. So let's dive into it. Yeah. Um, we're also joined by Dollabiz. Dollabiz, how are you today? Oh, I'm so excited to be here, just like Ron. And the the not only the ability to cast a tournament so soon after a set release, right? Wailing Caverns about what, like 70 hours old at this point, just to see what everybody's uh, been cooking up for a best of, you know, yet now everything that's been in the laboratory put to the test today. Can you win a tournament with a band format and everything? Can you put together a strategy that puts all those, uh, that maximizes the opportunities of the new stuff? I'm just interested to see, or is the old stuff just good enough, just hyper refined? Uh, the crucible of tournament play, we shall find out. Awesome. Finally, last but not least, we're joined by Two Star Mako. Mako, how are you today? Uh, I'm doing fantabulous. I got me myself some Jimmy Johns and uh, you know some some H2O. Maybe I'll grab myself a beer. I'm doing just fine. Awesome. So this is the THL Pride um, tournament. Tell us a little bit about that, Mako. Since you've been involved in the planning, what is THL Pride Month? And what are we really doing here? Sure. Um, well, it's not just THL Pride Month. It's it's all of June is is Pride Month um, in general. Um, and we decided this year and future years, starting this year, to uh, to to highlight some of our LGBTQIA plus uh, community members. So. We are uh, hosting two tournaments, one that you are about to watch right now, which is a standard format tournament. Um, and then we're hosting a Battlegrounds tournament in two weeks from today. That would be the 20th. Um, and uh, we will be raising money all throughout June, um, especially during these tournaments. We're going to put a big focus on that during these tournaments. But uh, all throughout June... All of all subscriptions, donations, uh, bits, uh, merch sales. We, uh, if you go to our merch store, we have a, a pride collection in our, our merch store. Um, all of it's going to be going straight to the Trevor Project. If you look on your screen, you should have um, a donation bar. Um, I think as of right now, we've raised about $100. Our goal by the end of the mm -hmm. month is to hit 1000 I don't know how stretch of a goal that is, but we're going we're gonna to reach for the stars here. We're a small community, so we'll see if we can make it. Um, but our, our goal is to hit about $1,000 to donate straight to the Trevor Project. If you look under your stream, you'll see a, uh, a button um, that says Teach O Pride Donations. If you click on that, that goes straight to the our donation campaign, um, and all of that money goes straight to our our Trevor Project campaign. Um, oh, what was I gonna say? Oh God, I should have written this down. I'm not. I don't write things down. I probably should start practicing that. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. So, uh, I th I think a lot of people. Whenever they think donations, they feel like they have to give a lot. And uh, that's definitely not the case. Um, if you are, um, you know, if you donate like $5, $1, like it's all of it's very, very uh, welcome. We are, um, you know, it, everything gets us closer to our goal. And, you know, any any dollar amount helps, you know, our, our donations in general. So, you know, don't don't worry about um having to donate a huge amount if you have a couple of bucks that you are welcome or you're you're able to to spare we we greatly appreciate it um for those that don't know the trevor project is an american nonprofit organization founded in 1998 focused on suicide prevention efforts among lesbian gay bisexual transgender queer and questioning youth um so we're gonna be giving all our money to them nice that's awesome. Um, speaking of awesome, should we get started with our tournament here? Oh, yeah. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Time to light these engines. Yeah. So we're going to start um, by reviewing the players um, that are in the tournament. So I'm going to read the list of players. The names will appear on stream and we'll alternate between uh, my casters here. Um, just giving their opinion on what they think these players are, who is most likely to win, who do they think is going to make par, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, we'll rotate. Let's do um, Ron, then Dollabiz, and then Two Star Mako. If everyone's fine with that order, absolutely sounds good. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be yeah, two out of three, like, like nine out of ten dentists, or you know, four out of five doctors. It's got to be two out of three casters. You can't. Otherwise, it's yep. suspicious. Exactly. So, Ron, I'll open with you. Our first player is Fogey8. Oh, man. Um, one of the uh, favorites, in my opinion, to win the whole tournament. Fogey is an incredibly strong player. Uh, I had the rude awakening experience of getting 0 3 against him in Pro Series to start off the Pro Season. Uh, a Masters Tour qualifier winner, and just a very, very consistent player. Keep an eye on him for sure. Yeah. Um, up next, Dollabiz. Tell me about Vino Scumoni. Now, I'm going to have to be totally upfront that I'm not personally extremely uh, familiar with Vino Scumoni's play, but I think that if you have the the willingness to jump in here and put your strategies to the test in front of not just us, but the world... I have to assume that there's a, uh, a, a certain amount of, of bravery and also a certain amount of confidence in the lineup, in the strategy. So I wouldn't at all be surprised to see Vino go super deep this tournament. Mm -hmm. Well said. Props for the name Vino Spumoni as well. I know yes. they're a rookie yes. to CHL and they've started out pretty strong. So uh, player yeah. to watch. Definitely. Um, up next... This is the one I have the easiest time pronouncing. It is my fellow Brazilian Carvalho. I'll, you know, I'll throw that right to you. What do you think, Lotus? <laughs> um, I think, I mean, Carvalho is actually a really crazy player. I've seen him bring the weirdest lineups, but very nice guy. We've had a lot of fun chatting about Hearthstone, and I think he's going to fit right at home here. And if I can jump in for Carvalho in just a second, I saw him play one of the craziest celestial druid lists yesterday. And if there was no, if I've never seen anything quite like a combo that pulls out Cthune in a turn, <laughs> it was, uh, it was, it was spectacular on like turn eight, <laughs> it was uh, straight into Cthune. So he's got the, uh, all that to say, he's got the dexterity necessary to pull off APM style combos. Mm -hmm. um, the next one we have is, and I'm not sure they're playing since they're late for check-in. So I'm going to jump a bit. The ones who haven't checked in, um, just find exactly who's the next one here. We have Azonix. Ron, tell me a little bit about Azonix. Uh, well, you've done a lot better uh, since some of the uh, Harsh Center episodes in pronouncing Azonix. So props to you for that. Uh, a solid player in the Pro Series. Uh, we've seen them do pretty well. And um, appearing in THL, I think this is either maybe their second or third season in THL. Um, definitely another strong player. Uh, it, it seems like we've just got a field full of them. And uh, I would say so far, I'm seeing just contenders across the board. So another, uh, I mean, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but player to watch might be the entire field of, of players. But uh, keep an eye on this one, too. Sure. Um, Dollabiz, it's time to talk about Astral Frog. Yeah, actually, this is going to sound a lot like what Ron Mexico just said, because uh, Astral Frog recently on Team Dabs on him brought Itachi to a five game series <laughs> uh, in the previous week. So, I mean, you want to talk about, you know, it Itachi is one of those uh, players who have, who, um, you know, whenever, if you're ever even to, able to take a game off of them, at least uh, for me, I'm always uh, surprised and it has yet to happen. So Astral Frog being able to take Itachi the full round and actually just showing a really strong four and four record this season uh, for team dabs on them. I mean, I see no reason why Astral Frog, you know, just remains, keeps a cool head and is able to hit some, hit some draws. I could see them making it all the way to the, to the, to the end of the big show. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Marco, what do you think about Roadrunner? I don't care, and you know why? Yeah. Because our boy Boozasaurus just checked in and registered with two minutes left. You the love to see skipped, it. The man who skipped the entire most recent THL season to take a break has joined this tournament with two minutes. Wow. Will we see an upset? I think I I I mean I look at this entire field and I see booze at the bottom. No offense, uh, but you know taking some time off, you're you're a little rusty. So I'm excited to see what happens there. Uh, but anyways, Roadrunner, scary competition uh, for for lots of these lots of these players, especially some of the ones that you're about to talk about here in a second because we have we have some heavy hitters coming up real quick. We do have some heavy hitters um, now. The next one, I think everyone knows him. He's been a really, just a really active player in THL. A lot of fun to play against. Um, Ron, tell me a little bit about Always Just In Time, also known as Just In Time. Always Just In Time. Uh, just such an incredible player. He's already shown up and won titles in THL just from like barely having been around in THL for, you know, a, a good stretch of time, it just immediate impact. Uh, he's showed up on THL content shows as well. And just a really strong through and through player. Uh, if, well, depending on how much time he spent on his road trip, not playing Hearthstone and how much he's prepped for this tournament, I would have him as my favorite for winning it all. Uh, but he might just be out here memeing too, because he was road tripping and he's taking it easy. Depending on which just in time we see, uh, this one might be the winner of the whole thing. Sure. Um, our next player, uh, Dollabiz, is Captain Extraordinaire Diamond. Yeah, Diamond is just a, a, a fixture. Anyone who's familiar with any amount of THL knows him from the saloon, from Hearth Center, from Tavern Talk. Well, one of the stream operators and a caster. Diamond is a is a load bearing pillar <laughs> uh, in the uh, in the Team Hearth Legends uh, community and uh, also a teammate of Astral Frog, if I'm not mistaken, on Team Dabs on him uh, in at least in the Hero series. So, you know, Diamond, uh, I I am personally rooting for Diamond. I would like I would like nothing more than to see Diamond go <laughs> go all the way. Awesome, um, Marco. I'll throw back to you with. Maniac Monday winner, MMW. I think you just kind of said it yourself right there, right? <laughs> he's already <laughs> winning tournaments in THL. This is just another one. He's just going to add this trophy to his wall. Yeah. Yeah, that would be really crazy. Now, our last player who has checked in and who we have not talked about, I'll give it to Ron. It is Mr. Python. Mr. Python, uh, so far, um, finally dropped out of first place in our crossover player race for all the series across THL, but you can't say enough about this guy's talent. Mr. Python has been so incredibly consistent across multiple formats, and yes, that definitely includes standards, so, uh, a heavy, heavy hitter for sure, and, um, you know, I'm going to guess that Justin is not prepping a whole lot for this one, so I'm going to go out on a limb and say Mr. Python wins this tournament here. Nice. Um, anyone wants to make a call about who wins the tournament while we're preparing to load the first match? I mean, we, 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 we talked about all these players and the odds. There's a part of me that wants to just watch the world burn, agree with uh, two-star Mako here, and just say, it's booze time. <laughs> booze, hey. booze of source rolls in here two minutes before the buzzer and just, <laughs> just, just uh, like big Lebowski's his way all the way to the end. <laughs> you know what? There's precedent for that. Shock <laughs> joined our last tournament um, two weeks ago, maybe, uh, right before the buzzer and won the whole thing. That was the Nas tournament that Lotus and I casted. So, hey, uh, he's, he's following the strategy. Mm-hmm. Look, if there's a strategy that works, there's no reason to de why deviate. It's a proven strategy. Exactly. 
All right, so we got Mako's pick is booze. Dollar Bill's pick is booze. I'm going with Mr. Python. Let's let's see how it goes. Those are some cool picks. I, <laughs> if I was to choose anyone, I gotta say I think we're going to have a crazy run here, and we're going to see Diamond winning this time. Oh, oh that would be great. I would love to see that. Di- yes, yes, I'm on board. The fan favorite. Yeah. Um, now, while we have a little bit of time before we start the first one, I just want to ask you two, what decks do you expect to see today? Anything we should be looking forward to? Are we going to see Nazoth Ballad and still are we going to see Death Rattle Demon Hunter? What do you think? Uh, actually, while I have this opportunity and I can, I can uh, talk to you about it, Ron, there was a control shaman that made it all the way to the grand finals yesterday that, I mean, it was Cthune, Groundskeeper, Tidal Waves, two Tidal Waves, an Alakir and a Primordial Protector, and then the new Primal Dungeoneer to grab pretty much every spell that wasn't a Cthune spell was a nature spell, be it Torrent, you know, uh, Lightning Whoa. Bolts, stuff like that. The Landslide, it turns out, is a is a nature spell. And it looked powerful. I don't know, have you messed around at all? Have you seen any control... Is there is this a pipe dream control shaman? <laughs> is it <laughs> uh, clear new meta breaker? Clearly, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, this this tournament is going to be lousy with control shamans. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I I don't think that will be a common bring. It definitely sounds really cool and interesting, and I hope we maybe see a player experiment with that. I think if we do see shaman, though, it is far more likely to just be the aggressive doom hammer version of shaman. Uh, that has been cropping up more and more lately. The mini set seemed to give it just a little bit of boost that it needed to enter into a, a more competitive state again. And then beyond that, um, just looking at re, I think gives us a, a good idea of the kind of tournament meta we're likely to see. Rogue, Priest, and Warrior has been in so many winning lineups that I'd say it's highly likely we see. Uh, a good amount of those three classes, uh, both Lifesteal and Death Rattle Demon Hunter, also uh, reasonable populations. Paladin kind of dropping off, same with Druid, but maybe we'll see some. Any yeah. any hunters out there? That that is the one. Yeah, yeah actually, variety. you you read my mind directly. I was about to say it seems like the fourth deck spot. You know, some some Druids, be it Token, or maybe we'll see a Mad Scientist with Celestial Miracle Druid. Uh, you know, the, the demon hunters you were talking about. Paladin, Paladins, even though they're dropping off, non-zero number, the Librem strategy, some uh, Nazoth strategy. Hunter is just missing an action, in my experience. I just haven't seen, I mean, at least in a tournament metagame, obviously, ladder is, of course, a different story. Your results may vary. But uh, tournament-wise, Hunter just seems like it didn't, from what I saw, I didn't get much help in the mini set. Yeah, poor Hunter's been a little bit overlooked lately and really only has one game plan so it seems which is just face hunter there yeah. is a fringe archetype that exists where you can you know line up otks and beat them up with king crushes which is fun but i don't think it's all that competitive yeah you the the big Liorox combo that's the, you know duplicate a couple of crushes and Liorox three crushes out definitely sweet, it's so sweet <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm interested to see uh, Rogue is one of those archetypes, the Miracle Rogue, and I've been seeing a crop crop up of the Secret Rogue coming back a little bit in Vogue as well uh, here recently. But the Rogue deck is just such an interesting. It feels like a because when it, when it hits and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, it just seems like an unstoppable force. It just has that built in kind of my uh, my field contacts are in the bottom ten, and I just can't do anything kind of draws that just make me nervous about playing. Also, I'm not good at rogue. So those two things make me nervous about it. Yeah, I think the um, the skill cap on rogue is, is a little bit higher than some of the other decks out there, but it's also uh, just one of those decks that can 
kind of scam its way into finding a win with some shenanigans that it can pull. It even has a card called Shenanigans, but it's a garbage <laughs> card, right. so it wouldn't play that. <laughs> oh, oh my but, gosh! Uh, I think yeah. we have our first. I think we have our first match. It is going to be between Diamond and Mr. Python. Oh no! Diamond and Mr. Python meeting in the first round. <laughs> oh wow! That's uh, Lotus. That's your winner versus my winner. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah and we're so, going to see. <laughs> Do you two want to go over the classes? I am almost set with the stream to show everyone what classes we're seeing this map. Sorry, sharp inhalation of breath. I just opened up the decks. Diamond is playing Miracle Druid. So it's all spells except for Forest Warden Omu, two copies of Gadgets and Auctioneer, Lady Anaconda, the new card. Celestial Alignment in the Celestial Druid. Celestial Alignment. Okay, so the, the move <laughs> is you Celestial Alignment, uh, and then you pay one mana for a Lightning Bloom to get Lady Anaconda on the board. Then, uh, then all your nature spells are reduced by two, and obviously they've been reduced from one to zero or negative one. And then you get your gadget Zan on the board, and then you play any spell that costs zero, and you are off to the races. Lunar Eclipse, Solar Eclipse, Feral Rage, all your growths turn into zero mana draw. Malagos the Spellweaver for one to draw your entire deck, and they all cost zero, and you keep drawing. You play Nourishes to give you more mana, Innervates to give you more mana, and... You can draw your entire deck in a single turn, including all the Cthune pieces, and then Cthune, uh, freaking. And so then you have to re celestial alignment so that your new Cthune costs one, and then blam, Cthune. It's nonsense. It's amazing. That was very well described. I was going to say step one, play celestial assignment alignment. Step four, profit. And right. step two through three not included. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, I guess just real quickly, the other decks, Diamond, it looks like, is bringing a Rush Warrior featuring the new Crash Lord of Turtling, as well as Mutanus the Devourer. And then a Control Priest, which was not banned. Actually, the Demon Hunter getting banned out. It looks like a, a uh, Death Rattle Demon Hunter getting banned out. Meanwhile, Mr. Python playing a Spell Mage, a Control Warrior and a control warlock. So that explains the leaving priest up, uh, as I say these out loud. Um, yep, and Mr. Python's take... priest was banned by Diamond. Go ahead, Lotus. I just want to take a moment. This happened a few minutes ago, but I didn't have time to talk about this yet. I just want to thank Astroprog for donating $5 um, through to our charity. Um, oh, nice. THL. Hey, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Astrofrog. Astral Frog, maybe a vote of confidence. Astral Frog just being like, I'm just going to win the pot. So this is free money. Playing with house money. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All, all players should do that. Come on, yep. let's see some confidence. Let's see there. some confidence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Gosh, I actually don't know. The thing is, I don't have a ton of reps on the Celestial Druid, so I just don't know. The thing is, it only takes one turn and a, and a good draw to really get going. The problem kind of becomes if your Lady Anaconda in particular is buried at the bottom. There's not really a way to tutor her out. There's no tail and forging. We also see at the top end of this druid list, Yog saron Master of Fate, for when, because you spell, you play 10 spells in a single turn and your Yog costs one. So if you are having sort of a limping turn where you don't find your Lady Anaconda to make everything free, you can sometimes limp to Yog Saron and just play that. And then, and then of course, all kinds of stuff happens. <laughs> but uh, fortunately for us, we also have our resident celestial druid expert, two star Mako, on the cast with oh, us. Oh, that's here. right. That's right. I that can, that can explain <laughs> all of these <laughs> turns in great detail for us. Isn't that right, Mako? <clears throat> I am uh, <laughs> super excited to explain all of these very strategic turns for a deck i've never played well said <laughs> I'm I'm to i've it. watched Fino play it a lot so you know that's all you need to be an expert all i need <laughs> right. so i have given them the green light um just so you know the bands we have diamonds demon hunter has been bad and mr python's priest has been bad 
I, the the leaving up priest always just feel. I mean, I, I definitely understand with Mr. Python's brings, you know, gonna gonna try to bully the priest a little bit. Bully priest strategies just seem so risky in my experience. Because <laughs> priest, I've seen priests outvalue warlocks. I've seen priests out tempo rush warriors. It's just, or out sorry out control rush warriors. I've seen them out tempo uh, control warriors. It's just just a dangerous <laughs> a dangerous strategy. But if Mr. Python is confident. It's definitely something you can probably depend on, right? Most people are bringing priest for all those reasons I just mentioned. True. Uh, priest is definitely a scary class that can do a lot of things, but sometimes it bricks as well, and Mr. Python definitely has a counter-priest lineup here. Uh, we'll see how it works out for them. As I see eyeballs, we're jumping into game one. And it is Diamond going straight away on that Celestial Druid, and Python's yes. bringing out that warrior. Yes! Here we go. <laughs> I'm so happy! <laughs> All right, Mako, what's the mull here? We keep overgrowth, right? Bro, I'll tell you as soon as I get it pulled up. Gosh, I think Anaconda might be a keep as well. <laughs> it's, it's, it's such an important thing to find, and this is a control warrior, so you probably have a minute. Yeah, you're not exactly getting killed anytime soon. Diamond just goes for the full keep. Might not be the worst idea. You know, I mean, with the guests to wait in hand, it's it's just the easy draws from the start. I dig it. I, I'm I'm kind of curious how what Diamond's plan is going to be to get through all the armor that Python's going to be creating because there's not a whole lot of pressure in Diamond's hand right now. Um, so, I mean, Cthune does 30, but I mean... Turn two, Python's got to be at 32, right? <laughs> true, yeah. true. Going to be really leaning on the solar eclipse celestial alignment, maybe, to generate a board out of nowhere and try to yeah. also gain a bunch of armor. Because to your point, neither of these players are going to be putting on a lot of pressure in the, in, in the early turns here. Oh, I'm gosh. I'm disappointed to see Diamond not go f growth on the first turn to set up overgrowth faster. Uh, he played that guess the weight and actually... Terrible, uh, terrible luck there, getting a lightning bloom, and then it pulled Interpate, so it actually, he guessed more, but it was same. Yeah, I have to assume Diamond is actually just, I mean, Diamond is one Celestial Alignment and one Gadgets and Auctioneer from just going crazy with this hand. <laughs> get, I mean, this is a turn eight, draw your whole deck kind of game plan here. We just need that Gadgets and. Uh, meanwhile, Mr. Python is going to go ahead and develop the South Sea Scoundrel and has to decide sort of a Sophie's choice of what would you like to give. Oh, the nature studies means we can maybe find a third celestial alignment. There's the Let's nerd. do it. There we go. Oh. Resizing pouch for celestial alignment. Let's do that it. could be alignment. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love to see it. Here we go. It's this easy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Never lucky. Strongman seems pretty solid, though. That's going to cost zero mana, uh, very likely. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess Stormwatcher will become one mana. And this is going to be a draw three here off the Nourish. Just really needs to find Gadgets and Auctioneer. Oh, Nourish into Nourish is great. Obviously not for this turn, but in the future. Just keep that cycle going. And Mr. Python trying to put together as much board tempo as possible with the control creatures available. And it's where, I mean, South Sea Scandal's a four mana five five. Like, that's a pretty good stats for cost. Just yeah. one, one above than our, our good friend, the Chillwind Yeti. The pressure is building. Well, uh, a five eight answers some five fives pretty reasonably well. And Diamond back over, you know, 30 life. Not under too much pressure yet, but. Here comes a very solid answer from Python, and there goes the pressure again. Yeah, you know, just... these players don't have Nosdormu in their decks, but it almost feels like they're playing Speedstone. <laughs> yeah, nobody told them that this is a <laughs> Nosdormu. It hurts. I guess the, that Cthune animation was not a Nosdormu animation. <laughs> it's a... Oh, gosh. Uh, this is going to be another nourish for cards. Just the... Because, I mean, Diamond is... Uh, finds themselves somewhat running out of time to okay so that's the alignment now hey, we just need card. yeah now i just need that gadgets and auctioneer to really go into party mode gonna armor up i'm interested to see if this nature studies comes down to allow a six mana celestial 
Oh, oh. interesting. Okay. Actually, it might just be a four mana maw of Cthulhu at this point. Just, I mean, I'm telling you, the, if the oh. next card is Gadget Sand, we're in for a treat. Another South Sea Scoundrel. Huge, huge top deck from Mr. Python here. Uh, will wind up being able to burn a card potentially be a Cthulhu piece, which would just kill a Wincon here. And partially, I think, because of that, knowing that he put Diamond at 10 cards, he picks the non Cthulhu card that was yeah. offered from this pirate. <laughs> uh, Diamond's going to have to hold his breath that this top deck is not a Cthulhu piece or things will get significantly tougher. Gosh, I'm there's... already tough for Diamond. You have three five fives standing in your way, and uh, without much to to really get rid of them, you're at seventeen life. Okay, guess the weight. Lucky burn. I mean, would like to get some draw, but uh, not a not a deal breaker by any means. And it's just it's a it's alignment time. Actually, wait, no, we can't align yet because Diamond will die. Diamond will not die. Four off, being yeah. dead. I. I don't know about this, but uh, Lady Anaconda does make the nature spells cheaper. Yeah, I mean, I, that to me it says Diamond. Yeah, Diamond thinks the next card needs to be the Gadgets and Auctioneer or this game is over. And that's a body of Cthulhu. Funny enough, Mr. Python really doesn't have that many cards that can pressure effectively, but he's drawn all of them. All of the five fives. <laughs> Basically, oh, yeah. Diamond's worst nightmare here. Yeah, actually, yeah. Both Shield Maidens, both South Sea Scoundrels. That's because uh, so many of the things are supposed to be reactive. I, I heard that Control Warrior was reactive. Where's all the rankers and stuff? I guess they're also in head. If you're Diamond, what, what can you better? do but just play Lady Anaconda? Oh. Still not playing Anaconda. Anaconda would have made that bloom free. I... Diamond's really just hoping for for this Gadgetzan so he can just go off with this Anaconda. Which might be the yeah. correct win condition. I don't, I don't know if you play that Anaconda if you ever win. Yeah, one of those. Uh, you have to live to but do the Python combo. Python has but... 18 power represented on the board. If he had any way to get through this Cthulhu from hand. It's just game over. Which is not unheard of for a control warrior. Yeah, so missing... stage dive pulls the Kargath, and that's exactly enough. That's going to be a lethal. Oh, that's right. Kargath and the Axe Swing are going to be able to clear off this body of Cthulhu. 15 coming in from the creatures. Oh my gosh, Diamond. Betrayed by Gadgetzan Auctioneer. And only 12 cards remaining in deck, which means that, that ga both Gadgetzans were bottom 12. Just brutal. <laughs> All right, so Smork Control Warrior <laughs> takes out the Cthune Celestial Druid that clearly doesn't even run Gadget Sands in its deck. <laughs> right, it's like, just to be clear, they're in the list, right? Like, they got added in the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's double check. <laughs> okay, yep, yep, they're there. They just wanted to hang out in the bottom 12. Diamond has faith, though. He is queuing up the right away mr python coming in on the mage and we're right back to nostone let's do this all right Ninja. oh as a class i didn't think people were playing mage yeah that's uh, it's, it's kind of moved into the fourth day oh there's gadget it's, it, <laughs> it started to pop up a little bit more even in gm lists it just seems like unchanged mage might have had a little bit more of an opening with the mini set and it might be perception right now too or just because the meta is a bit unstable um but you know mage is still pretty good especially when you do something like oh i don't know discount 25 mana on turn one making druids blush with the mana discounts there and <laughs> uh, worth noting mr python's list is playing a single copy of shooting star instead of the sometimes brought deck of lunacy uh, like you were saying ron the deck of lunacy version seems to be in a lot of grandmaster lists but uh not for everybody and it is not for mr python preferring that shooting star i assume to deal with rogue boards and maybe some token druids makes sense I'm interested in the, so at the mulligan, Diamond decided to throw away Lady Anaconda, and I 
really hope Lady Anaconda doesn't get stuck at the bottom. <laughs> Ooh, what really? a top deck, though. The overgrowth off the top on turn four. You see Mr. Python emoting immediately after that. And this game got a lot spicier. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the, how you can tell that Diamond's been practicing this deck. Just hitting overgrowth on four <laughs> is the move. I see an alignment in hand. Here and we, we have go. An al Wait, alignment. Wait, was not loading the match for some reason. Um, just keep going. I'll uh, fixing the stream right now. Sorry, everyone. Oh, unfortunate. Oh, no. no worries. Right. Talk radio. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'll practice blast Picture going face. In your head. Yeah. A mini that mage on the Talon. board. <laughs> oh my gosh, hey. that Talon. Yeah. Talon Ford Ring so OP in spell mage lists. It will draw <laughs> the highest cost minion in Mr. Python's deck. <laughs> Which. I guess at some point might be a Solarian Prime, though it is not right now. And this is, it's party time. Here it comes. Solar Eclipse Scenarian Ward. I mean, the amount of draw, even with one mana lightning blooms, really even without Lady Anaconda to really go crazy. We're still oh, going man, absolutely I, crazy. I really wanted to see the uh, doubled Scenarian Ward, but uh, card draw maybe is, I mean, it probably is the better plan. Holy Just moly, we're cards, still like, going. Crazy. Cause yeah, he's still we'll going here. This is nuts. Oh, um, uh, there's the Mally. Yog coming off the oh, top. That's a one mana Yog that's fully charged up. I'm interested. So, and uh, Mally still two mana left over to do stuff. <laughs> Diamond has. So here's finally oh that uh, scenario in Ward. There's Lady Anaconda. Play Lady Anaconda, and all of a sudden your nature spells actually cost zero. Though it might be too late in the turn. Yog, yes. He's, he's no. gonna rip the Yog. <laughs> oh, wait. Why would you burn a card off the top, Diamond? Oh no. Ten cards left. Could have played deck. the one mana overgrowth right at the end. Oh no. Well, I guess you still burn, uh, because of the auctioneer. Yeah. Yeah, in a tough position where every spell okay, results back. in a burn. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess you know it's fine. You take that. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Mr. Python is going to be able to do some refreshing spring water, devolving missiles, although devolving missiles may not take too much power off the board. <laughs> the yeah, storm wind crucially, champion. <laughs> Mr. Python has had that encanter's flow right after the celestial assignment alignment, which means Python's entire deck is free now. Um, oh. So this is just going to be a win for Python, I think. Yeah, as long as Python's able to keep drawing. Uh, oh, no, wait, there's two fireballs in hand as well, which is only, f what, 714? Oh, there's a massive thing. Yeah, Never this will do it. That's a free yeah. deck right there. So Celestial Alignment, you know, happened and set up Diamond so well, but the second, literally the only other card that Diamond could have possibly been afraid of was that second Encanter's Flow, which made a one-mana deck turn into a zero mana deck and Mr. Python had all of the gas to just pick up that win there and go up to zero. And refreshing spring water after it's been discounted even a single time from five to four is good. Discounting it from one to zero is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Nothing like a 25 mana discount into a 20 mana discount with refunds. And Diamond I, is nothing if not a celestial druid truther, though, because he is right back on this deck for game three. Oh, yeah. I definitely respect the ride or die on this druid. It's, it's also just so fun to, to draw your whole deck every game, <laughs> right? If you get to just go off a single time, you get, a, you get at least a moral victory. I mean, he definitely had a sweet go off turn. It looked mm -hmm. kind of invincible. Um, but then, you know, Mr. Python's deck costs zero and <laughs> right. <laughs> it <was> pretty quick. <laughs> but if he didn't have that card, Diamond probably won that game. Oh yeah, that's a great point. And and need a draw to be able to capitalize on it too, and just had both draw and the Encanter's Flow to really capitalize on that Encanter's Flow. Pretty chill early game for both players as Diamond is going to be spending some time drawing cards and ramping where Mr. Python is going to spend time drawing cards and shuffling soul fragments. I like Fine. this game plan from Diamond here. Just draw as much as possible before Ticketus could even have a chance at burning out. 
Yeah. Ticket is, has a hard time milling your deck if you've got your whole deck in your hand. <laughs> 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 Just uh, is even the try to mill out a Cthune piece strategy because it's going to be. I mean, I assume Mr. Python is just going to windmill slam this Mutanus on seven uh, to corrupt Ticketus that we see in hand, but might be too late by then. Diamond is ramping. And a possible alternative line that he could consider, depending on the draws, like especially if he found Militia, would be to hold Mutanus until the Cthune and then True. try to spike, you know, eating the Cthune and destroy the Wincon. Yeah, absolutely. That is a that's a thin tightrope, but you can if yeah, if, if Diamond is not able to both draw and play the Cthune, then all of a sudden just yoinked, eaten by that makes Mutanus the most powerful old god, right? Because it just eats other old gods. <laughs> yeah, it never hits uh, anything worse. Like a one mana one three or something. Oh gosh, oh no, my memories. <laughs> All right, out comes the Tamsin, and this sets up extremely well for a Militia top deck, if it happens. Oh, yeah, just to try to get wide out uh, on the board, try to develop some board pressure. Not able to do a high, not nearly as high tempo as that Control Warrior, it turns out, but uh, but doing, doing the, you go to war with the army you have, right? His the... Absolutely, and here Diamond finding more card draw in that guess the weight had the option to play gadgets and to lead off and do more draws had the option to overgrowth potentially on a previous turn as well but wanted that body of cthun out sooner now has the second gadgets and um but kind of going a little bit slow here do we overgrowth yeah it's an interesting question uh with only six mana left and then thinking about potentially celestially aligning in the future. It's, gosh, I feel like Diamond is always stuck on this one one card missing situation, which could just be a feature of the deck and not a bug. Just because the, you know, if, if you're going to do a celestial alignment druid and you can't find celestial alignment, it can be real tricky to really get your game plan going. I almost wonder if it's a Lightning Bloom. Well, no, you don't want to spend any of the ramp cards. Because like Lightning Bloom Scenarian Ward just to gain some armor, but I think it's going to be Feral Rage instead. All right, just gain some armor, pushes one, ignores the board. And Mr. Python, time to corrupt, corrupt Ticketus. <laughs> you <Yep>. called it. <laughs> And what's interesting, Mr. Python, probably pretty happy to see that Gadget's Hand get eaten. Uh, Diamond, probably pretty relieved to have both Gadget's Hands <laughs> and, uh, available. And... That as an outcome for Python, this is a 7-mana 8-8, eight, eight, followed by a 6-mana 8-8 eight, eight that burns 5 cards. So Diamond's got to do something quick. And looks like just going with a lot of armor and big boys. Yikes, that is so many Pretty good stats. outcome. Yeah. Uh, but like you said, here comes that corrupted Ticketus. There's a heart of Cthune. Yikes. <laughs> That's a, oh, oh, and a monster. Just add insult to further insult. Or I guess injury to further yeah, injury. Yeah, that is, that is two Cthune pieces are out cow. here. I mean, at this point, we're probably doing a Yogg or double Scenarian Ward for a bunch of board. But against Control Warlock, it's going to be tricky in the oh, best Oh, well, that's times. a Grom. It is. That is extremely a Grom. It looks very much like this will not be enough, though, from Diamond. Uh, his, you know, main win condition is gone completely. And even something as simple as a trade and a twisting nether would probably win the game for Mr. Python. If he just pushes face here. Yep. Yeah, because super clean. Very little Diamond can do. All right, well, there's the alignment with a Lightning Bloom and a Gadget Zan and an Overgrowth. Uh, but to your point, Mako, like, what are we... We're surviving, but are we living? Uh, is there... I mean, I, I, at this point, it's got to be some sort of Yogg-Saron. There's no way you're going to be able to fatigue this this Warlock. Uh, Ten cards left in deck to 22. Uh, granted, some of those are Soul Fragments, something like six Soul Fragments in there, but still. That uh, is fatigue. right. Yeah. Good point. We we do still have a win condition if we're diamond. Find Yogg, play Yogg, Pyro opponent's face. Easy win, never in doubt. 
That's right. And you'll notice the armor totals and health totals definitely favor diamond <laughs> when you definitely hit that 100% of the time, it's 5% of the time. Yeah, diamond is way ahead. What are we even talking about here? It's <laughs> it's 43 to 13. Insurmountable lead. <laughs> uh Oh my gosh, Yasharaj is going to come out and allow Ticketus to eat another five cards. Uh, I mean... <laughs> oh, don't burn the Yogg. Don't burn the Yogg. Don't burn the Yogg. Anaconda is not great. <laughs> uh, Omu, okay. Yes, and Diamond emoting the thanks because it gets him closer to Yogg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, all right, so the... How much damage is this? 18 that we can see available, and I see no reason not to just drop this Jaraxxus this turn. Oh, actually, Soul Sealgist Militia is more pressure immediately, so sure. Oh, you can do both. What am I saying? They both Porcano cost one. Those. Come on, man. Yeah, that was <laughs> see, about Porcano. as ideal a turn as you can get for Mr. Python, and Diamond fortunately did ramp in advance and should enable Diamond to be able to draw and play his one-mana Yogg, which is basically how he has any chance of winning this game. So we'll see if Yogg provides some fireworks. There he is. All right, going to go ahead and armor up just in case. Uh, unfortunately, not going to be able to get out of range of the uh, of What's an extra, like one extra Pyroblast. I was play hoping that... Play the Yogg, Diamond. <laughs> why, would we, why would we bloom? We get closer to fatigue. Why are we doing this? Yeah, what is the, oh, the Why last did card you want to nourish. draw that nourish diamond? I don't understand. Did you want to buff the arcane devourer that much? Play the yawk. All right, here we go. Did get Mr. Python underneath uh, 20 aggregate life, so it's only going to take two row okay. two pyro blasts off this. It oh. It is Oh, I mean, card. That could be pretty good. Yeah. These are still oh, a shadow draw council though. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, I think maybe we wanted Shadow Council. Oh gosh. This this gadget Zan. Oh. This gadget Zan. Why? <laughs> gadget Zan, you have to stop. You have to stop. Oh my God. <laughs> Why are we doing this? <laughs> going for the the swag uh self uh going for the swag self mill. I mean, he made that arcane devourer pretty big. That is he... a yeah, actually, di a lethal damage represented on board for Diamond, <laughs> but unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, Mr. Well, uh, Python. <laughs> that was something. And with that, Mr. Python will progress into what I believe is the round of, let me pull the bracket up here, two, four, six, so uh, progress, uh, proceeds into the round of eight. Correct. Uh, Top eight. We are actually... Um... Uh, going to we had two matches that are started in the top eight due to player counts so we are going to hop into one of those that is ongoing um and that is booze asaurus versus just in time all right excellent am i already friends with booze asaurus he said <laughs> out loud <laughs> <laughs> I see eyeballs on those two players. Let's jump in. It is, I'm not sure where we're at for which classes have won, but Justin is on a rogue hunter warrior with the demon hunter band. We are 1 1. Booze has won with his warrior, and Justin has won with his hunter. We have a demon hunter band um, on the side of Justin, and then a priest band on the side of Booze. And it looks like Justin is just about to pick up the victory with this warrior against the warlock. But we'll see if Booze can find a way out of this. It's looking like he may be able to. Or clear two damage from uh two damage from hand being that turtle spike in hand, but five life on the side of Booze. Booze might be able to get out of this actually with that Jaraxxus in hand just to gain a little bit more armor. If he can keep denying board, um, there's a shot.
All right, here we go. Clearing up board, developing board, pushing damage. Okay, I have made it. All right, what's going? <laughs> oh my gosh, this warlock has no life left. What have I walked into? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh gosh! So Booze is able to clear here with the uh, hysteria in school spirits. Um, we, we jumped in a little bit late in this matchup, so I don't know exactly what he has in this Yash Raj. Um, I'm assuming Tigris has not been played. Okay, we're going to go with another. He did just play a Cascading Disaster on the previous turn, so Yash Raj at the very least will pull a Cascading. Um, but we can see the Ganarg is about to wake up. All Justin has to do is punch face once with this weapon, and the Ganarg weapon will be enough for lethal if Booze does not heal or continue to clear or both. Oh man, and the development of a tent trash is just so many stats on a big scary dragon. And so now, uh, like you're saying, it's got to be a clear and a heal or a clear and a taunt uh, just to prevent that weapon swing from taking this home for just in time. And depending on how many frags Booze has left in his deck, if he even just top decks a single frag, uh, could be enough to just play Yasharaj and clear here. But True. did not find a frag. Mm. We might uh, be able to tap over. into one. Yeah, tap would require runner two frags, which depending on how many frags is shuffled in, might be the might be the best option. I mean, you may have to play Tamsin and School Spirits uh, and tap. Would kill off your Tamsin, but I think it's it sounds like it might be your only out here. Well, I guess we oh, can find out what he said earlier. Oh, the Yashraj doesn't give any heal, so yeah. that's just game over, because this Ganarg weapon will spell the game. Doom! Uh, oh, I haven't gotten to see the golden unstable shadow blast before, sitting in Boozasaurus's hand. Very cool. Uh, weapon swing, though, the perfect cool, amount yeah. of damage. <laughs> yeah. All right, that, Justin picking up game two. And that means Justin just needs to find a win with what looks to be a poison rogue. Uh, Poison Rogue, pretty good against control strategies, especially if they haven't teched in any oozes. I'm looking at this Warlock, seeing Nary and Ooze. And I'm looking at this Mage, Nary a Creature. So this, it's entirely possible that the Swine Tusk Shank strategy, just loading up on poisons, it's going to be tough to stop. And then, of course, the, not the unsung hero, but sort of the, uh, the Rogue's Ice Block in form of Cloak of Shadows can just really make it difficult to stop that repetitive shank damage definitely uh i think we're seeing booze just kind of acknowledging that poison rogue is extremely favorable into what he has left so just queue up the most unfavorable right away just get it out of the way uh either you you know buy a win with the mage somehow or it's just over and you don't have to try to keep beating your head against the wall trying to beat this poison rogue. And uh, off the start here, Boozasaurus able to find a lab partner. I'm looking at the hand here for just in time, and I was going to say self-sharpening sword. If you have a self-sharpening sword, you probably want a silverleaf poison. There's two in there, and it's really just a way for you to power draw and then find your big damage dealers. You don't have to commit a bunch to your self-sharpening sword necessarily, as long as you can get the draws. Yeah, clearly not that. Yeah. Slow from the side of Boozasaurus. Um, and usually that just spells a loss for the mage. Am I right? I mean, just playing against this deck spells a loss for the mage generally. <laughs> 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 yeah, looking for... Uh, it's just so weird to see a handful of mage spells that all have the mana cost in white. It's just not usually. It's not usually <laughs> how that minute. goes. Yeah, this can't These be right. It's counted. <laughs> and no one's played a cult neophyte, so they're not taxed either. I don't know what this means. What a so, find for Justin too, with that prep off the top, gets to double up on his sword drawing, and also gets to give it attack. This is everything he wants to see. One thing uh, in Booz's hand that may be the key that he needs is this water elemental. If Booze does not have a way to kill off this Water Elemental, this could keep him frozen for a bit. 
is a very good point. Water Elemental is possibly the way that Mage scams its way out of this, and it's Wicked it's gonna die. Yeah. Yeah, actually, you're just gonna have to draw. Gonna have to draw some different yeah, cards. Yeah, it's just gonna find gonna... some plunderers, and he's not even gonna get frozen a single time. Coerce, that'll do or, it as or well. That. Oh my and, gosh, or plunderer, let Portake no los dos, like we said. <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> All right, this this is gonna be a three one. <laughs> this is uh, this is gonna be extremely difficult. Uh, how much damage is loaded into this prize plunderer? We've seen uh, one, two, three, four cards is this a four damage prize plunder i think it has to be the coerce but i'm ready to be proven wrong about that uh three cards played so far so it is currently a three damage plunderer um but it could easily just be a wicked stab on the water elemental plus plunderer here oh from of Justin. Course. although he could also just play that coerce which seems perfectly fine he's gonna swing face and draw as uh to Raw lead two. off because he gets oh two. Oh yep, and gosh. then just goes with the coerce, especially with the second coerce in hand. I like this as the decision here. And Boozasaurus, uh maybe some kind of miracle off of Apexus. It is gonna have to be some kind of Lothraxian while redeemed by the light, not exactly the miracle is not it. Booze was looking for. Oh my gosh, and a cloak of shadows. I say that like it's a surprise. There's only 13 cards left in the deck. <laughs> uh, there's this has been a crazy amount of draw coming out of just in time with those with that pair of silver leaf poisons earlier. All right, Justin is four off lethal right now with the cards in hand. Ring um, toss is going to be a big deal here, guys. It it had better be. <laughs> it, it has the possibility to to give him, you know, just the edge that he needs to maybe, you know, squeeze out some defensive maneuvers before. Because I mean, yeah, we literally have to find a lot of his. Justin used a lot of his. Uh, hey, there's cards. Barrier. Yeah, he used a lot of his buffs on this self sharpening short, and he's got one swing left. That's a barrier right there. So Booze is sitting at twelve life after this swing, with eight damage from hands i mean he, with a follow-up green cost damage. that could be eight extra life right there yeah and then maybe booze is able to find like a deep freeze or something you know hold just in time in place for a couple of turns get some more water elementals uh, this this is definitely the defensive foundation upon which perhaps perhaps a comeback Great can be mounted justin though i think you just want to play the swindle in case it's a count. Oh, okay, I can see that too. Just use your remaining mana for the shank. Get it up. And Booze needs to play Ring Toss again and hope for another barrier. The spell, or the secret remaining right now, is a counter spell. So whatever the first thing is, uh, whatever the first spell is from just in time, is going to get counter spelled. Uh, like you're, you're talking about the swindle potentially. I mean, we, are, we had so much draw, maybe a secret passage, just sort of depending on what Justin doesn't mind discarding a taunt in the way oh, also finds a taunt yeah it won't matter Is wand maker 11 damage from hands wand maker could be the difference <laughs> another secret passage it was a really interesting choice not going a, a firebrand's ring toss last turn it essentially does the same thing but also gives him the secrets in play Right, there's the counter spell. Maybe Booze really wanted to find an additional counter spell off of Ring Toss and was thinking he's not going to die just yet. A uh, bit risky, but it's looking like it's going to pay off here. So now is just in time. There's a part of me that wants to just rip one of these secret passages and uh, see what's see what awaits on the other end of the on the other end of the hallway. There, you know, four draws into the eight cards remaining in deck pretty good chance unfortunately of hitting olgra of course which you would hate to see if you are just in time does a swindle being counterspelled count as a tick towards plunderer because that would make a big difference with a sinister strike plunderer here to clear that three three and punch face that is a fantastic I think Justin question probably did not know uh because i don't know either and didn't want to chance it so actually just had to use a wicked stab to try to get through that minion knows that he's at 18 health and isn't exactly super safe against the mage either here comes a rune orb booze looking for something that doesn't really cut it you you've got to play that ring toss you're gonna lose if you don't find another barrier 
ring toss. And that's like... not barrier. And that that's is... barrier. Oh, he picked oh, that so fast. That was so fast. That was and so it's fast. The exact yeah. two secrets that he just had. It's a barrier and counter spell again, and maybe that's a way Mage can get there. Yeah, because just in time hasn't been able to find the deadly. Oh, well, okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say looking for deadly oh, poisons, and paralytic Justin poisons. Justin getting punished by ripping that deadly poison right off the top. Uh, I think he. Oh, wait. Hold up. Is this just enough no, 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 with the was... Sinister Strike and the Wicked Stab? It looks like that's going to be uh, not quite that enough. Was, that was, okay, that was really smart. He's got a second um, Sinister in hand, right? And he just wanted to play around the barrier. Or it's the other yep, and he finds it. That was That'll do really it. nicely done from Justin. I thought uh, you wanted that deadly poison because you were punching face again, but he's like, nope, I got enough burn. I don't need to punch face anymore. I'm going to find it. Yeah, nicely that's, a, that's, done. A, that's a fantastic uh, uh, spot there because the if it was Counterspell or Netherwind Portal, that's all the spell things you have to worry about. And I don't think there's anything that comes off Netherwind Portal that can mess up the amount your spells will cost. Justin feeling reasonably confident that they, because a secret passage into Swindle should find Sinister Strike. It might just find Sinister Strike on its own, like we saw. And just not even care, just like, you know what? That pick was so fast, it's probably a barrier. <laughs> I'll just, yeah. I'm just going to, I'll do spell stuff instead. So Justin has punched his ticket to the final four, and he is our first player in the final four right now, waiting on some other match results. We still have a round one match going on as well. Oh my gosh, you're right. Azonix and MMW are still playing. It looks like in, uh, currently in game four. <laughs> of, uh, just clicking over here real quick to see. Oh, okay. Rush Warrior, Miracle, Rogue. Token druids, pair of token druids. Huh. I'm, I'm not a bunch of lineups that I would expect to get super grindy with a pair of uh, priest bands, but then again, sometimes if you get stuck in a mirror match, like a rush warrior mirror match, and they just you just lock horns and you both get tired out at the same time, you're just sort of playing a game of war. For those who, I don't know, if, does anyone play war anymore? Where you take 52 cards and you just flip the top card. Gosh. Is that dated? I, How dated I is that? I enjoyed that. that. Yeah. yeah, that was a fun game. Yeah. It was it was like the epitome of just pure luck. Yes. Yeah, no skill involved. It's just uh... <laughs> Oh, sorry, is Onyx and MMW? Okay, let me let me find them here. <laughs> you can tell it's a mage game. I came in and I just saw a gray bow on the board. No one's a druid. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. This is astral. I'm I'm spectating the wrong match. I'm spectating Mr. Python and Astral Frog. My mistake. Carry on. Talk about yourselves. I joined in and saw MMW on Rogue and was like, oh, that could be a gray bow in this game too with Jan. <laughs> but... True. <laughs> All right, so we've got MMW on the Rogue at 30 health to Azonix through its 15 health. But Azonix has built a somewhat intimidating board as MMW is trying to get through it here. Still holding a Plunder and a Brain Freeze with some options off of a Discovered Orb from that Wand Thief. Rogue doing Rogue things. <laughs> They're just so good at doing Rogue things. Okay, here we are. Looks like it's going to be a brain freeze to hold off. So it looks like at least one arbor up has come and gone and been dealt with with prize plunderers. And oh, this is a secret rogue. Or is it? No, it's a ruined orb. Never mind. For a second okay, there, I thought. And yeah, yeah a, a clever play here, too. <laughs> going plunder and then plagiarize at the end of the turn rather than using that brain freeze. Just get, same clear on the minion, but able to. Um, try to get a little bit more board development and also steal a pop-off turn. And uh, worth noting, Azonix has, uh, is up two games to one, so has two chances to win with this token druid. Uh, that said, like you were saying, the play drive is going to be able to steal a big board development turn, and Azonix can't really... Uh, I feel like there comes a point in every game where the... To every token druid game where the token druid has to go all in and just... If there's a card they're worried about, they have to pretend like it's not in the game and just shove all the chips in the center. This is a big prize fury board. 
Oh um, my. The stream just froze, so we're just going to be right back. Uh, well, while that is frozen, we can give you um, a brief little play by play. I need the client. Oh, no. <laughs> Unfortunate. But you um, all are still live. Um, we can talk about how the match is going since you all can see. So, Azonix just played a very much a pop off turn, had a gibberling, a fungal fortunes, innervate, power of the wild, pride's fury, and MMW, of course, got all of those cards. Yes. So, uh, he's, he's going to have to try to answer this board. It is a lot of stuff. It's a 4 8 and a 4 7 taunt, three three fives, a 2 4, and a 1 1 spell burst. Compared to MMW's 2 1 and 1 2 on the board, he leads off with an Innervate Foxy Fraud and goes with a Fungal Fortunes. Wow. And doesn't discard a <laughs> single card. Look at that. And it prompts an emote from a Sonix. Yeah, well deserved. That's definitely the line is emote after that because there are plenty of possible discards <laughs> inside that rogue list. The rope burning is going to make this turn a lot a lot trickier for MMW as they have to figure out how to stay alive because I'm counting 20 damage. Yeah, I'm still trying <laughs> to figure out how he gets out of this. Um, I, maybe the play was honestly just do what your opponent did. Um to try to compete with that board. Uh, but we see, you know, Soul of the Forest in hand for Zonix 2. So doesn't have a lethal just yet, but is hitting that point where he's basically seeming invincible. Yeah, and actually the Solar Eclipse Feral Rage is going to add 8 attack, I would assume, to this board. Uh, so that's... Oh no, I'm actually just going to go for the, go yeah, for the plus 16 the armor. armor. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. If you don't have the lethal, then your board is, is at a point where it basically never gets removed. So now you can ignore your opponent's board completely and rest easy, saying there's no way that you're going to be able to kill me from 31 here. And my board, even if it gets cleared, it pumps out another board, and then I can make that get another board too with that Soul of the Force, and it just keeps going upstairs, and we'll take home that win. Absolutely. And actually, we see one of the things that if they, if uh, Azeonix had gone for the aggressive uh, line of doing eight additional damage, uh, we actually see the cards in hand necessary to potentially uh, steal the game away. None of them have been discounted, so there's actually no way to successfully ten Wu and Alexstrasza, even though both are available. Uh, it but... could have been a setup, though, with ten Wu on this turn getting stepped and held. Alex yeah. Tenwu, Alex play on the following turn, um, but that line of play has been completely shut off by his Onyx play, and this I think it's going to be almost impossible to overcome. Maybe the Wand Thief can pull something miraculous for MMW. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm interested in the discount before the Wand Thief. I, if we're if we're going for miracle moves, I wonder if. Maybe there's an argument to discount the spell that comes off it, but I guess it comes out the same, doesn't it? Because you, you save that mana that you spent on the Wand Thief, so. Uh, all kind of academic as well. It looks like right now Azonix is showing 12, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. One off uh, lethal right now. Yeah. <laughs> showing 13. There are plenty of draws. Um, even something as, uh, yeah. is not lethal yet. Uh, but, you know, Ooh. sitting on a pretty comfortable 30, like I mentioned before, you can just keep sending everything upstairs. Just set your opponent to one and say, you don't beat me. Right. And I mean, that's that's wild. Because I was thinking, like, an adorable infestation wins this game, <laughs> right? Like, a, a draw <laughs> yeah. into adorable infestation wins this game. You know, guess the weight lets you draw into probably a way to win the game. There's still uh, an arbor up in deck, it looks like. Yep, yep. Uh Glowfly Swarm, one of the, if not the very worst draw <laughs> available to Azonix, but uh, we're actually seeing some, I was fully on board with the send everything upstairs uh, strategy. It looks like Azonix is just trying to decide if there are any reasons to value trade, and I can't think of a compelling one, but I would assume thinking back through the, okay, is actually going to use up some of the death rattles uh, in their own board is Azonix. I don't know, do you actually just play Glowfly Swarm just to get one extra thing on the board? But uh, Azonix is going trades here. Full trades. 
Um, Interesting. I'm I'm not sure exactly what they're concerned about. Maybe um, Alex getting you know healing on MMW and then getting stepped or something for more healing as they gradually chip away at the board. Um, but this, I think, does open the door slightly for MMW to maybe fight back here. Yeah, uh, Azonix does still is still representing lethal damage with thirteen worth of creature attacks. So a lot of the same draws we were just talking about still win the game, uh, even though a series of trades would reduce some of the attack value of the board a little bit. The ability to buff it back up again with those infestations that Arbor up you were talking about. Um, another Pride's Fury. Actually, I think we've seen both of those come and go. So uh, I'm interested to see where this Alexstrasza goes. Because like you are saying, defensive Alexstrasza and then a Shadow Step does open up offensive Alexstrasza, Tenwu, Alexstrasza potential shenanigans in the future. And MMW also has to be concerned about fatigue since he's down to just this one card, but has a chance. Uh, Tenwu. Maybe going here. Okay, Tenwu on the man crick. So not playing Alex here, maybe going to step this Tenwu. Stepping the man crick again. Needs to take the lethal damage off the board, though. Yeah, I'm not. I think just. Just so missing be... here. Field contact and then Vanessa Van Cleef to draw all the man cricks. I can't tell if this is a legit play or if this is just a super swag play. I mean, it's cool. I want to. I want to be very clear. I think this is incredibly cool. But I, I, does it ever get there? I wonder. I hadn't done the math because I hadn't even considered it. Uh, not even close and left lethal <laughs> on the board for the opponent with Alex in hand. I'm not sure why. Uh, MMW did that, but maybe he was just trying to find some other kind of fancy way or, or, or was just saying, I'm not going to win. Here's a fancy play and, you know, you earned it. Yep, the old 360 no-scope while jumping off the board. Just <laughs> And uh, <laughs> look at how many man cricks there are. It was a lot, admittedly. That, that was one card left in deck and then there was like three uh, angry man cricks <laughs> in deck around that last shadow step. And that's going to do it. Azonix is going to progress uh, further into the bracket with that. Uh, like you said, like Michael was uh, talking about just a little while ago, Azonix and MMW was actually in one of the very, very first rounds. So that now moves to the round of eight, where Azonix oh, is going to battle Venus Bumoni. And look at this. We had Roadrunner, a player we didn't get to talk about in the opening because they uh, I don't think they had checked in yet, but they have made it to the final four. They are our second player in the final four. Uh, very exciting. Uh, a hero teammate of mine, I might add. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and uh, in order to get there, in, round three. in order to get there, I had to take out Lenthesis, which is definitely a name I have said before. <laughs> and uh, uh, another one, another play we didn't get to talk about in the opening. Yeah, another uh, late was... check-in, I believe. But they yeah. they had a a banger of a match. It looks like going to five games. Yeah, and so Roadrunner will be battling the winner of Astral Frog versus Mister Python, and then and just in Tino time, waiting. Spumoni is waiting on the or will start playing against the Zonix, of course, just in time, awaiting the winner of that match. Um, we will be watching a Zonix versus Venus Spumoni right now. Perfect. So let me head on over here. Venus Bumoni is rocking a Death Rattle Demon Hunter, including Vectus, uh, a Spell Mage with no Deck of Lunacy, with that one, uh, with two copies of Shooting Star, actually. A Control Priest that is a bunch of old gods, Cthun and Nazoth at the top end. And then it looks like a Control Warrior featuring both the Silas Soulbound combo and the Cthun combo. Across the way there, Azonix has a Rush Warrior. A, it looks like a Miracle Rogue. A Control Priest, a little bit less greedy, no Cthune in there, but still has Nazoth at the top end. And then what looks like a Token Druid. All right, as the players start deciding on what their bands are going to be, what do we think here? What would be the bands from these players? Please say Devil Priest. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm looking at these lineups, and neither of these, to me, say Target Priest, which to also further says to me, Ban Priest. <laughs> and uh, so that's that's sort of the extremely shallow looking at it. You know, there's no Warlocks in here. There's uh, That said, if you have a lot of comfort playing against Priest, there's definitely some folks who are 
who maybe there's another matchup they just prefer not to play against. You know, I've, I've seen a non-zero number of token druid bands, for example. Um, I usually find that surprising because it seems like token druid has a tendency, it's one of those decks that has the possibility of just sort of falling on its face. But if your lineup is particularly susceptible to somebody's fourth deck, sometimes you just ban that one out. And if you think you have an okay matchup against the control priest, just try to just, uh, get a win against it if you can. Eventually they win, and then you get down to the last two decks. Uh, so there's a long walk to get to. Double priest ban, unless comfort. Hey, I like it. I mean, honestly, <laughs> as long as one of the players bans priest, we avoid a priest mirror, and that's all I want. Although, if I'm going to go on a priest, uh, a mirror priest journey, you, you guys are the folks I would do it with. This is, the, this is a crew to go on a cross-country road trip with uh with a with a priest mirror basically you have to stop a couple times for snacks but hey dollar bills what a guy <laughs> yeah hey all right it looks like both players have readied up they are uh going to be battling here in just a second i'm looking through uh, oh gosh okay well i have you mexico what what do you think about arch druid narrow lex because i see it flexing its way into a lot of lists here where it seems like a 29th card uh, it's in the it's in the Rush Warrior, for example, for Azonix. Oh, it's it, a cool card for sure. Um, it, it creates some really, really broken plays if it hits the right thing. Um, I still I, I've been playing around with it some, and I still have never gotten the turn three Archdruid turn four play a seven six, which seems really awesome. Um, it has not done that a single time, but <laughs> Dream is a very good card. Um, it's a one mana, you know, sap, which is just super nasty. Um, you can get a three mana deal five damage to the entire board. You can get a zero mana plus four plus four buff that you would probably just hold for a lethal push at the end or a crucial trade. And then there's a couple minions that are pretty good stats wise. So everything it generates is pretty solid. The card, of course, is just that, you know, it's such a massive tempo loss. So you spend three mana and you do basically nothing. And that card doesn't even get to make an impact on the board for an additional couple turns. And when it wakes up, it doesn't even have rush or anything. It's just a, a very meh 3-3. Three, three. But the cards it generates can be insane. And I think it fits very well in a deck like Rush Warrior that has so many proactive strategies to fight back for the board and make up for tempo losses. Uh, same kind of reason maybe that Rush Warrior has been starting to run Mutanus. It affords itself the, I guess, the uh, ability to do those kinds of things with its methods of fighting back for the board from behind at any point with just, you know, an entire deck full of rush minions almost. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point about the tempo. You know, three spending three mana for zero stats, and then no, and you don't even get to use the first dream card on turn three. You have to you have to wait until turn four. But sometimes that turn four play seven six dragon, just uh, and uh, it seems like more rush warriors are already playing Nazoth, God of the Deep as well. And it's, you know, you you expect to get tent trashers, maybe your Alexstrasza, depending, but. You know, sometimes you get an emerald, sometimes you get two bites of that emerald drake. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it doesn't have rush, but it's got plus two, plus one on that tent trasher. Uh, and I guess that a, a lot of the reasons you're talking about also can explain how it's sneaking into Control Priest. Actually, Azonix playing it in both Control Priest and Rush Warrior. And Priest is another one where so many of the cards generate replacement cards that they can play five cards a turn and still have a handful of cards just yeah absolutely it's uh it's an interesting one i think we'll see a lot more of the newer cards kind of gradually crack their way into the meta as this meta gets a little bit more figured out too uh it's still in a, a pretty reasonably unstable spot at the moment so players kind of feeling their way through and seeing what works and what doesn't right now Certainly. Nothing like, a, nothing like a metagame that you can measure in hours <laughs> to try to <laughs> figure out what to do. Uh, on Venus Bomoni's side, I'm looking at the Death Rattle Demon Hunter and an interesting but important uh, mix-up from maybe 
some lists that, that at least I had been seeing previously is no Nazoth at the top end. And I think that's because there's two copies of Sigil of Summoning, uh, the new card that is two mana. At the start of your next turn, you summon two, two, two demons with taunt. And that actually messes up your Nazoth pool. <laughs> that's a thing you learn once and you learn it sharply. <laughs> it's like, oh crap, those taunts are demons. That means I don't get my Illidari Inquisitor back off Nazoth anymore. Not guaranteed. And that's I did, just a... in fact, find that out the hard way on ladder. Um, <laughs> yes. I was experimenting with that list and I ran a Sigil of Summoning. I'm like, this sounds pretty sweet lethal and i was all ready to to kill my opponent and then it summoned a 2-2 instead of an 8-8 that went face and i was like oh 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 no <laughs> oh no <laughs> we uh the bands the are band. in oh yeah um the druid was um azonix druid was banned while venus ramon's priest was banned. okay hey that's hey. what I like to hear. So we are not going to see a priest mirror. And I can see the logic from Vino Spumoni, especially if he anticipates that his priest was going to be banned. Uh, there's Demon Hunter and Mage, which, which both really don't want to face that druid. So just getting the token druid out of the way. Yeah, and when you have just a vulnerability like that, you know, just probably just feels more comfortable. If you spent any time you know, doing tournament stuff, you probably have a lot of reps against Priest, so it may not be what you want what you want to play against, but you probably you probably don't feel like you're going to get just straight high rolled on turn five, you know, or, or get one of the vulnerabilities in your deck's early game exploited. You know, if you're trying to do stuff like Encanter's Flow on turn two, get set up, find some draw, and, and Druid just runs you over with a double arbor up, <laughs> you're just, you're done. Absolutely. Uh, and we've got the players are jumping into the match right here. We are starting off with a Demon Hunter for Vino Spumoni and a Warrior from Azonix. All right, there's that Sigil of Summoning early, which uh, if you're Vino, you love to see. Dreadlord's Bite, Vengeful Spirit, and Star Student's Delina. This is interesting, because uh, I was going to make an argument for maybe the Vengeful Spirit, but there's already so much draw in hand that the Dreadlord's Bite is just going to let you maybe battle back on board a little bit. Yeah, and very crucially is holding that Death Speaker Blackthorn, one of the best cards in this entire list, and has the ability to drop this right on turn seven, and that's going to be the crucial turn for Vino Spumoni. We will see if Azonix can set up a, a way to deal with that in advance. Yeah, looking into Azonix hand, it's a hand that really wants to drop this Watley and drop conditioning uh, just to maximize the the potential uh, of that conditioning, but that's a slow game plan. And so, you know, Vino did crucially did not play a razor bore or a tusk piercer or anything on turn one or two. So maybe just a tempo parade leader before I can finish saying it. There it is. And here come the taunts and Vino Spumoni has a three mana four, four that draws two cards. Seems pretty good. Yeah. Uh, if it was four mana, could be four, afraid four. of the parade leader. Uh, looked like he moused over that Dreadlord's Bite for just a second, thinking I can play this hero power and kill the parade leader because it's so strong, but decided I'm just going to play the better play for my game plan rather than try to counter my opponent's game plan. And we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, with that Crab Rider Top pickup. Deck. Yeah, the Crab Rider pickup does allow the parade leader to gain some value, but. Crab Rider also throws his life away against these 2-2s, two -two, so it's really just a a one-for-one one on a Zonix side. Uh, interesting. I was wondering, I was interested to see when this Athletic Studies was going to get played, but now playing it for one after the Crab Rider means if there's the Emerald, what's it called? The new 2-1? The 2-1 one. One Rusher, yeah, the Beast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it looks like not on offer, so Rokara, Tent Trasher, and Rusty Raider. I'm liking the looks of that Rokara. Uh, the two middle cards, or the left and the middle, were both really good, and Rakara and Tent Trasher. I mean, when in doubt, pick the one that you main deck, and there were two main decked ones that were offered. <laughs> and yeah, hard to argue against having a second Rakara. Spumoni picking up a top decked Vengeful Spirit. Well, I mean, it costs four. It won't be outcasted pretty much ever again, but there's still a parade leader on the board that you really want to deal with. So going to prioritize clearing that minion, playing this renowned performer here. Yeah, and it, probably also thinking a little bit about something you mentioned at the start of the game, Death Speaker Blackthorn waiting 
how there's I don't Vino's not out of death rattles just yet for Death Speaker to draw, but I, I wonder if there's a, a thought like there's not an unlimited number of death rattles <laughs> for True. a death speaker to grab. <laughs> a little <laughs> just... bit of anti synergy to just go ahead and play, you know, double vengeful spirits to draw your death rattles and then jam Blackthorn and be like, oh, I, I drew them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, it's always embarrassing when you drop a seven mana three six and only two things come out. It's like, ah, oh, <laughs> dang it. Shame uh, concede. This... On to the next. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Automatic shame concede. <laughs> I, this is a ladder star donation. This is a, uh, this is so powerful for Rush Warrior being able to coin out Watley on four into a conditioning on five, to just allow the reverse sweep. Because kind of at its core, it feels like Rush Warrior is kind of a, it's kind of got a battle honestly, right? There's not a lot of just over the top kind of stuff. But boy, the stats that it can get on the board with a with a play like this can be just, just game ending. Yeah, and I like this play from Azonix here. The way he traded. Um making sure just to keep this Ganarg alive. Um, it is unlikely that the Ganarg actually survives the board, but if it does, it actually does set up for a conditioning tent trasher play, which would be pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. And I always forget that the imprisoned Ganarg is a demon and actually discounts tent trasher. So, you know, with the number of times I've seen, it's like, wait a minute, why does it only cost three right now? Uh, just, a, just a built-in synergy. For okay, that here comes Razor Boar and Dreadlord's Bite, clearing up that Ganarg. So Trasher will not, in fact, be extra cheap. That Samuro and... draw into the conditioning seems pretty good. Decis <laughs> I mean, not, not, decisions. Yeah. Uh, you probably want to buff that Samuro, but you don't have to do it just yet. And you're certainly not saying this is the board that Samuro needs to clear. Oh, certainly. Yeah, just getting ready for a potential Black Speaker or Death Speaker board in the future. Uh, I guess uh, another consideration is do we want to hatch the bumper cars before playing the conditioning to just get a couple of those Dark Moon Riders, get some real cheap buffed up, uh, you know, combos with Playmaker, combos with Parade Leader. I think I'd like to see a bumper car and a sword eater here. You leave up Watley maybe to deal with what comes out of the razor bore. Your bumper car could hit the assistant. You could get your sword eater uh, loading up a weapon to punch the razor bore, and then Watley could kill whatever summons from Ooh. that razor bore that you might expect. Okay, and it looks like it's actually going to be a tent trasher this time. So going. Oh, and actually just going to push three damage to the face. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like this too. The alternate line is don't play any more defensively and just, you know, put some big stats on the board and say, I'm the aggressor now. And this has put Vino in a very awkward situation. You know, definitely also advantageous to load up a bunch of board going into turn six against Demon Hunter just in case there's a Skull of Gul'dan. Make it as awkward as possible to play a Skull and that be the entire turn. Uh, not a not a tough situation for Vino in this case, as we can see, but definitely I'm definitely in favor of loading up a bunch of pressure going into Demon Hunter's turn six. Ooh, are we going to draw more death rattles right before Blackthorn? Gosh, I'm looking through the list right now. What do you, what's even left? There are, there isn't a Talon in here. Uh, in this version, it's a Vectus instead. Uh, I am back as the resident death. <laughs> Death Rattle Demon Hunter player here. Master, if you will. I don't think we play that Blackthorn. I think we're, we're not all like fools. We're not we're not playing Blackthorn at all. Because right, yeah, right now it's Fell Rattlers. I guess both Fell Rattlers and I mean with these draws, it it now I mean, I guess that was a fortunate draw from Vengeful Spirit because Blackthorn is what, a guaranteed pull three rushers? Yeah, I should grab two Fell Looking Rattlers and a, Venge and a uh, renowned performer should come off this Blackthorn now. As long as one of those isn't drawn immediately. Oh, no. Uh, still has the two Razorfen Beastmasters in deck, actually. Oh, I overlooked right. that. Right. Of course, they, uh, it's always getting run. So there are two performers, two Fell Rattlers, and two Beastmasters. Yeah. I, I mean, if, if, I'm, if I'm Vino in this spot, I feel like I'm running out of gas. The the one saving grace we have is that uh, Inquisitor pull just now. I mean, next turn. YOLO Blackthorn, here we go. Woo. We found a couple rushers. Nice. And they're pretty solid. The two hitting into Sword Eater will clear it. And yeah, we'll all 
Watley as well. Uh, Watley's going to take two damage from these rattlers, death rattles going off. Yeah, you can do it the other way too. Whichever. Same thing. Spell damage plus one. What's up, arcane adventurer? <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> coming on and, in. And I mean, I guess you swing the weapon here too. You've got another charge, and Inquisitor's almost always coming down on eight. Yeah, I would be stunned. If this Inquisitor doesn't come out on eight, I will fall out of my chair. And I will hurt myself, because my floor is very solid. <laughs> Please play don't, Inquisitor don't on eight. Do it <laughs> don't do it to him, Vino. <laughs> uh, all right. On the other side, this still isn't a board worthy of that Samuro, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to just see... Oh, that's another conditioning on the far right side off the top as well, so just... One mana, five fives. Four mana, six nines. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've got a, I mean, a conditioning playmaker double rider is a play that is very, uh, very possible to just make right here and can clear up the entire board. Is it and too have greedy? Very dangerous. Because uh, we, are, we are at 17 and probably want to address this. Is it too greedy to try to save that playmaker to do a double Rokara thing in the future? Too greedy? That is very greedy. <laughs> if Maybe if Kresh was already on the board and you knew that you could get that 8 armor procced. Azonix wants to get the Kresh right now, saying, you don't kill me from 17. Okay, I was going to say, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm almost. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tantalizingly close. <laughs> it's so close. Kresh will gain that eight armor and basically negate the Inquisitor's effect. But Vino is almost there if he just sends everything face. There is eight on the other side, um, but Vino doesn't have to be afraid of dying to an Alex Straza just yet on the next turn. So I guess we're going to see. What Inquisitor? Do we just kill Crash right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm interested where the where the rush half of this Illidari Inquisitor goes, because uh, Vino could use it to obviously sink eight damage into the Lord of Turtling. But I think I would just ignore the turtle and just yeah. have the Inquisitor hit the three one. Okay, so okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and hatch the Beastmaster, and a fishy flyer comes out. So this works as well. That's a way to just clear out the crash. Or ignore the crash and just keep board presence. Because honestly, it's not like it's doing that much for you to hit it. Just gives your opponents the eight armor that they want. Yeah, kind of gives the crash wind fury from a board clearing perspective. Just sort of... Oh, okay. Either way, is... I mean, one is, you know, clear the board and clear the board, you know, makes you safer. And then mm. the other way the trade for me and, and i you, keep more minions and you do i'm pretty sure you uh, that what that the sword eater on the far left side was the one that came off of ringmaster watley so vino setting up this two five spike does make a potential defensive uh sword eater you know lose a bunch of the value off of the turtle spike as well as that the sword gets overwritten uh but also true uh yeah this is 11 damage Showing for Vino and Azonix. I mean, Azonix seems... has a lot of plays right here to fight for board and clear out all the damage incoming. Um, you could take a Samro now if you want. You could buff and then Playmaker. You could try to stage dive and then buff or some combination thereof. So once Playmaker first to corrupt the stage dive and then going to conditioning maybe? No, just going to copy a Samuro. Okay. Interesting. Okay, yeah, going to... I mean, I guess this protects the Playmaker as well. Now that the Illidari Inquisitor is gone, no Nazoth in the... Okay, well, I'm, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another Inquisitor. <laughs> uh, Venus Bimoni will be dead to Alex if his opponent is holding it. His opponent, of course, is not... Um, but he doesn't know that, so if he just went with the Inquisitor play to clear the Playmaker and push 9 damage face, uh, he would leave himself open to either an in-hand or top-decked Alex to win the game. Oh my gosh, that's so dangerous. Yeah, and you, you know, as Vino, you know that the dragon drawn off Watley has already come out. That was the Tent Trasher. 
So it would have to be a natural draw. But geez, so it's just a nervous position to be in. Uh, and this crucially is where I think Vito Spumoni's list not having the Zoth really hurts him here because there is no way to get more Inquisitors for that final push of damage. Crash wound up just being so important uh, to the warrior to not just get beaten up here. So Vino Spumoni going to take a chance. Um, I, I don't love this line, though, because you're still dead to Alex. And that would be the main thing that would scare you off of maybe playing that Inquisitor. Yeah. Oh, ETC off the top. Is there a way to get there with an ETC God of Metal series of rush attacks? Uh, I think I think there is. Cause there's it's five exact. represented. Yep. Yeah. Exact. Dang. So, uh, no, it's more than exact because uh, Samro is also a rush minion. So it's actually two over. Wow. <laughs> That is, uh, oh, that's right, because Samuro doesn't have to be rushing at the time in order to make that ETC activate. And that was, I mean, you talked about Kresh, uh, to Lord of Turtling. That just undid an entire round of Inquisitor attacks. Just turtle undid Turtle hype. Turtle <laughs> <Yeah>. did it. <laughs> big turtle. It was turtle. such a big turtle, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, I mean, that's basically... Uh, kind of like kind of like we saw in the booze matchup, where it's just you know ice barrier can just sort of blank a turn. It's just like there you go, there's a turtle, and your your ability to get there just a last hurdle that you have to get over if you're trying to push in lethal damage. And I mean turtle hype, yeah, like turtle hype sums it up perfectly. The the turtle hurdle, well said. The turtle hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you did there. Yeah. And so with the you warrior, know, sometimes through... it's just really tough to to vault that turtle hurdle. And we are on to game two, where uh, players have completely switched up classes. Of course, Zonix could not bring back that warrior since it won, but uh, is on the rogue and Vino Spumoni changing it up. No death rattle demon hunter in this match. Coming out with the mage. Yeah, and I've I've been looking through this list to see what the other cut was to fit the second shooting star, and I mean still still. Ring tosses, Apexus blasts, of course, both fireballs. Single flame strike is pretty normal. Uh, single combustion. I think that's what it is. It's one combustion. A lot of these lists run two combustions. So went with um, two shooting star instead of one shooting star, two combustion, or zero shooting star, one lunacy, two combustion. Seems to be the most common builds of mage lately. Yeah. And no matter which build of mage you're playing, double encanters flow early into some card draw. Both players are loving the discounts right now because the Zonix is holding double Octobot. So Vino Spumoti is discounting his deck and a Zonix is going to be discounting his hand. We'll see which discount winds up being the winner. Oh my gosh. Neither of these players ever going to be paying full retail. Coupon books <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> Just All to... these cards going to be green mana costs in hand. Come on down to the crazy THL card emporium. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what to do with these cards. We're losing our shirts on these cards. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Goes with the damage and an encanter's flow. Finds more damage as well. Uh, and we get an emote from Azonix right there. <laughs> yeah, you did just face double encanter's flow by turn three. Good luck. Yeah, and with that arcane intellect on four to just grab double discounted stuff. And that means the refreshing spring waters are three. Uh, the other Mask of Cthune, five. Like, this stuff can start coming out really fast. Both Apexus Blasts are three. Like, that's that's nuts. But uh, oh, Azonix... Wow. Another yeah, got Og Merchant and another Octobot. And, I mean, yeah, you could play Vanessa and get an Encanter Slow, too. But, I mean, why? <laughs> sure. Huh. Yeah, I guess guess gonna take the Encanter's flow. I mean, swindles for one. I guess there's only one swindle left. I guess the secret passages for zero. You know, potentially that can allow. Solid. Yeah, can open up some some plays. Uh, there's the shooting star. Draw two finds a two mana fireball and a devolving missile, uh, as well as the cram session being the natural draw. That is terrifying looking. That two mana fireball. Yes. This is a turn ten. That's not a a rank three wicked stab that's just a, a two mana six damage oh my god 
wow, and that can be played on the same turn as, uh, like, turn nine can be Mask of Cthulhu Fireball for just so much damage. <laughs> Good pickup for Zonix, though. He's already got the other Octobot in hand with the Og Merchant. This enables Mancrick to be played as well. There's a Swindle in hand, too. You could even go coin Swindle and try to Hyrule Wife. Yeah. It's probably uh, not the best move, but... Uh, yeah, because, I mean... Mancrick always lives, right? You just you get multiple wives. We're polygamous here. We just step Mancrick, we play Mancrick, then we swindle. Yeah, zero mana ten woo, Mancrick again, harem of Mancrick <laughs> wives. <laughs> just, uh, just out there in the deck waiting to be found. All right, and Aegwin, a pretty good find from the uh primordial studies, even though it doesn't, you know, actually put its death rattle on anything in the deck. There are no minions, it still enables a bit more draw off of cram session. And that's quite good, finding these zero mana brain freezes. Uh, Vino Spumoni says, polygamy is against the law and kills <laughs> just the man crick there. A not going to let it happen. Aegwen not having it. <laughs> Aegwen freezes man crick on that one. And that was, I mean, that was what it was going to take, because uh, other than that, it was going to have to be some premium burn used as removal to take that man crick off the board. And out comes a devolve. I'm not sure I like the devolve so much here. There were a lot of low value already or low attack minions um, that didn't really, you know, move the needle all that much, but winds up just creating, you know, a very weak board to have to face. This here is comes the... the flow and the swindle and its wife. <laughs> yeah. Mad. Mad about getting brain frozen. Also able to find a foxy fraud off the uh, right, how many cards Olga have we draw. played? Two. So plunderer currently would do two damage. There is definitely a way to use the plunderer to kill the Aegwin right now if you so choose. And actually, yeah, with a foxy fraud dropped right here, looks like it is going to be uh, at least a a some damage plunderer into perhaps trading off the desk imp or the. Uh, oh, actually going to go ahead just do three damage trade in the Og Merchant. And okay, pushing some go. damage. Uh, this hand is terrifying from Azonix here with coin. Uh, unfortunately for Azonix, Alex does not have any discounts, so it will be the full nine mana, meaning you probably have to wait until turn nine and hold coin and all these other cards in order to get the, you know, premier payoff from this with Alex Tenwu, Alex Step Tenwu, Alex again. Yeah, to be able to just burn that out over the That would be 24 time. damage. Well, I guess you'd need 11 mana for that still, so you'd have to wait until turn 10. Yeah, and not wouldn't... use any of these four cards in hand, which is a tall order against yeah. a double discounted mage. And, uh... That double discounted mage not able to find any draw just yet. Uh, Runthak actually, you know, it's a it's a weird shape to have to deal with with that three attack and six health. Buff those spells, Runthak. That's right. <laughs> Make this mask of Cthulhu deal plus one plus one. Uh, you're talking about that would about actually the... be really unfair. <laughs> that would be that would be super busted. <laughs> uh, I wonder if there's a world where if Azonix is able to continue pushing a little bit of chip damage. Oh my gosh, this fireball is actually going to be used to clear off Angry Bancrick. Uh, Vino getting a little worried about the chip damage coming in and the double discounts from earlier. We can see that it's yeah. on the Tenwu, but that's just dangerous. That and holding that Mask of Cthulhu really didn't want the mask damage to get soaked up by the Mancrick. But True. on the other hand, it means that you know you don't get that six damage from the fireball going face. And now things are looking pretty good for Azonix here. Oh my gosh, Encanter's Flow and Rogue is so busted. Zero mana. <laughs> Making another big board. I wonder if we see the Shadow Step get played on the Tenwu to try to set up for the Alex burst at the end, or if he thinks it's just better to go in with this kind of board. Yeah, I gotta yeah. hold oh. on to that Shadow Step. Gosh, with one extra mana, the combustion or a discount on this Mask of Cthulhu would allow a big combustion Mask of Cthulhu turn. You know, just drop that combustion right on the field contact. Or right on yeah. the Tenwu, either way. <laughs> so. Instead, looks like it's going to have to just be Combustion to clear up the most dangerous minions. Fireball can go face. Penguin face as well. Just max damage here. 
And yeah, this is going to be where Azonix can uh, kind of maneuver really well. Immediate Jandus uh, has a coin Alex for the next turn, gets a gigantic health minion that plays so well against Mask. Interestingly, though, picks the Rustied Raider to be the one that dies rather yeah. than the Krasnov. I have to assume that's a mind game, right? Because having that eight health there to soak up Mask of Cthulhu damage is so good that that if there is, say, a fireball, maybe it goes into burn. the one eight anyway, but this is going to be a Mask first. So here yeah. comes Mask and, um, well, hilariously... <laughs> Right. <laughs> Zanob actually survives this and is going to be able to push a lot of damage right back. Um, could use Alex aggressively to get your opponent to one. Yeah. Is there it's any an concern? Interesting one. Yeah. I, if you're a Zonix, is there ever a panic moment where you have to coin out this Alex to heal yourself out of out of some kind of runner spells. And if that is the thought, can you ever heal yourself out of those runner spells? <laughs> and uh, Yeah, I, I mean, I like the move. I think it's probably the right thing to do, even though it feels a little sad to um, miss out on just that one damage. Yeah. and One off lethal, but this would have been lethal right back. Yeah, yeah that would have been yeah. a top deck lethal with that Apexus Blast. So the coin Alex play pays off massively for Zonix, making the difference between a win and a loss right now. Oh my gosh, this Earth Elemental. Uh, Earth Elemental is, is insane here, but you, you probably still have to throw this Fireball into Alex, right? Oh, actually going to hold, going to depend gonna on the... Not going to do it. I, I think that's going to be game over. I yeah. think Zonix is winning this one. Um, by holding, uh, by Vino holding that fireball, Alex and a dagger is enough to win the game. You could just play Kazakus and try to find a one mana guy. Yeah, that's right. And actually going to, oh, I assume, try to find first. a wicked stab. Oh, oh, there's a wicked stab. <laughs> Does that? Oh, it's still, it's still we're only not at nine quite mana. There. Yeah. Kazakus draws though. Secret passage also draws. But now we're oh, that's Boys a rush. This. Oh gosh, was was Rush offered as well? I didn't know. Was it was this Rush or is this Poisonous? Missed the shoot. Uh, Rush so. still didn't do it though, because with Stab you'd be one off again with Alex going face. Went with the Poisonous. Um, it would have been the same thing. No, no, no. You would have had enough to win if the Poisonous had gotten damage with Wicked Stab going face. But just gonna draw two more. Then we're gonna passage. I really don't want to miss this damage with Alex. Oh, when Alex has to trade and maybe Vino can find a way now. Gonna have Where? to get pretty lucky with this rune door, but it was a good top deck to start. Yeah, if this rune door finds face, some what draw. We find? Snap, freeze, flame striker, mana biscuit. I mean, yeah, you clear the board. And I mean... Uh, and then you're just on a wing and a prayer. And it looks like I see a Zonix reaching for. Oh, that's a that's well, a fully. That's <laughs> yep, that'll that'll do. <laughs> that is uh, going to be able to get a Zonix on the board with that rogue. And actually, no that means just top deck two mana six, or one mana six damage, and we're on to game three. And as if I'm not mistaken, that means Priest has three chances to get out of here against the Death Rattle Demon Hunter, Spell Mage, and Control Warrior. Uh, it's not that I've never seen it. I've seen Priest get 0-3'd before, but it happens rarely enough that I say I've almost never seen it. If there is a lineup to do it, it's probably something a lot like the lineup that Vino has. Uh, we've got a Death Rattle Demon Hunter, which is favorable. We have a Spell Mage, which is favorable. And we have a Control Warrior, which is favorable, all against the Priest. So we saw Azonix holding Priest for last, trying to get those two wins early and give Priest maximum amount of opportunities. Vino coming in on the mage for the second time to try to just burn this priest down and flip the match around. And looking at the opening hands, you know, palm reading, a lot of cards that generate cards, of course, in Azonix hand with the Draconic Studies palm reading and wand maker. As the mage, I mean, Encanter's flow is so good, but Devolving Missiles is also so good. 
I see cards that aren't in Cantor's flow, so I throw them all back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he does, in fact, keep the devolve, though, which is pretty reasonable against Priest and their raised dead pool that they make with, well, exactly these two cards that we see in hand right now. <laughs> Wand Baker and Scorpid. Oh, yeah. And then just raise dead nonstop Scorpids. Take the death wing. <laughs> Do it. Take the death ring. Please <laughs> It'll take be the death amazing ring. against no minion mage. <laughs> <laughs> Come um, on. I, it's got to be mage scribe, right? Maybe you take hothead just because of the curve, but mage scribe is so good. Yeah, and there's even versions that are main decking mage scribe, so you kind of get a 31 card deck if you take the mage scribe <laughs> of uh, of main deck cards. You already have a couple of turn three plays, anyways. I don't think you need the the hothead. Yeah, true. All right, so Wandmaker comes down, gives a Holy Smite. Vino right back. Just has really not much of anything to do, so going to have to burn that coin early just for AI into AI, looks like the setup. Hey, new card. There it is. That dream Ooh, animation is dope. That's a nightmare. That could be quite good. Yeah, that can, I mean, obviously it allows... Trades and Extra stuff. Extra heal from Samuro, too, potentially. Oh, yeah. Gigantic buff on Samuro Apotheosis. More Dresh comes in off the font of power. If the game goes long, sometimes just 10 bursts off the top, you know, just regular pings for an entire game, eventually activating more Dresh. <laughs> yeah, clearly, clearly Brain Freeze was the misplay there. We needed to ping to get more Dresh <laughs> to right. nine left. <laughs> We have a new win con. <laughs> Fire eye. <laughs> Just got to get it ready to blow up a Nazoth board. And then... <laughs> Smooth sailing. Uh, this is interesting with the Auspicious Spirits, Renew, and Ruin. I mean, Renew seems like the most useful They're and all utility. pretty arguably good in their own right. Um, Renew yeah. definitely is, I think, the best card of these. And then Spirits is very intriguing as a way to try to fight for board. But Azonic's just playing the straight up. You know, when in doubt, take the one you made deck. Right. <laughs> oh, and a dream coming off uh, the second dream of Naralex. So a, a, I think you were saying at the top of the show, just a one mana sap. <laughs> and uh, sap was so good, it got rotated to wild. I'm excited for the turn 19 dream on the Mordresh that just dealt 10 so that Mordresh can deal 10 again. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's for charity. Y'all have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We do have a... We can play Mage Gribe and Nightmare right now. It's not a great use of it, but it would be a clear and trigger Mage Scribe. Um, I like this a good deal better just you know continually collecting value and finds a fortitude oh my gosh a fortitude that costs one <laughs> that's that is so cheap okay finally. so both players with a hand full of cards yeah was able to find encanter's flow finally unfortunately a lot of the burn at least in the form of those two masks of cthune uh, already in the hand yeah, what a uh, what a terrible card this encanter's flow. Pay two mana, discount nineteen mana. Right, it's just not what I'm used to, you know. I'm just I was really looking for that to discount twenty six. <laughs> That's I'm I'm accustomed to a certain lifestyle, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> feels bad. The uh, devolving missiles really just trying to mess up the raised dead pool, but. I don't think that, Priest is too upset to get an Astromancer Solarian. <laughs> yeah, that backfired spectacularly as Asonix is sitting here with a Solarian that could just prompt unbelievable shenanigans in this late game. And just a on six light shower elemental uncontested. Every single creature. Oh, and we're even going to see the uh, power word fortitude come down to both not only push damage, but we're going into turn seven. We were just talking about full retail masks of Cthulhu. Uh, this is like an umbrella. It's like uh, Taranda's sitting underneath a mask-proof umbrella. There's so much health on the board. Yes, yeah, a big, nasty board for Mage to deal with, and Mage is uh, typically favored against Priest, but in this situation, looking really rough. And actually, Could get an Astromancer Solarian too, though. Yeah. Uh, 
take the def- scrolls. I don't Maybe know later, value. Huh? Mm-hmm. It's much power on board. And actually, to your point about power on board, what do we do about this? Is this a ruined orb combustion just to take a six six off the board? Uh, I guess you ruined orb and pray that it offers you a devolve. Oh, true. A devolving missiles would be would be great. But outside of that, yeah, you probably just uh, rune door lead on the light shower and then combustion it if you whiff. And that's a whiff. Yep. (laughs) None of those say devolving or missiles. So still eight power on the board. Uh, The one saving grace for Vino Spumoni right now is that Priest pretty much only ever does the amount of damage that the board represents. They don't really burn you from hand. Although Azonix has a sneaky option here with Nightmare. Yeah, go uh, go with me on a journey for a second. Do we ever Nightmare the Astromancer just to guarantee that it'll die and oh, make that so Solarian fancy. Prime available? Too fancy, perhaps. But it would clear out some space to get some value off this Mage Scribe. This is probably the more responsible choice. Just maximize every turn, maximize the amount of health that will be absorbed. Uh, if a mask gets played. Yeah. All right. Just going to pass. Okay. A four mana refreshing spring water. Uh, drawing discounted cards. Uh, it would burn a card if it gets played immediately. There's just not a lot that Vino can do. Yeah, actually, I'm looking at a lot of the cards in hand, and they replace themselves. <laughs> like... Yep, so has to play the Rhyme Tongue in order just to get this going. Uh, and, I mean, somewhat fortunately, there is a zero mana Brain Freeze and an Apexus that's going to be able to clear up this Dark Lair and summon, uh, you know, Freezers. It's not bad. Oh, that's right. And... I don't get to see the Rhyme Tongue Brain Freeze interaction very often. I mean, I guess any Frost spell. Oh, but, uh... hey, look at that. Oh, Oh, yes. Brain freeze okay, the dark now layer. This is very interesting because uh, Vino could get baited into using Kel'Thuzad to summon his own Solarian. Uh, it's only two damage different, but it would actually be lethal because of the nightmare. Uh, goes with the safer play and just kills the dark layer and summons the dark layer. Did not succumb to the temptation of, wait a minute, I can get my own Solarian right now. Which so Azonix does not have lethal, Ooh. just, well, now Wait, he does. does this do it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah <it's>, uh, <laughs> I dang. spoke too soon. The Mage Scribe actually just generated two zero mana power word for a dude. Jeez. <laughs> oh, and uh, yeah, that was a very smorky priest killing the mage by turn eight. It's priest is just so dangerous. And that, that was an excellent call out, you know, and definitely props to Vino for not getting drawn into the, the greed, eyes getting real big, give please, uh, Astromancer Solarian. That was definitely a good recognition but i'm t- like every time you leave up a priest i feel like it does the thing you don't want it to do like as long as it doesn't develop any board tempo my burn mage gets there and then they're just able to you know draconic studies mage scribes a couple of power word fortitudes and it's just all of a sudden your masks are stuck in hand unable to get any face damage i mean priest ended that game at 30 life yeah uh, it was just a beatdown. So uh, Azonix taking a swift 3-0 victory to move on to the final four. We have our full final four booked now. It is Azonix versus Just in Time, and it is Mr. Python who has beaten Astrofrog 3-1, to one, advancing to play Roadrunner. Uh, wait oh. a minute. Didn't I pick Mr. Python to win this I... and Justin as a... A my other candidate. Hey, this is looking good yeah, for Ron actually, Mexico's picks. This is this is looking like a Ron Mexico Grand Finals. <laughs> <This is> a, <laughs> uh, both of both of your picks just have one more one more obstacle to overcome in order to make it into the uh, into the big into the big show. Uh, Azonix was my was my other one from the very beginning of the of the thing. So now it's you versus me. <laughs> it looks like in the Azonix versus Just in Time semifinal. You so. Top hat on, monocle in. <laughs> it appears it is time for a, a duel, Mr. Mexico. Indeed. And actually, may, just... the, may the best man win. Yep. And, oh, gosh. I hope Azonix isn't depending on that being me because <laughs> it's not. Uh, 
yeah. I don't know. Well, anyway. Well, let's, let's, let's take a look at these lists here. It looks like just in time, we didn't get a chance to actually see the Hunter uh, when we joined the just in time versus booze match. I believe the Hunter had gotten a win already. So let me take a, a, a cursory look here at just in times. Uh, you mentioned at the top of the show, Hunter's really only got one strategy, and it looks like that is the strategy here. We see a single copy of the Knife Vendor, of course, both Trampling Rhinos and the Kolkar Pack Runners. Uh, and the Warsong Wranglers, Wranglers to grab Rhinos and then Pack Runners to try to take an early board and potentially snowball out of control. It's, you know, it's a, it's a tight list, if nothing else, and it's got, it's really honed in on that strategy. My favorite interaction is still Mancrick on three, Codobane on five, Pull Wife from deck. It's, it's so much fun. It never happens, but it's so much fun. Oh, yeah, that's right. The, uh, Furious, the uh, dead wife being a three mana spell, technically. Yeah, Barack Koto Bane grabs it every single time. And and you still get a natural draw as well. It behaves exactly like you top decked it, it True. being Olga. So it's, yeah, just a really good. And that's pretty much all the draw there is. There's, there's two copies of Quick Shot, and there is, of course, the Warsong Wranglers, but there's no, you know, Hunter just as a class historically has just not had access to a whole lot of draw. And so much of this is conditional. Uh, cheap spells only, you know, the or the uh, it, only if your hand is empty kind of text. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see now what the bands are going to be. I don't see bands in just yet. Uh, let's see. What, what do you think we'd see banned on either side? You know, I actually am wondering if Just in Time leaves up Priest. Uh, for even though I just spent a bunch of time saying don't leave up priest, <laughs> I wonder if there's room for Justin to leave up priest. You know, he's got an OTK demon hunter, has a rush warrior, uh, f the face hunter, you know, the the rhino hunter, the aggro hunter, and then a miracle rogue. These all seem like ones that can get there if you have enough time to do so, or if you can get in. You know, if you can do a big tempo swing with the rush warrior, if you can. Do a big combo. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a this is a poison rogue. I'm totally wrong. So poison yeah, rogue and OTK has, demon uh, hunter. Yeah. Well, he has a, a couple things that you know line up. Well, really, just one thing that lines up well into priest with the rogue and um, demon hunter gets countered by Alusha, which of course Azonix is running. Uh, hunter and warrior both get countered by priest, so I think priest ban seems likely from Justin. On the other side. Um, well, I'm thinking about what a Zonix might ban. Uh, now, before we jump into the match, would be a good p time to, just as a reminder, uh, again, please, if you can, remember to sub and donate. Uh, we do have, of course, our Pride event going on, and every little bit helps tremendously. Uh, you know, keeps us going on the stream as well and goes to a good cause. We appreciate anyone out there who uh, has anything to spare. Oh, certainly. Trevor Project, uh, I think the entire month, if I'm not mistaken, is dedicated to, uh, to charitable, charitable works on the, on the side of THL, which is great to see. You love to see the community come together and really try to make a positive impact in the, in the real world, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> just uh, making stuff happen for people who are, who are struggling. So definitely appreciate uh, THL putting this on. I appreciate you coming on here and, and just chatting about Hearthstone with me, uh, Mexico and Mako. I think Mako might be having to handle some, some more administrative stuff. But if you're listening, really appreciate it. This, is a, this has been super oh, fun so far. Oh, yeah, always fun to, uh, to take part in this. I know Mako has a, a lot of stuff going on in the background, but he pops in occasionally with his expertise of, uh, you know, things like Celestial Druid and whatever else we want to call him an expert on. <laughs> I think it's really just an expert at Hearthstone. If you have a Hearthstone situation... Uh, whatever you want to call me an expert on, I'm, I'm practically an expert on everything, you know? Yeah, well said, yeah, oh, exactly. Uh, also, he didn't get to be the host of Around the Saloon for nothing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And uh, yeah, no, that was a fight to the death. <laughs> uh, I I tried to be the host, but uh, I came in second place. It's it's kind of my thing. <laughs> oh gosh, left an arm. <laughs> His left arm. Nope, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> I only need one. <laughs> Uh, from a Zonix side, sorry, I'm just I'm thinking about bands again. 
Uh, there is no priest to ban. So if you just if you just get a ban on rogue hunter warrior or demon hunter, I would assume you would probably because you know looking at the Azonix list, this doesn't look like a counter priest list. This looks uh, setup. This looks like a ban priest setup. If you don't have to ban priest, then you get to just ban whatever you think is the strongest deck they have. I don't know. I might anticipate a priest ban, but even if you don't anticipate a priest ban, rogue, uh, the poison rogue seems pretty brutal for your lineup. Uh, I, other than the token druid, token druid does nicely into the poison rogue, but the rest of the deck struggles. So with three decks struggling against one of them, there's a good case to be made to ban the rogue. Um, Maybe Demon Hunter, uh, if you think it could present problems for you and your best counter gets banned. I don't know if we really want to ban that Hunter at all, and Warrior is arguable. So you could make a case for a lot of different bans here. It it really depends on what Azonix overall strategy is, is going to be here into this match. Yeah, I'm doing a, just a quick survey of how many Mutanuses there are. At <laughs> least two. So Azonix... You know, Azonix's two sort of high, super high value lists in the in the Rush Warrior with Nazoth at the top end and uh, Control Priest, also with Nazoth, both have Mutanus to potentially just gobble up an Ilganoth and win the game on the spot. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you're True. also mentioning, uh, although I will say in my experience, uh, Elusia definitely does allow you to disrupt uh, the OTK Demon Hunter stuff. I've definitely also seen OTK Demon Hunter just get there on like turn seven or turn eight. And uh, not not actually make themselves vulnerable. I'll, I will also admit that my Elusia timings are not the crispiest. Every time I play Elusia, I feel like, ah, oh, I should have done this a turn earlier or a turn later. So maybe if there's a more experience uh, available, I can can hit that Elusia more consistently than than this poor schmuck over here pointing at myself. You can't see. Me. <laughs> uh, but Mutanus is a way to just if you see a big draw turn or if you're seeing. Uh, uh, anything that indicates that maybe there's an Ilganoth in hand, bam, Mutanus can just win you the game on the spot, turn seven. And that's right around where OTK Demon Hunters might be ready to hit the gas. Yeah, it does very much like to play Skull on six and then just always hit the discount on Ilganoth to have the easy turn seven lethal. Yeah. <laughs> it uh, And just anything. And it's, it can be tough as... And actually, we got to see in that Rush Warrior versus, I think it was a Death Rattle Demon Hunter. But really, if you're playing against a Demon Hunter with Skull, it is a higher prior. It can be a higher priority for you if you can to load up the board into their Skull turn to try to put them under duress than it is to even necessarily fully advance your own game plan. We saw a pass on a conditioning on a full hand just to load up as many stats as possible going into the Skull turn, just to try to make that as fidgety as possible for the Demon Hunter. <laughs> For sure. This Poison Rogue sure is interesting. Still playing Mancrick. Mancrick is just a solid... Mancrick just seems like a solid like 29th card if you have any kind of burn. There's, there's much more of an argument to, to play it in this kind of Rogue deck compared to other decks uh, where it may be a little bit more awkward to slot in. In this Rogue deck, it's just extra three damage that might be more than three damage because you draw through your deck so quickly that you know you're going to pull that three seven and get that burn and sometimes it's all you need is that extra three but also it can definitely be more than three consistently or fight for board a little bit and just works really well in poison rogue Oh, yeah, and seven health is so tough to deal with. Oh, it looks like the bans are in. Azonix's Priest is banned out, and it looks like Justin Time's Death... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, OTK Demon Hunter is going to be banned out, so it will be... Uh, oh, and they have started. Well, hell. Hey, all right. All right. Let's I see eyeballs. Let's jump in. Yeah, so I can I can get the logic behind Azonix banning Demon Hunter. I think it's no surprise that Justin banned Priest, and, you know, Lifesteal Demon Hunter, sometimes you just don't want to deal with those crazy turns also might have been anticipating that pre span anyway and saying mutanus might brick so you know let's just get that deck out of here we're into hunter versus druid just in time starting off with the start that hunter likes to see this is really powerful as a turn one oh yeah the ability to act play an intrepid initiate activate it and then still use uh, develop additional things 
Druid doesn't have wide removal anymore, right? Ever since I mean, we've talked about it a million times, swipe is not in standard. So the ability for Druid to clear wide boards is have a board, and the ability to deal with individual threats is what we see in the hand right there in the form of that lunar eclipse. And that's it. <laughs> that's it's just yep. so going wide and developing stats all on turn one. Very powerful against Druid in particular. Okay, so Azonix contemplating a thorn growth here. Going to go ahead and buff with Adorable as well. And makes his own board. We'll see if Justin gets a good demon companion here. Might want to track first. Quickshot is also very reasonable as an option. It's a guaranteed clear, uh, and you don't have to rely on a high roll, potentially things yeah. out of the way and you can push more damage yeah probably the stronger play overall is quick shot and just being able to clear up everything if you are able to stay ahead on the board against a druid you just make cards like this this is actually thank you deck this is a perfect example pride's fury is one of okay. the prize fury and soul of the forest in particular just oh there's the souls for it uh, soul of the forest just finds i mean Guardian Pounce? Animals is never getting picked because that is terrible in this deck. It's between Pounce and Soul of the Forest, and Soul of the Forest is a pretty solid card. Yeah, it is a card that you run, you know, you were talking earlier, play, maybe pick the cards that you play in your deck. That said, Pride's Fury is already a payoff. Okay, interesting. Is going to take the Pounce just to try to battle back on whatever the next board is that Just in Time right. comes with. And lines up this Glowfly Swarm for the next turn. So this is the turn where Justin needs to make some kind of board that can deal with it. Uh, Man Crick on three, though. You're pretty happy with it. Yeah. Oh, and a Gibberling is not a spell. So not able to power up the Glowfly Swarm Probably one additional the time. Worst possible draw for Zonix right there off the top. Even though Gibberling has its own payoff that you could get just brutal for your glowfly game plan Gosh. holding two minions in this six card hand so glowfly has one of its worst payoffs right now yeah four mana six six worth of stats spread across the the two twos and you know that any creature that you put on the board with low health heading into turn five probably, in particular is just dangerous yeah you probably just have to pivot strategies here and go gibberling pounce Lunar Eclipse, um, you know, Pride's Fury, something yeah. like that. Just, I mean, you get a, a pretty wide board of gibbers. You keep activating that spell burst, and then you can... I think you had room for the Marshall Cub as well. Uh, three Glowflies is just really rough here as the Druid, and Hunter just has all the initiative now. Yeah. Just and actually, 100% of the time is going to take this Rhino. Yeah, this was one of the rare cases where... There was an argument, not a good argument. You definitely take the Rhino going into turn five. But yeah, he a could buff have buffed that Wolverine like, traded, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That definitely gets a value trade all of a sudden. It just tells yeah. you how insanely good, uh, you know, Wrangler into Rhino is. Even when you have the chance to buff a mini that's already on board, you still just take the Rhino. Right. And now it looks like it's going to be the uh, Gibberling Pounce uh, Lunar Eclipse Pride's Fury turn. Uh, does get very paid off because the uh, the solar eclipse being top decked means we can go lunar solar prize fury, which we now can no longer do by playing that cub. Yeah, I I wonder. It's unfortunate yeah, guess... to see the cub get played there. He probably wasn't thinking about it, or. Oh, okay. I was gonna. I was like, maybe he just I'm wants perplexed. to keep. Yeah. Maybe just wants to keep them both for some kind of bigger combo in the future. But with the emote, it looks like that was a, a mana miscount uh, on the side of Azonix, which is, hey, I mean, this has been a this has already been a pretty long day of Hearthstone, right? Two hours. Two. True. I mean, we know pretty much like in every situation, the play that Justin wants to make the most is Rhino. Azonix can see that coming. Rhino's always going to hit this Spellburst Jibber. And then this Wrangler's probably going to hit the 2-2 two -two to keep the board smaller. So Azonix uh, could pretty reliably predict exactly what was coming here to yeah. know that, okay, I'm going to have this 2-1 and 2-1 one once remaining. But it, there's really not much else you can do. Yeah, I mean, this turn seems like a... I mean, we can do it now, I guess. Lunar Eclipse, Solar Eclipse, Pride's Fury, but 
the plus two plus six that comes off Pride's Fury, it's still gonna take two trades to clear this clear this rhino, unless you're no, it's still just gonna take two trades to clear this rhino, <laughs> which uh I guess there's yeah, the lunar I mean, solar Pride's Fury possibility. Yeah, lunar hits the rhino and then you can solar and pride's fury and you know press the button you are like totally out of cards and you're praying that this board carries you to the win and you have to trade a minion still into the rhino and you leave up a wrangler or you have to trade into that too like none of it feels great i hey, really Rob? don't like playing pride's fury without solar though uh, yeah, that to me says, as Onyx believes, the very next card is a Fungal Fortunes. This is extremely optimistic and compromises all of Druid's ability to do anything outside of a good top deck. <laughs> and there's Wife <laughs> off the top. Yeah, everything is coming up just in time right now. Oh uh, my gosh. Gets another Wrangler. I don't even think you want to play it because you could just go wide with Kolkar here. Kolkar and Tracking and Demon Companion use a Rusher to kill Jibber. Yeah, and just being able to go super wide. Uh, Druid you has demonstrated... Felma as well. I don't know oh if my you want to lead right. with Felma. Oh, okay. Just going to say, yeah, I don't care about the Jibber. That's fine. Yeah, just going to guarantee that second Rhino. rhino. <laughs> yeah. Next turn, yeah. That's a 9-7 Rhino and having been double wrangled. That is wrangled. not, in fact, the beautifully perfect top deck that Azonix was hoping for. Just another Lunar Eclipse, which means Azonix uh, is going to lose. Yeah, I mean, how does, this, how does Azonix stay in for another turn? I'm not... So I guess a Lunar Eclipse hero power uh, has to remove the Jibberling because the Jibberling actually represents yep. a whole bunch now of damage. Now Rhino can't you know, kill you on its own. But honestly, uh, it's a 9-7 Rhino. It's not going to die. Just, it's just going to slam it on this board. Yeah, I mean, there's really no reason not to. I guess you can tracking first just to see if something tantalizing happens. But I would be stunned if this Rhino doesn't hit the board. Yeah, I would just play this. Oh, okay. Now going to go wide. So going to go ahead and play the pack runners. No, and... Rhino. Justin is just doing the play, the other play every time that I call it. It's still good. <laughs> They're all good at this point because just every line is a winning line for Justin. But maybe that was a way that he could have possibly lost by playing Rhino. Uh, if, you know, Azonix had a crazy pop-off turn that went wide, so Justin kind of prepared for it in advance. Uh, nicely done. You know, just kind of playing to how do I lose? possibilities and picks up that game one yeah and i think that inflection point was definitely the the marsul cub because i don't i don't know if azonix ever wins that game necessarily with just the amount of rhino pressure coming off plus the pair of coal cars in hand and spells to to trip them so it's possible that just in time gets there every time uh but a big old board of gibberlings might might have helped so that would be if i could resume from replay that is where that's the turn i would drop in on and see how the game plays out but Druid once again, this time up against the Rogue from Just in Time. And a quick reminder, this is the Poison Rogue featuring Shanks and Poisons. Indeed. And this Rogue is hard countered by this Druid. So this is Rogue's basically only bad matchup in this set. And Azonix, you know shown a determination to stick to the druid to try to maybe line it up into the rogue to get that good matchup yeah yeah that's a sort of sort of a similar line of thinking to the q control warlock every time until you hit priest kind of a mentality just druid there's that rogue. arbor up oh that would have been good last game <laughs> oh that fun before just would have been real good last game <laughs> <laughs> oh, they no, really in hand already. It's just I a... mean, it's good here too. <laughs> yep. Turn two fungal is very nice for Druid, and already holding a jibber makes it exceedingly unlikely to discard the one card in deck that you would discard, being that jibberling, which he does not. Oh my gosh! And look at this glow. This is a much healthier looking glowfly going into. It's still a couple turns off, but Justin it... does get to get this shank online as early as possible with the deadly poison in hand. That's the main way that Rogue can still find a way to win this. Yeah, I also am interested to see the timings on these cloaks of shadows because that can be another way where you can just blank, just blank Druid for two turns if you're able to go cloak into cloak and sometimes sneak it over the line there. As long as there, a lot of things have to go right, <laughs> but the cloak of shadows can be a linchpin of 
things going right. Certainly can. And we see uh, Justin taking advantage of this opportunity to push damage while Azonix has been loading up on dangerous cards, but nothing that can test just yet. Uh, really needed to find, you know, the thorn growth sentries or blocking damage or just assembling some kind of board and instead just feel like he needs to go in on this gibber right now. Hope that he finds um, a ramp card to play the thorn growth. But consistently just bricking on those guess the weights. And things are looking about as good as they possibly can for a bad matchup for Justin right now. Just jamming damage and clearing up the dangerous minion. Yeah, it looks good. You play the Plunderer as well. Actually has board presence, a charged up weapon, face damage. Druid wants to play a Glowfly, but is staring down, what, eight additional damage just from board alone? Gotta do it. It's a Lunar Glowfly. All right, Justin continually pushing more damage, gets the draw, finds a swindle off the top with a prep swindle here. And that's another wicked stab. That is just so much damage that Justin is lining up with a Cloak of Shadows ready uh, when the Druid presents a dangerous board, gets a Sinister Strike. Oh, man. But a single ramp card, I mean, if Justin ignored this board and didn't cloak, a single ramp card would still be uh, the game because of Solar and Arbor Up. So unfortunately, once again, for Zonix, did not find any ramp, but does have the taunts. And this is a very beefy board now. Justin gonna struggle against this. Double coerce, not gonna be enough. And the the sinister strikes. I had a high impedance air gap in my signal pathway for a second. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm glad you I'm glad you mentioned everything about the Cloak of Shadows, though, because that's what I was trying to. I was like, talk about Cloak of Shadows. He has to play it. <laughs> Even though he's got 30 life, he must Cloak of Shadows. I don't think he was 100 percent dead um, without a ramp card, right? With uh, even Solar Pride's Fury right. as an option. It was it, still just a little bit off. Um, oh, yeah. He had saved Cloak. Um, but Justin doesn't have Cloak here, which means he is going to lose just uh, barely. Wait, double co. Oh, do it doesn't have enough mana for double coerce. Oh my yeah, gosh, so that was so close. This is, I mean, this is going to be the Iron Bark and Solar Arbor. And that's going to be a win for the Druid. So the Druid showing why it is the counter to this rogue. The rogue had almost everything go right, but look at this giant board. <laughs> seven hits, seven hits, seven, seven, <laughs> seven. Yeah. Bam. And this, this is just an abject. An abject example of, I mean, Justin Time couldn't couldn't know that there was no ramp, and so because of exactly that, had to be like, well, I die to an innervate <laughs> if uh, if there's solar and arbor up, and either an innervate or a lightning bloom. Of course, we could see there was no innervate, no lightning bloom, but from thirty, right, from thirty to dead, like cloak of shadows so, on thirty just seems crazy, but you have to. Had another <laughs> cloak, he actually would have won that game. Yeah, that's that's wild. But surely you still. I mean, without without getting because you're you're right, actually, because being able to do additional stuff without having to sink that three mana into the cloak. 
Oh my God. I don't know how the math works out. I, it has to be correct to do it, even if it didn't work this time. But honestly, I'm not sure. If the matchup yeah, is bad enough. Played it right. It's just, it's a really bad matchup. And, you know, he was, he was just a card off and then he just had to pray that um, Azonix did not have the full buff that he had. And that just was the end of it there. Because any other, you know, outcomes, even Azonix being just barely off and Justin does take the win. So we are tied up one to one and we're heading into a mirror. All right. So this is going to be, uh, is it a pair? Yep, it is a pair of Rush Warriors. Uh, not... Not 30 for 30 the same. It actually looks like Justin has cut the Troublemakers. Shame. Uh, Who yeah. cuts Troublemaker? Come on, Justin. <laughs> yeah. And I'm looking to see what has Probably been able to be. In his warrior uh, yeah. was very much prepared. Uh, let me see. I think he was lamenting to me earlier that, you know, he designed his lineup to counter Death Rattle, Demon Hunter, and Aggro Shaman, and nobody brought them. <laughs> nobody brought them. <laughs> yeah, we still haven't seen a single Shaman all, all afternoon here. Uh, and it looks like a second Tent Trasher as well uh, made available in that space. Yep. Hey, when in doubt, the pick the one you main deck, and Justin takes the Overlord Runthack off of that Athletic Studies uh, Azonix, in true mirror fashion, also plays athletic studies, also gets offered a run thack. <laughs> hey, we're in take the run thack. <laughs> yeah, we're in full mime mirror right now. Or it's just uh, the... All right. Justin pressed the button. Azonix pressed the button on to round three, or on to turn three. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is, we've, we have, we have a gentleman's agreement now. <laughs> it is, it's how we've always done it. Uh, I guess Justin actually thinking about the uncorrupted stage dive to just get more, get more draw going, but that seems unnecessary at least at this point. Yeah, I I really want to corrupt that card, but he might be thinking that you know this card doesn't realistically get corrupted until turn four, uh, because right. you really don't want to just leave a playmaker hanging. It can be such an important, useful card for you. And just tempo three mana four three that almost certainly is going to die feels very bad just to corrupt the stage dive. Uh, so playing it there could have set you up for a two or three, even four mana rush minion to get played. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point because yeah, this is looking like a nothing turn as well. You don't, I assume we don't want to ever play a rank one conditioning. I mean, uh, it's fine. You could play conditioning just to corrupt stage dive and play stage dive as well. Um, but you don't love it. Yeah, neither player in a hurry at all, though. So this seems perfectly fine. Just keep waiting. And hey, you were, you were talking about how Archdruid Narlex is one of those things that can just come in on turn three when there's not a whole lot going on. You know, both of these, in this matchup in particular, both players are waiting for turn five to start doing stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, usually Narlex on three is a tempo loss, but in this case for Azonix, Narlex on three is literally the first thing that has hit the board. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> it's been uh, a bunch of studies. I didn't, I didn't see that coming, but here we are. It's a new day. We're living in the future. <laughs> and I suppose Justin just jams the Sword Eater on four. I mean, why not? So we have an interesting predicament for Azonix where... You know, we're going into the four mana turn. Would love to coin out the ringmaster. The problem is hand space. Uh, coin ringmaster. I see master. five health minion. I see five damage card. Rip your Sarah Awakens. Go. That's true. May maybe not the best play. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the math checks out though. <laughs> That's, uh, there's a. Uh, uh, but yeah, to that run point. back <laughs> seems uh, pretty solid here. As does tent trasher. Trasher, of course, kills the minion. Run back would buff the entire hand of minions, but there aren't a whole lot of minions. So I think uh, it's a better choice to opt for that trasher and just clear up the oh. sword eater there. Yeah. And then, so the sword eater cleared and a dream coming off Narlex means that something that's overly burly perhaps can just be bounced back into Justin's hand. Finally, a corrupted stage dive. Going to come down. Go. Finds a cheap Rakara. Going to studies as well. I assume we're playing conditioning and Ganarg maybe on this on this turn and swinging the weapon to clear Trasher. Yeah, I'm I'm down for that. Go ahead and get the Ganarg down. Discount Trashers in the future. Uh, on, Looks on like Justin's a solid side. play here. I dig it. Yeah. And just you want to talk about just a bunch of 
uh, zero tempo plays <laughs> just back and forth here with these uh, dormant minions. Really funny. Hey, Ten look cards. at that Watley. We could play right now and just burn stuff. Let's oh go. my gosh. Some people just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> <laughs> gosh, even Is Coin there... Watley burns a card. Wait. <laughs> so... No, it it doesn't because he top decked Alex. He could actually do it. He's got all his dragons. He runs one trasher and he already played it. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, not so, I mean, just in double well, trasher. Well, Coin Watley wouldn't burn anything immediately right <laughs> it would still it would still burn just off the top all of right the, of the next turn yeah it's not like you would ever play that here conditioning um very likely needs to be the play uh you don't really love the hand that you're presented but you know make the best of it and just buff a whole bunch of cards at once and yeah wow this is just so much waiting it's like a control warrior mirror neither of these players got the memo that they're playing rush yeah and it's it's this weird sort of reverse incentive where you kind of want to stay off the board so you get to rush ordinarily it's better to be on the board because then you get to dictate the trades it's only in this matchup where both players every single card says rush or get a weapon where you want to go second so you get to then dictate the trades <laughs> it's a it's yeah, a strange reversal like of a... Yeah. Like a game of chicken right now, where these players are just waiting to see who's going to make the first board that needs to be answered so they can come in with the tempo swing and answer that board and take things back for themselves. Justin is presented with some interesting options right here. A playmaker run thack, uh, but you don't get to attack with both minions. Uh, you could also copy Rakara. You could copy a Samro um but it's it's awkward and difficult maybe you just play a single run back and press the button and swing yeah. the weapon face uh oh my gosh going to hero power and pass is what that says to me okay <laughs> that's... <laughs> yeah that's that's also fair i mean both players are just kind of waiting here yeah i definitely i mean i was on i was on tra on uh the mexico train i wanted to play run thack at least one run thack but you know, uh, yeah, I mean, if it's if we're going to continue to hold, I mean, as uh, as Onyx is in a place where they must play something, they have to play something this turn. They're at 10 mana. Yeah, or, just, I'm sorry, 10 just cards waiting until as <laughs> was finally forced to put uh, something more interactable with on the board. And now this lines up much better into the playmaker run back play. Uh, where you can get both of them and double buff your board if you choose. Also finding an ooze off the top, which is interesting and tempting with the 3-2 weapon. Yeah, the we weapon just being, I mean, just this turn, just being equipped and not having been swung at all. That's a max value ooze. And I assume, I mean, I don't know if you necessarily have to wait to ooze away the, the crush fang. I don't I think feel we like, care about oozing yeah. the weapon, though. Right, that doesn't seem to be a major problem I'm but yeah double run back like playmaker run back but maybe oh, just rakara and ooze okay we're going with run back it's just so cool i like this and you want to talk about something that's threatening look at the size of this rakara <laughs> this is an 8-8 eight, eight rakara 8-8 eight, eight rakara <laughs> and a 5-10 samuro the Zoss actually matches its mana cost now for its stats basically Oh my gosh, and Azoth so much worse with Deck of Chaos now. Very intimidating, Azoth. Yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, but yes, in, in, in reality, you're absolutely right. That's a, all of a sudden, Azoth is actually a worthwhile amount of stats without the battle cry effect. <laughs> uh, athletic Studies looks like it's going to be the start for Azonix. Samuro of their right, own, fine. perhaps? Samuro. Is it finally time to rip this Ysera Awakens? Because I'm kind of liking the looks of it, the way it lines up right now. Yeah, Ysera Awakens looks incredibly strong at this point. That does leave us with, uh, what is that, three mana left over, potentially four with the coin. Uh, wouldn't be able to run Thak on our own, though, so this might just be a Ysera Awakens hero power pass again. I know. It's just, 
It's just Control Warrior. It's just Control it's actually, Warrior. Actually, we've been, we've been deceived. <laughs> Wait a minute. Have I been Our bills, We have been completely deceived. I don't know how it happened, but both of these players are playing Control Rush Warrior. <laughs> Ron, I'm so lost. <laughs> All right. Uh, I mean, the amount of respect that these players have given to each other's capability of just, you know, going off with their buffed boards and swinging the momentum back it has been pretty impressive. Uh, but now Justin finally, you know, forced to kind of go in a little bit more, plays that ooze. You know, it's a pretty beefy ooze. We get the crab rider down, uh, just plays a bumper car too, because, you know, there's not much else to do anymore. And Nizoth probably has to hit the board on nine. Yeah, that's uh, that's what this play says to me, is that I would like a bumper cars off my Nazoth, because I think this is the first bumper cars that's been played, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Ooze, of course, doesn't uh, have yes. a tag, but so yeah, Nazoth right now has, what, a Sword Eater, Crab Rider, bumper car uh, loaded in uh, on turn nine. Yep, and that's it. And that's it, <laughs> yeah. All right, run that going to be and able to... And that would be assuming up. that this... Um... This crab actually dies first. Oh, yeah, that's a great point. Right now, the crab rider is actually fine. Coin Runthak. <laughs> yeah, double Runthak seems pretty good. I, I, is Justin going to attack in? Oh, no, the crab rider can't die. There's not enough yeah, attack. <laughs> you can't even get it from Nizoth. So Nizoth will literally only pull you a sword eater and uh the mech so yeah it just really can't play the the nizoth here this is a very big samuro though yes a gigantic samuro finds <laughs> a run back yeah i think the samuro is just the play and yep and all, yep. Both of, <laughs> we don't need to bump rakara any further than 8888 is is just fine on its own I don't think we need to be mana efficient with the rider just to get one additional thing on the board. Uh, you also know that your opponent, you know, main decks a Samuro, so it could just easily die as well. Oh, All right. Mutanus, oh. though. Mutanus it always hits the Zoth. It Every single time. <laughs> There's a, a guaranteed hits old gods. This is a threatening amount of damage. You know, 21. You could dream that 8 8 Rakara, though. I, you I could like actually that. like Mutanus and Dream, and uh, let's see what else would you do? I mean, just a six seven parade leader is honestly fine. You could also play that five power bumper car, but it can't kill anything on the board. I mean, it's just it's really optimistic. I was looking at a way that you could actually try to play Mutanus, but I don't think it's ever the play here. Yeah, just the um, Mutanus while while incredible tricky to play with there i guess there's what 21 damage is there any way we can because i'm doing the same thing but i want to play troublemaker but i don't think there's a safe way to do that either it's like if you dream um, rokara or something troublemaker this is interesting <laughs> going with the alex i mean it is a 12 12 so it's a pretty difficult dangerous minion to deal with uh justin finally finding some more good things that he can bring back from nizoth to the Runthak and Tent Trasher is looking pretty nice right now. Can also play a Dark Moon Rider alongside it and get the full clear of Alex to enable 10 power on board to just go face immediately. 13 if he wants to swing that weapon. I, I do like the sound of getting some damage uh, face because just in time has not been able to uh, keep up on resources, and we see a resource reload in his Onyx hand in the form of that Ringmaster Watley. So it seems like, you know, this is obviously two Rush Warriors battling against each other. Uh, it seems like Justin has sort of been put in the beatdown position, just sort of the way two decks interact with each other. Someone usually ends up in the beatdown chair, and I think that, at least for the time being, that person is Justin. Oh, Justin looking at tank 12 damage to preserve a 2-2? Wow. Uh, I um, mean, that's... <laughs> preserve, why would you want to preserve the dragon when you're getting the dragon back from Nizoth? I'm not sure I like this from Justin, but um, just keeping max power on board for this turn, which I suppose prompts your opponent to try to play as conservatively as possible. 
Yeah, is going to make the uh, Troublemaker once again awkward. The Samuro is only a three attack Samuro, so it can clear off the opposing Samuro and Rider, but uh, or it can clear off the, the Tent Trasher and the Rider, but can't get both six sixes. Yeah, and I think because of Nizoth, you'd probably always want to kill the Samuro and leave the Dragon alive if you yeah. chose to go with that play. Yeah, that's a great point. What's with an hour, Parade Leader, you could actually make the Samro a 5 power, and you could also play the Bumper Car, which makes it a 7 power. And actually, to your point about the, the Tent Trasher, does that, is that ever the dream target, where you can just, if you're, like, if you're gonna, you can just regular Samro to get the 6-6 six, six and the 2-2 two, two and just dream the Tent Trasher back? Going with Watley, that's a very surprising decision here. Okay, so Dreaming the Trasher. Just going to try to keep that out of the Nazoth and, you know, one mana, send a five cost card back to their hand uh, and develop a pretty threatening board uh, of their own while still being able to draw. You know, Watley was still a draw, too. You mentioned that all the dragons have been used up already, but still managing to hit a bumper car and a sword eater to just maintain that resource advantage. Yeah, and Justin just so far behind on cards, on board, on health. And Nizoth, a lot more disappointing because it doesn't pull the Trasher. Uh, these summons from Nizoth are really underwhelming. Oh, I forgot he got a Ganark from it. Oh, that's right. He's a demon. Every time. <laughs> Every, <laughs> earlier today, yeah. I said I forget that Ganark's a demon. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the, the most, it's weird when the most impressive thing you get off your Nizoth is the Nizoth itself. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah, that is a big Nizoth. That's a 10-12. That minion started out as a 5-7. I just, I thought when you were an Elder God, you didn't have to lift, but Nizoth... <laughs> He's game. out here making gains. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, here comes a beefy Samuro, and this pays off very nicely for Zonix, clearing out uh, almost the entirety of this Nizoth board with Samuro alone. And... I thought maybe we would use the Parade Leader a little bit more with its ability to clear up Nizoth, but instead trading away that Watley into Nizoth. Interesting, yeah. And actually going to play so out a Here comes a Ganarg and... Uh, to here make we it 3-1? Do we play two Riders to get two three ones? I'm not sure. Should I mean, I... Ganarg pass? Huh. So yeah, really just not maximizing Parade Leader value, instead just keeping things in reserve to deal with whatever Justin has next. Because uh, everything on this board... Well, I mean, the Parade Leader basically has taunt. Okay, yeah. Yeah, like I mean, Justin's just so far behind that Ben Samuro top deck did basically nothing, and, you know, there there wasn't a realistic way that he picked up the win, so saved himself the headache, got out of there, and Azonix has now taken the 2-1 to one lead. We have a uh, quick update. Oh. The winner of this match will play Mr. Python in the finals, and the loser will play Roadrunner in the third place match. Mr. Python in the finals again. Dang! So yeah, that's your reward for winning this one, is you get to battle Mr. Python. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Azonix, one win away from making that happen, just needs to get through with that Miracle Rogue. Justin still has the Rush Warrior and the Poison Rogue remaining, both of them having pretty reasonable uh, good matchups into the Rogue of Azonix. So they haven't queued up just yet. Maybe taking a little bit of time on Justin's side to figure out which one's best to queue, or on Azonic's side, just taking a quick breather before that, you know, final class that needs to get the win. Um, I mean, this isn't exactly a, you know, team points related match, so you can queue your worst matchup first. You don't need the points; you just need the ultimate win. So you could go with your worst matchup of Rogue into Rogue first, and then tr try to close it out on a favorable with Warrior into Rogue. Yeah, and just put the other Justin. player on the spot of trying to... Because if, if you can queue in your unfavorable or your 50-50 your, you know, one, and then win, all of a sudden you put the other player in the position of like, oh no, <laughs> you know, is, this, is this the time? You know, Even if it's like a 60-40 matchup, like is this the time 
where something goes wrong and uh, and I end up losing. So in this in like the single elimination tournament format, I've definitely heard both arguments. Either the try to gain a bunch of momentum, you know, taking favorables, going from most favorable to least favorable to just try to just rack up some wins. Uh, or just demoralize them with a win on the, uh, either demoralize them with the unfavorable, or just go ahead and see if you have a chance <laughs> and see uh, see if your see if your tournament is going to end on that one anyway. And actually, looking at these, uh, looking at the way that these two rogues compare, uh, obviously they're they're not the same archetype. One is a a swine tusk shrank a sh swine tusk shank rogue and one is a sort of a more standard uh, miracle rogue the there's not a lot of you know as the miracle rogue there's not a ton of ways to defend yourself against hero attacks you know the brain freeze is not being able to freeze the hero uh, i don't think snap freezes off of wand thief are able to freeze the hero by the time you get to like deep freeze which can freeze the hero might be too late that being an eight cost card with no discounts so uh yeah and rogue classically being a class with no healing i could see that being really tricky for the for the miracle rogue to get out of yeah um it uh, it is pretty much a 50 50 matchup though interestingly enough stats oh, really? wise um i i mean my instinct tells me that you know the Poison Rogue is still just a little bit more favored because Rogue can't really heal. So um, there's there's the one chance you can basically Alex your own face uh, and you know hope right. that you've got enough to get out of range. Um, but Miracle Rogue can build a board very fast. It can draw through its deck very fast. Discounts make things very nasty for the other Rogue to deal with. And beyond that too, you also just have things like Jandis that occasionally pull game winners for you, or Kazakis pulling lifesteal golems or taunt golems, and sometimes copy. Uh, there, so there's there's a lot of different things that Miracle Rogue has that finds a way to gain that edge to push that matchup to almost a coin flip. Uh, whereas Warrior versus the Miracle Rogue is very much in favor of Warrior. Yeah, that's one of those ones where Miracle, or I'm sorry, the uh, the Rush Warrior just has a tendency. Although I'm interested to see if the if cutting. So it looks like another difference. Uh, I've seen a lot of cuts of War Mall Challenger being the cuts to fit in Crash Lord of Turtling, but it looks like Justin has actually decided to keep the War Mall Challengers. Uh, you were talking about how it was a a plan, a hedge against you know some sort of aggressive shaman. You know, having War Mall Challengers on three. You're by the time you get to Troublemaker, it, it just you don't need it. You've already controlled the shaman to the point to where the troublemaker just wins you even more. You should already be winning uh, at that point. So really lowering the curve, getting those warm all challengers in there. And those are great for fighting against little, little two, one and three, two rogue boards. Yeah, one, absolutely. Two. Um, quick little update to, uh, as far as this match is concerned, Justin, let me know that Azonix has taken a quick break, but looks like, uh, they are back at it, ready to go. Players are jumping in, and it's the less favorable for Justin first. It's Rogue v. Rogue, and I think this one very likely will decide the series. Yeah, Pirate Valera versus... Oh, oh no, what is this? Skin. Pirate Valera versus 007 Valera. Gladiator. Newest one. Yeah. <laughs> Death um, Watch Valera or something like that? Yeah, what is that one called? I don't oh, even gosh. know. Yeah, one of those, one of those, uh, two, two hundred or oh, gladiator one. Gladiator Valera. Oh gosh, pirates versus gladiators. Almost it's like as the two hundred or four hundred level reward or something skin. So, props to Azonix. It's Valera in some armor. Yeah, got some. Uh, got uh, it's some. Um, it, whatever, no matter what though, no matter what the armor is, it's always very, very green daggers or cutlasses. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> if the daggers ain't green, Valera wants no part of that. <laughs> That's right. She's it's a, it's what she's always said. She's always said it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Justin was about to play the uh the good three mana weapon, but instead drew the good three mana weapon, so he plays that one. 
ah, playing the three mana weapon when you have the opportunity to do so <laughs> seems pretty <Indeed>. good. <laughs> that was a good turn on turn three. Right, this Sonic's is a... coming in with a neophyte, which is very solid for disruption. Yeah, so annoying when all of your key cards are spells. Look at that, four out of six cards uh, just glowing with the red hue of taxation <laughs> from the <laughs> from the cult neophyte. The, would love to swindle this turn. Uh, could potentially even have Secret Passage looking for some of the poisons. Right now we're seeing a hand surprisingly bereft of poison. Uh, everything, I mean... Oh, gosh, swindle for a spell only. Uh, interesting. I'm not sure if it was right, but I kind of wanted to see a brain freeze on my own Octobot last turn if I was a Zonix, just to get that discount right then. Um, you know, oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that was correct, but I don't think you're getting a whole lot of use from brain freeze in this matchup. Uh, we're pretty much always jamming this Kazakus early, but if we had done the brain freeze sooner, we would have lined up maybe for a faster J-Bar, which is one of the ways to just get a blowout win. That Golem, though, that's a lifesteal. And Ooh. things look very favorable for Azonix right now with the way Justin has drawn uh, and the way this match is playing out so far. Justin, going to Passage, look for Poisons, finds Poison, a Poison, and not much else. No. I mean, I, I feel like if you're Justin... You play it all, right? <laughs> just to, just to basically just to get these draws out of the way, and hopefully you find some more poisons further on. Yeah, I mean, maybe you don't play prep because I don't know if you would actually be all that upset to draw prep when you could use it with you know another card. But it's true. Yeah, either way, surely it's not a great situation. And yeah. considering maybe just going stab on the octo to prevent. Um, discounts incoming. If you do that, how do you... You probably have to Wicked Stab face. But it's a oh. very tough decision. As long as you don't press the button, you're fine. Right, <laughs> that's, that's important. Don't use your two mana savings to, to hit the, the dagger up button. So, uh, oh, interesting. Okay, gonna go stab. with Kazakus. I mean, that is another way that you lose, right? Kazakus gets either stepped or ten wood, and they find more life steal or taunt golems. Yeah, so yeah, those golems too many things good. for Justin to focus on that could disrupt his game plan, and in doing so, just prevents him from getting that extra damage lined up, which could also be uh, the way that Azonix finds the win here. I think we're always seeing this golem get played, right? It's tough because, I mean, this Golem is incredible. There's just a part of me that loves coining out that Jandus Barov you were talking about earlier. But this, I mean, this Lifesteal being on board, now the Octobot is huge. Going to be quite difficult to remove without using a weapon swing, which you definitely don't want to do. So, yeah, Justin is going to have to continue ignoring the two minions. He's got a Deadly Poison and a Coerce, which gets rid of this Golem. Do we have enough, actually, to plunder her down a Neophyte? That's one card, two cards with coerce. No, it wouldn't work. Oh, yeah, we just run out of mana, unfortunately. Uh, paralytic Poison. I mean, you're probably not dying to this board, so you don't have to play Shadows yet. You just go Paralytic, Coerce, and float one mana, or do you play that Sinister Strike? I feel like you have to send seven upstairs and kill the Lifesteal. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I, I feel like... We want to spend all of our mana. So if we're going this way, uh, yeah. like you said, there's that coerce to remove the golem. Play the sinister. It is strike. ten damage right now, right? With seven damage next turn and seven damage the turn after, and you cloak in between. The only reason I can see holding sinister is to pair it with plunder to clear something. Oh, um, true. That's but true. I don't think you have enough cards to make that work. I guess you could also hold it to maybe activate the combo on another swindle or something like that. It is just a one mana True. activator. The the weapon alone, he's gonna get there over two turns, provided Azonix doesn't heal. Picks up a wand thief now though, uh, which creates some interesting decision points. Again, do we play J Bar and hope for uh taunts? I guess we can coin wand thief, see if it gives us something better like Ice Barrier, which does not. These are garbage, so now we These can play are Janus. <laughs> yeah, I would look at it. 
rigged fair game has a zero percent chance <laughs> oh, i guess good. we could pick mana biscuit and play mana biscuit and then play j bar just for the fun of it <laughs> that's true that's true hey, and maybe we maybe played more cards good. for no reason Woo! Uh, mana biscuit does allow you to charge up a uh, a prize plunderer i suppose if justin ever does decide to play any creatures which is not guaranteed <laughs> yeah so let's see what's in this and did not find a taunt, which means I think Zonix just lost. Yeah, I mean, Justin is going to be able to set up the sort of Urzat's ice block in the form of this Cloak of Shadows. Oh, and, and even it's draws possible, more yeah, with this top deck, could even just find a lethal right now. Okay, Silver. yeah, prep Silver Leaf. We, uh, I guess oh. we don't need to prep it out. That's fine. You can use prep on something else. Yeah, and actually the prep in conjunction with Cloak of Shadows means you get you get to keep going if you want to. You yeah. can spend all the way down to zero mana this turn. You know, can wand can wand maker. Although wand is there any reason not to wand maker like life steal reasons? I can't think of any. Yeah, I, I think you don't even play wand maker because it lets your opponent trade into it and give them more board space. It never True. finds you a lethal, right? And it would there allow aren't any the one off. mana four damage things that it could kill your opponent. Yeah, like that was your best outcome from it, right? But you're still one off. So you have to play Cloak, obviously. We're always playing Cloak. Yeah. And um, also, I mean, this minion on board now enables Octo to trade in, uh, which gives discounts. I think I would have much rather just seen wand maker not get played here to not allow his onyx any possibility but it ultimately shouldn't matter it could matter yeah well and it looks like gosh i'm actually clearing that bear off turns out to be quite good shadow step is going to come down on the wand thief i guess if we were clearing anything we probably needed to clear um jandis and wand thief and we can't exactly clear both wand thief does not do enough just barely i wow, mean that... deep freeze you'd have to be able to actually target your opponent wait if we took Ocean the deep evolution freeze... can oh you can't target the opponent never mind that's right because they're yeah. invisible yeah. yeah there if we thought about it for a second right <laughs> oh geez uh yeah that's i guess that's the only out that doesn't work yeah justin's gonna take this one wow and that poison rogue able to get there and in a kind of surprising fashion, because Miracle I mean, Rogue... I don't know, you could play the Ring Toss and get lucky. Oh, that's true. That's true. Get a barrier. And you could even corrupt it uh, with the Spring Water. <laughs> if you want to really spells. try to go for it, if you believe... The Rogue Spells. Oh, that's right. Ring Toss oh, gives right, you right, Rogue right. Secrets. I always forget about that, yeah. <laughs> that's right, it's Rogue Secrets. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't help. <laughs> rogue <laughs> Secrets don't do anything here. It's over, yeah. And Azonix knows it, and that's going to be game. If and... we... So in hindsight, looking at that, if we would have traded our Octobot and then Shadow Stepped our Octobot and then played our Brain Freeze on the Octobot again and then Alex Strazed ourselves up to 12 and traded off his minions, would we have saved ourselves from lethal and won the game? Do all that? Uh, wow, that's a really nice spot. I wasn't it, even thinking about that, it, but it definitely gets us one more turn. And then so, yeah. the, the impetus would be on yeah. Justin to try to find. What? And one and three from from that spell. I think that might uh, have actually been enough to uh, get out of right now. Justin easily just could have drawn more burn and won anyway. But I think you did find the line there, Mako. That was a good spot there. Yeah, it would have put the impetus on Justin to find more draw because yeah, it would have taken a series of poisons and stuff to get over the top of that. Okay, yeah. so here we are. It is the best words in all of Hearthstone. <laughs> Say it with me, Dollar Bills. It is game, game five. five. <laughs> and, this is, <laughs> and this is for, I mean, this is to see if you get to battle in the grand finals or if you're headed to the third and fourth place match. So this is... So that is correct. Everything <laughs> on the line right here. Uh, and Justin's got a favorable matchup. Azonix, though, do not count out this Miracle Rogue. It can do a lot of things, and holding Mancrick early is definitely solid. Uh, I don't think Justin's going to want to keep this Nizoth, but there's arguments for at least some of the other ones, for Raid Leader Conditioning, maybe not Samuro. 
yeah, it's an interesting, it's, it's weird having, yeah. And actually this is, <laughs> we see a lot of cards that sort of pay off having rush cards, but an odd, an odd lack of rush cards. Oh my gosh. And the other parade leader coming it down. Does, so like a... <laughs> does keep that Samro in the mull. So, I mean, rogue, of course, miracle rogue, especially well known for having a lot of smaller minions that go wide on the board. So Samro is a great way to just get rid of everything there, just in planning for that possibility. Um, but right now this Octobot always inspires fear. Yes. And and actually if I'm Justin, it might be time to do the old the old armor up pass, which apparently is a <laughs> it's a rush warrior maneuver. Oh, wait yeah, a minute. Conditioning is pretty reasonable too. Okay. Um because well, especially you line up the clear of Octobot to not allow it to get any discounts because you can parade leader coin bumper car. Yes. Yes. And so, just make sure to very slay well. That yeah, very well planned from Justin here. Uh, is Onyx mousing over the shadow step? I don't. I don't think there's a need to necessarily shadow step this man creek immediately, but it is just a fun thing to shadow step. Was considering polygamy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here it is, as was foretold. And no discounts for you. And that leaves a Zonix with kind of an awkward situation in the form of this hand. I mean, you could go contact plunderer the three four trade the man crick step up the plunderer play the plunderer, and that clears up the other minion too, and just leaves two one ones in hand, draws you two cards. It's not great, but nothing's really great here. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what I would hope for because I'm I'm looking at this secret passage right now, but only three mana post passage is just not a whole lot of mana, and you can hit some big yeah, misses. Pretty iffy, and you're not holding either of the cards that you would consider very much low rolls uh, with Alex and Jandis. And actually, Kazakus too would be a terrible low roll off of the passage because you'd have three mana, not four, in order to play it. So, yeah, just going with this play here, the Plunderer. Uh, are we going to step the Plunderer for the full board clear? Oh, interesting. Oh, going to okay. step the field contact. To just I, make that's probably plunder. better, to be honest. Uh, just stepping this field contact to try to go off on a future turn, especially with Swindle in hand. Uh, this can be a pop-off, draw a lot of your deck turn. Yeah, if we'll see how much practice Azonix has on this rogue, because the next draw should be Foxy Fraud. <laughs> Easy. Just, yeah, you just a field contact, Foxy Fraud, Swindle, and and then you're off to the races. Uh, Runthak picked up for just in time, and this turn, I mean, the bumper car can either take a value trade on this prize plunder, which is a pretty high value thing to just remove, because you don't want it to get, a, you know, recursively clearing stuff plus you get to maintain your bumper car for an extra turn so and you're not missing out on run that buff so that yeah I'm this, buying. Is, this is a fair line from justin just take a value trade press the button and wait because your hand can be very reactive you know that your opponent is charging up for a go off turn and need some more rogue practice didn't top deck foxy fraud <laughs> for shame uh, well uh yeah, there's there's always next time there's another field contact and uh another uh, swindle available as well we so the... can aug merchant the four one and attack face with man crick step man crick play man crick put second wife in deck and maybe keep drawing and find it yeah actually just a super high cycle hand coming together for a Zonix. i like that a lot because being able to just turn this into i mean you get to remove a creature that was buffed with a conditioning uh, and Pretty just keep those draws line. going. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I think Og Merchant definitely makes a lot of sense. Reassess off the draw. Well, that hits nothing that you want to <laughs> hit. Oh, stepping the field contact again. Just to... This and field I... contact is getting dizzy from how many times it's been <laughs> bounced back into the hand. <laughs> He's on a bungee cord right now. <laughs> <Just a wood>. <laughs> <laughs> and that to me says next turn is a secret passage unless something crazy comes off the top. Uh, but Runthak going to come down and buff up those Dark Moon Riders, as well as, uh, what, Ooze Parade Leader, Samuro getting buffed up again. This is a, getting to be a 3-8 Samuro already. Yeah, Contact and a Neophyte 
and uh, brain freeze, because you probably want to lead brain freeze, because it's cheaper. Ooh, swindle is quite nice. So if you're if you're Azonix and you have faith, you cult neophyte to rip Foxy Fraud and then swindle and then <laughs> swindle. <laughs> oh, we found wife. Oh, nice. That's also acceptable. And I think this lines up just really well into the parade leader Samro play for Justin. Yeah, probably on Azonix's mind right now that a. You know, if a buffed stage dive Samuro comes out, you know, we can see that it was hit with a run thack and a conditioning, but... Uh, Zonix just drawn all the cards, though. Fireball looking very nice here. Just some over-the-top damage. Yeah, you could just draw one more time with this brain freeze and kill the run thack. I mean, I feel like you might as you well. You could pass. You don't have to play it. But if there's but one thing, one extra, <laughs> yeah. get further into your deck, find more stuff. You still don't have Alex or Tenwu. Which is amazing. Because we've Speaking we're of Alex. 10 cards left in deck for a Zonix. And I have to say that uh, playing the brain free, I appreciate playing the brain freeze because I love drawing cards. Playing cards, drawing cards. Love it. <laughs> if there's All a right, chance. Yep. And <laughs> here's the answer play. It is the parade leader, Samuro. There goes the board. Justin's Opening Mulligan Keep does get to come down on turn six to clear up a threatening board, and we'll see what Azonix can do to reload as all of the cards that he could possibly hold. <laughs> yes. Uh, it is It is a, a kind of unfortunate to see both Shadow Steps having gone, as well as the Octobot. One of the Octobots has come and gone with no discounts. So the just looking at over the top burn damage, you know, obviously there's a lot with the addition of this fireball as well, you know, wicked stabs, but the Alex Straza combos in particular will be a, a bit more awkward if we can ever even find Tenwu and Alex Straza in the first place. True. If you're mapping out the math of it though, and you say, I never get to do anything fancy with Tenwu Alex, and I'm literally just holding you know, Wicked Stabs for six damage each and Fireball for six damage and Alex for eight. That is still going to be, uh, what, 26 from those four things? Yeah, 20. Yep, yep, that's right. Both Wicked Stabs. Yep, 26. And with your which opponent is at 22 and the only realistic way to heal being Button or Alex, uh, you've got a setup here. Yeah, and Justin not going to be able to leverage this board to really put Azonix under pressure. And this is going to be a Playmaker Riders setup to just really it, clean, deal it, with all these two health minions. For sure. Uh, we're going to get... It's two. Oh, that's right. And oh, the Parade Leader's still alive. I'm not used to Parade Leaders surviving. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. So uh, these, are, these are scary minions on the board here. Um, right at the very end, using that one health for Kara to clear up, and this board is just insanely powerful, and this is right, like, that was the opportunity right there, I think, for Azonix. That last turn, it wasn't strong enough, it didn't compete well enough, and didn't even clear the two minions that were already on board, and now, um, you know, might have wound up lost all the initiative, and maybe the game here. Yeah, can't even go for the uh, five mana golem this turn for a, some kind of Hail Mary poisonous shoot twice kind of thing to try to take just some of the damage off the board. So it's going to be yeah. discount. So 23 on board. Um, Azonix has to answer at least something. Uh, we know from the hand that guaranteed they can clear something on the board and possibly multiple things. You hate to lose your burn damage, but at the same time, you can't just yeah, get you, uh, killed. You, you must be alive to burn. It's one of those lessons that I keep not learning. <laughs> you yeah, have to be Zaka's, alive. <laughs> Zaka seems very optimistic here. We're taking a one mana, I suppose. We got a poison deal three. Oh, okay. Okay. So poison deal three yep, alongside the witness stab. It's double clear. Yeah. Hits Samro too. There's still 12 on board, but the two things that survived buff and copy other things. <laughs> yeah, and an that extra playmaker. Dangerous. 
Uh, oh my fortunately gosh. for Azonix, there's only one rush minion in Justin's hand to get that payoff. Um, but I guess that was enough for them to see. They just noped right out of there. So that was a surprisingly anticlimactic end. But Justin gets the victory there with that warrior proving its strength. And we are on to the finals. Wow. And you can see just once warrior is able to get because that, that was an un not an uncorrupted conditioning, but a level one conditioning, right? That was a plus one off of the level one conditioning and then a single run thack buff. And that's just enough. You know, we were talking about the rogue board. It's got one or two health. It's got two or three attack. And once your creatures come out with gigantic stats, rogue has a hard time uh, just removing big piles of stats like that, especially when they want to save all that burn for face. Yeah, uh, that was that was quite the thriller of a series. Azonix, you know, taking that early lead and then Justin fighting back and beating up on that Miracle Rogue. And it was looking a little dicey. A oh, good definitely. portion of that game. Um, but just like one or two awkward turns from that Rogue was all Warrior needed to completely swing the momentum in its favor. And... Uh, you know, Azonic started seeing just big things get copied and put on the board. He's like, nope, <laughs> I don't need to see it anymore. That's fine. <laughs> and even though he wasn't dead right then, I, I think it's very unlikely that he finds any way out of it. So just decided uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of here and move on with my life. And the, the start was such a, that was such a strange, because Rogue was able to draw, what, 20 cards or something crazy? That was like turn eight or something like that when that game ended and rogue had only 10 less than 10 cards left in deck and it's just just big mid-range just big mid-range creatures were enough to and granted earlier on we saw an octobot get answered for no value we saw both shadow steps having to be used just to try to get that draw going and eventually did get the draw going but a lot of the fancy stuff had to be used up to sort of turn the engine over and uh, not able to do big, you know, the the prize plunderers and the shadow steps are one of the things you can do to sort of ramp up and kill something with seven life. But we had to burn all those for draw early. Yeah, uh, just, you know, sometimes it lines up right. And, you know, sometimes it just gets a little bit awkward. But uh, I mean, we saw right there why the matchup statistics are the way that they are. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's uh all right, so do you, I don't know uh, off the top of my head, I will defer to folks who know more. Will we do the third, fourth place first, or will we do the first, second place first? Um, yeah, uh, Lotus, do you know which one we're jumping into? Um, my experience the last two tournaments was just we do the first and second place. Um, ah, okay. I don't know. Gotcha. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That Let, was uh... the case for the last time. For uh, Maniac Mondays, we always just do first and second. Makes sense. So that means our final match of the evening is going to be for all the marbles, Azonix versus Mr. Python. Hey, uh, congrats, Azonix. We gave you the, the spot in the finals anyway. No. Yeah, sorry, just in time versus Mr. <laughs> Python. I was, it's one of those things where I was thinking about something and I started reading something and the, my eyes were just like, this is what mouth needs. <laughs> it's like mouth was like no 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 too late so it's actually going to be the ron mexico finals just in time versus mr python <laughs> hey that's that's kind of it's kind of fancy sure, yeah. looking at the, the player list beforehand and i was like you know justin hasn't taken too much of a break on his road trip he uh, i could see him win it all and then got to mr python and i'm like okay yeah he's gonna win it all and here we are it's these two yeah, this is the 2021 THL Pride Tournament Standard Edition brought to you by Ron Mexico. <laughs> and, uh, hey. and uh, yeah, so these obviously these two players uh, have we and we've gotten to see uh, both of them. So actually, the very first match we cast was Diamond versus Mr. Python. And then, of course, we've gotten to see Justin twice now defeating both Booze and a Zonix uh, to get here. So. A long road uh, for both players to make it to this point. And... Yeah, all we've really seen of Mr. Python is just beating up on a celestial druid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's right. So it'll be interesting. Uh, now, his lineup, I think, 
uh, is very unfavorable into Justin's rogue. Uh, the priest, the warrior, the mage, even the warlock all really do not want to face this rogue. So I think it's very likely we see a rogue ban from Mr. Python. And on Justin's side, um, probably just priest again. Yeah, it's been working so far. If it, if one of those, if it ain't broke, uh, no need to fix it strategies there. Ban Priest and then plan on getting there against the rest of the field. Yeah, but uh, just a, a brief run through again of these lineups we're going to be seeing in the finals. Um, Justin has the Poison Rogue, the Face Hunter, the um, Nizoth Rush Warrior, and the Lifesteal OTK Demon Hunter that we haven't seen any of. I think that's been banned every time. Yeah, um, and, and Mr. Python is sitting across the table with a spell mage, control priest, control warrior, control warlock. <laughs> I sense a theme. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's interesting how spell mage fits into an all control lineup. Because uh, it's kind of a burnier, but it can control. His version does not have that deck of lunacy uh, either. So it's just planning on playing the one copy of Shooting Star, two copies of Combustion uh, version. But it seems to be the fourth deck for folks that are doing a, a control strategy, maybe even a target priest strategy. I guess that's that's a, a different way of putting it. It's a, it's a target priest strategy. Indeed, which Justin does not have. Does not have. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, so what do you ban? If I mean, I guess the OTK Demon Hunter again. It seems like if you don't want your control decks to have to go up Ooh. against... OTK yeah, demon. I mean that's that's also an argument is ban the um the demon hunter because there's a whole lot that um other than priests that you have that just struggles against it. I was thinking it would be a rogue ban since rogue lines up so well into Python's list, but I think oh, you probably make a case for either rogue or DH as the bans. Oh, that's a that's a great point. The I keep for some reason every time I see the Valera portrait, I think like, oh yeah, it's Miracle Rogue. It's not. Justin is playing the the poison version of the rogue. Does Python have oozes? No on the priest. No on the warrior. And no on the warlock. <laughs> yep, so, I see zero ooze. So yeah, actually, I've I've come around. I'm I'm ready to ban this rogue and just hope hope for other stuff you know there's plenty of mutani lurking around the various <laughs> lists uh... i like the plural of it that's, <laughs> yeah that's that's... Great. uh ticketus available inside that warlock no no mutanus but you know the potential oh no there is what am i saying there's three three mutani across all three control lists so hopefully gonna be able to lean on one of those to maybe sneak a win against that demon hunter uh yeah i'm totally on board with the rogue band now well, players are challenging up, it looks like. We should have bans in shortly. And uh, we'll be diving into this final match for all the marbles. Uh, just as a reminder, too, uh, this was a prize tournament. So $25 going to first place, $20 going to second place. And for those of you out there, prize or not, if you can spare it we would very much appreciate considering a sub or a donation uh help a good cause the trevor project and of course our initiative this whole month long to support pride for our community members definitely and uh, i believe azonix let me just double check this here uh because we we had a, a donation from azonix uh azonix earlier you know just that just that uh that confidence of being able to to get into the money and actually azonix is going to make it because there's also 15 dollars for third and 10 dollars for fourth place so the uh hey that's awesome yeah <laughs> the confidence <laughs> donation paid off you love to see it paid off that's right and just a just a fantastic uh cause to try to donate for and the bands are in it is exactly as you predicted mexico a rogue and a priest ban so it is hunter Warrior and Demon Hunter up against Spell Mage, Control Warrior, and Control Warlock. Yep, makes sense from both players here. So this is, is going to be an exciting one. I have to give a little bit of an edge to Justin here just because Python had a very clear target that Justin does not have. Uh, so it, it looks like it should 
probably pay off a little bit in Justin's favor to give him that slight edge. And I, I got, what do you throw as Mr. Python as your first deck? Because the, you know, the, the sort of conventional wisdom in my experience, if you're doing a target priest lineup, is you throw a warlock until you hit priest. And then the match begins, right? Like the series begins when your warlock hits the priest. Uh, and then, of course, Hearthstone is jazz, so everything changes. But that's sort of the on paper game plan. Uh, in this, I don't really know what you want your... Now, to be fair, I think Control Warlock, at least in um, other competitive scenes, has been doing pretty well against Rush Warrior uh, as well. It's been doing okay, able to clear multiple boards. You know, the Rush Warrior can take a few, tur a few turns to get going, and then Twisting Nethers and Cascading Disasters. Cascading Disaster in particular just seems to be pretty well lined up against a Rush Warrior in most cases, and then Yashiraj bringing it back. Uh, so it's not like Warlock has no chance. It's just... <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Warlock actually, it, it's pretty favorable into the Warrior. Um, yeah. I think it struggles quite a bit against Hunter and against Demon Hunter. Uh, well, burn their Ilganoth, no problem, right? Right, that's right. <laughs> Otherwise, problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, how do exactly do we profit? <laughs> it's like, well... Uh... <laughs> Uh, but all that to say, maybe you just throw the Warlock until you hit the Warrior. And then on Justin's side, do you just throw not the Warrior until the very end? <laughs> and uh, on the anticipation that it's going to be Warlocks all the way down until uh, until the Rush Warrior. Um, I mean, you really don't want to cue Mage into the Hunter, but... You maybe don't mind it too much into the other two, so you might want to save Mage to get played until you see a Hunter get through, maybe. Um, could be some logic from Python. Uh, the Control Warrior could be a reasonable lead to just say, you know what, it's fine against everything but OTK Demon Hunter, and maybe... Justin doesn't get the discounts lined up right so that you could out-armor the biggest burst but True. i mean it, it probably just loses to demon hunter but warrior against the other two seems solid i think if you're looking for most favorables as python you probably lead warrior if you're looking to catch something at a particular time there's arguments to be made for either of the other classes for justin as a lead off um you know maybe your opponent gambles and leads mage so you try to go hunter first uh, and because Hunter is also solid against Warlock and only struggles against Warrior, maybe you anticipate Warrior comes first, so you go Demon Hunter. Uh, there's a lot of mind games to be played. Yeah, I'm also interested to see how the Control Warrior, because I mean, uh, yeah, oh, well, we Control don't need to mind game anymore. Oh. I see eyeballs. Oh, it's go time. Demon Hunter versus Mage is going to be the opening. So it is going to be just in times OTK Demon Hunter up against the Spell Mage of Mr. Python. It's a, it's a race, but it's two kind of different races where uh, Mr. Python needs burn and Justin needs cards and discounts. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. And we see Justin tosses the whole hand, including a studies, which I did not think he would toss. Oh, that is rough for Justin. Oh. How come my Demon Hunter oh. opponents never draw Ilganoth as the outcasted card? Oh, it, on turn one they always discount it to one when i play them on their turn five skull <laughs> yeah man and actually with ilganoth in that far left position oh that's that's really unfortunate because there's actually some relatively dumpable cards but ilganoth is a non-starter no argument you have to keep ilganoth so we might need this illidari yeah. studies just on turn is, six. is this a glide for illidari <laughs> We we might be playing Illidari on turn four to try to find a glide so you could just shuffle your hand back because you really don't want Ilganoth in that position. Oh, that's true. Oh, that's that's so rad. <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> you could technically I mean, do it now if you coin it. Yeah, coin out the Illidari studies. It's a reasonable glide. option. Just go studies for glide. Justin, that's... go and double jump, and that is also a brutal draw from double jump really did not want to get that skull right there and things are going pretty poorly for demon hunters draws meanwhile um you know mage had a spell burst minion that actually survived the board has already discounted the entire deck once combustion clears gets push damage things are going great for python 
Yeah, and that six mana mask is is a fantastic pickup moving into the mid stages of the game. I, I am surprised. I'm a little surprised at that double jump. I mean, I guess there's only two skulls, and there's also a bunch of I beams, and it looks like oh no, there's spectral sites as well, yeah. philosophies. So it wasn't guaranteed skull, but it's maybe I'm just a coward. I'm, I'm not sure I would have double jumped. <laughs> 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 So philosophy, I mean, it's a solid pickup for copying a Moarg, um, but just everything is pretty awkward for Justin. I guess you just pick a Sigil Runner to keep drawing. Yeah, you could there... technically play a Vengeful Spirit for the board presence because it would also draw you with Alnos, I guess. Uh, goes with Vile Fiend for the board presence here as well. Gets to copy that Moarg. Yeah, and I guess just going thinking about the possibility of a mask this turn, which Ooh, oh wow, Evolve that was unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, that was a swing and a big miss. Uh, mask of Cthulhu, however, does not miss. Does manage to clear up that vile fiend trainer, and now Justin is down to fifteen life. A couple of Moargs and a fell screen blast available, but and one of the Moargs so, is not a real one. It's a. It's I a, mean, we've been talking about like the awkward and unfortunate draws for Justin for a little bit, but he's also assembled the entire combo that he needs to win the game. Very true. Um, we normally just are, are looking for it to actually hit discounts on stuff and not have like awkward positioning. But in the meantime, like Justin has just assembled a zero mana Moarg, an Ilganoth, a talented Arcanist, and both fell screen blasts. So if he doesn't get killed like really soon, then he's going to have enough mana with coin to just win the game with a crazy burst. And it's going to come down to this finding maybe counter spells that. Yeah. I mean, I think, counter. I think to your point, that's what's prompting this Netherwind portal rigged fair game, but obviously Justin doesn't know. I mean, if there was a counter spell, it would have been picked immediately, uh, but Justin doesn't know. And so Justin has to figure out exactly. Uh, Cause you mentioned we need the coin in order to have enough mana to do to do the whole <laughs> the whole wombo combo. Justin burns the Moarg off the top. Sad to see for Justin, but ultimately doesn't matter too much in the grand scheme of things. All right, going to start Just with gonna... an ethereal augmer. Oh, going to start with a double jump. Okay. Testing for counter spell, I would sure. expect here. Wretched tutor, um, not a lot of impact now we there. Could... We could Aug Merchant the lab partner and then just throw Glaive to kill the two minions on board, maybe. Try to set up for the next turn. Don't even want to punch your minion's face because you don't want to give them eight armor. Um, but you do want to punch the minion's face or your opponent's face because you want to deny a rigged fair game. So there's two possible secrets. And if you don't guess it correctly, it hurts you badly. Yeah. And. It's a and very then, tough position. This is a difficult position to be in because if you okay, actually going to spend a fell scream blast to heal up a little bit. Okay, uh, but, but like you said, and now we're going to throw glaive the spell damage minion. I guess we're playing philosophy. Probably wanted to play philosophy first. Oh, okay, sure, we can outcast it this way, and yeah, just saying the possibility of rigged fair game is way too dangerous for me if he gains eight armor fine but if he draws three cards not fine <laughs> not not less than fine <laughs> uh ruined orb is going to be the start and we see a refreshing spring water oh, come into hand I and a refreshing could definitely spring water. find a lethal here i think oh definitely with two refreshing spring waters is actually going to oh wow oh uh... that's a lot of draw oh that's draw and burn that's 13 needs two more to win uh, this game. I mean, it's, another yeah. spring water. Ooh, could find spell damage potentially. Oh, that's it. Mask of Cthulhu for five mana and then a Pexus Blast that's for three mana. That's going to do it. Dang, that was razor thin. Uh, Mage able to get there, but like you said, that was Justin one turn did float away. Just two mana. Could have played a philosophy and just used that discount on the Moarg. Was clearly wanting to hold the Moarg discount to have that powerful lethal burst, but had the opportunity to actually heal up quite a bit and get out of range and just wait for longer to reload, but chose the greed line saying my opponent's very low on cards. They might not be able to kill me just yet, and then I can set up this lethal and... Uh, paid the price. Mr. Python takes game one.
Yeah, and that's such a tough position to be in, especially when Mage ends up hitting, you know, runner draw into draw. Because uh, it definitely would allow Justin to have survived an additional turn and maybe, maybe, like, like we've said a couple of times, if you're dead, you don't get to combo, right? If you, if you, you must be alive to combo. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, but so now it is actually going to be Mr. Python loading up the control warlock up against the demon hunter. And this one, Demon Hunter probably has a little bit more time to get going. Yeah, I mean, I would say that that was probably Demon Hunter's worst matchup among the three potential matchups it was going to face. And that one out of the way still had a solid chance of winning, but the mage got there. Uh, the Warlock is going to have a much more difficult time of getting there. And not a lot of stuff going on in Justin's opening hand, but we do see... You know, Ethereal Og Merchant and Thalnos and Philosophy. Just a kind of a lot of reactive cards. Well, I guess one reactive card in the I Beam, and then some setups for combo or draw. And but I would no not be stranded Ilganoth. No, that's of crucial importance. But I would say and a tempo we Thalnos. Just see, yeah, Thalnos because <laughs> it's draw. When it dies, it draws you a card, and you need to cycle. And speaking of card draw, Warlock presses the button. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Okay. okay, so the timing double on this jump. double we jump. We look for spectral. Yeah, if this hits exactly spectral sight, that's spectacular. If it hits a I mean, skull, <laughs> even if it hits skull, the rest of your hand is cheap enough that you can move it away and that's get true. the skull um, without too much trouble. But Justin wants to hold it this time. Feeling a little gun shy after ripping that last double jump and drawing a skull that got stranded. But this is the second straight game that he has top decked a Fell Screamer on four. So sure, let's just rip it. Yeah, this is. We could also I Beam instead and clear the minion because of the Thalno spell power, but don't really need to do that. And there's a lot of critical break points in this matchup, as well as when you're playing as the Demon Hunter. If you can keep the other player under 24, for example, then you. Or if you can get him to 18, something like that, there's a... Another double jump, too. Hearthstone is begging Justin to play double jump. Yeah. Do <laughs> Come it. Come on. Just do it, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Swamp ooze the draw. I mean, I, I assume this is going to be a tempo ooze. Warrior has no... Uh, warrior. Warlock has no weapons, unlike uh, Warrior. Well, they have Jaraxxus, so you may want oh, to... Oh, Jaraxxus Claws. Oh my gosh, you're absolutely right. Or Jaraxxus, potentially. Uh, let's see. How many ooze does Justin run? Just one of them. Wait. Hold on. Wait, why is it showing two? Are there two That's... oozes in here? <laughs> Justin runs two one-of copies of ooze, according to his list, which is very, very weird. That's weird. <laughs> <You think laughs> That's just right. take two ooze. <laughs> I got baited by that for a second. Okay, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Pretty sure Justin has. But ooze seems fine there. If you only had one, you maybe would want to consider just holding on to it for a possible Jaraxxus later. Um, yeah. Justin seems very, very clearly wanting to play double jump on the skull turn, which means he's going to keep holding back here, not feeling under any pressure because, hey, come on, man, it's Warlock. What are they going to do? Play Militia for a full board on turn six or something? Uh, you know, oh, oh what was that thing? What was that thing you just said about the militia on turn? Oh, oh he didn't actually... do it though. Yeah. Okay, gonna. It's, uh, it's I crazy. Mean, it would you pretty much that. die to like a Moarg and uh, Immolation Aura, right? Yeah, actually, so you I might just be thinking, ah, eh, militia's not that great. An interesting oh, inflection. We point. finally drew spectral sight at like hey! the worst time. But... Yeah. Yeah, was saving that double jump very specifically for Skull. Finds the Skull, gets the discounts. This I-Beam is going to cost zero pretty much permanently, too, which is very nice for Justin's combo potentials. Yeah, that changes the arithmetic quite a bit, being able to just work in a free 3, 6, 9, <laughs> you know, three, or, sorry, 3, 6, or 12 damage, uh, okay, depending... So Mr. Python has been considering playing Militia for two straight turns, but has decided against it both times and just continues to draw must be just desperately looking for Ticketus before yeah. playing a minion that can corrupt Ticketus in the hopes that Justin is not holding Ilganoth yet and 
the seven mana can find the Ticketus or corrupt the Ticketus and then burn the Ilganoth. Immolation Speaking aura. of immolation, yeah, uh, immolation. as a counterplay to militia, Justin finds it. There's a double jump. No skull this time, but spectral sight. Well, it would burn a card, so you got to dump something else first. Maybe just an Og Merchant. It, yeah. Yeah, on one of these Wailing Demons, we'll just get a clear of um, not the entire board, I believe. With the uh, way the uh, the spell power works, you kill your demon, so it does two damage first, and then it does one damage afterwards, so the lucky soul will still live as a 3-1. Oh, yeah. You, yeah so you can clear this... basically everything. Gets to play some ahead. things from the left side now as outcast. Here comes an eye beam clearing that lucky soul. And honestly, you don't have to play an Immolation Aura. You could just hold it and press the button and go face. But hand size issues can be a problem sometimes. Maybe Justin just wants to play a non outcasted spectral site for a draw one. Just going hero power pass. And just look at how fast Justin is going through this deck. Only 11 cards remaining. So even a spectral site, like you were saying, spectral site for one would put Justin already at the bottom third, <laughs> cracking into the bottom third of the list. Yep. Still no ticketus for Mr. Python. Draws one more time. Still no ticketus. Crucially, all of these minions were unable to die on the board because they were at that health <laughs> point. So maybe that was another consideration for Justin if it was really nicely done to block the militia summon. That was a summon eight, and it summoned three. Granted, yeah, it was... can only max summon six, but still, it's a, it's a very nice payoff. On, a, on her own, she was going to break the entire board capacity of Hearthstone. <laughs> and she, uh, this armor vendor, you know, like when you arrive, you got your whole posse of friends, you go to the movies, back when we used to go to the movies, and it's just one person. It's like, hey, the six of us are here. <laughs> You're in the middle of the row. <laughs> can we, is there a way? And the armor vendor is like, no. So Justin really needs to find this Ilganoth. Do we ever see this far left Moark plus Fell Scream for a double draw of Spectral? No, we do not. Finds a skull, Ooh. but you can't just play it right now. It would burn two. So you got to dump two. And there aren't a whole lot of great two things to dump out of your hand right now. And there is still a dangerous board. Yeah, I think I for that reason, I really wanted to see the Moar getting played, but Justin really has extremely prioritized the Moar discount. Um, oh, interesting. I, I don't actually love set this. Up for a skull this turn uh, to just trying to make sure that there was exactly enough mana this turn, because I was I was about to argue for dumping off a couple of immolation auras. Yeah, gets to, you know, has to dump a card there in order to not burn. Ilganoth buried in that bottom six, but Justin has a ridiculous amount of damage lined up. I see four Moarks in hand. Yeah, and Justin. some of these, I forget which ones are actually the... zero and which ones are Fell Screamer zero. <laughs> and, I also uh... don't know how the philosophy interaction works with a real zero Moarg and a uh, a saved zero Moarg from Fell Screamer. Yeah, so it actually Whether duplicates it copies the real zero or not. It, if it was a skull discount, it does duplicate the discount. But if it was a Fell Screamer discount, it does not. And you can accidentally, as another wrinkle, you can accidentally use up your Fell Screamer discount if you play something that costs zero. Anyway, it still uses yeah, up. So we know for right. sure the farthest left Moarks are discounted. Uh, Justin has all the pieces except for Ilganoth, though. Just needs to find Ilganoth. And Spectral and Sight. Have a very easy lethal. Uh, meanwhile, you know, Python has been just drawing and drawing to try to find Ticketus, but no Ticketus in sight means, you know, oh my gosh. <laughs> you just you can't stop what's coming. Ilganoth is in the bottom three. I think you take the Sigil Runner to keep drawing for Ilganoth. Yep. Yeah. And Just unloading. <laughs> Sigil Runner. Is Ilganoth in the bottom two? He is. It sure is. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh my gosh. Uh, so, I mean, Justin has... Mr. Python is very, very dead the moment that Justin finds Ilganoth, but until he does, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Python's got a shot. Is this taking us off the top? No. 
Uh, Venomous Scorpid off the top. I mean, there is no health total you could heal to. Old tank up odd war here wouldn't be able to get out of range of this Ilganoth OTK that's coming if it just. So yeah, it's it's impossible because you can't corrupt and play Ticketus on the same turn. So this game's over. It is yeah. uh, completely impossible for Python to win this game. The only remaining out, I think, was you know pray that your opponent actually has Ilganoth as the last card, which oh it is. Oh my gosh, it is the last hilarious. card. <laughs> uh, but uh, you would also have had to have it as the last card and have drawn Ticketus last turn and have had enough mana to play something more than six to corrupt Ticketus right then. And then this upcoming turn, play Ticketus to burn the one remaining card in deck as Ilganoth to win. And the thing is, Mr. Python has has the knowledge that that mr python is still alive means that ilganoth is the last card yes <laughs> and so mr python knows that it's like everything i was playing for would have worked if i could have just found that ticketus both legendaries lurking in the bottom 15 ilganoth hilariously the last one but ticketus also in the bottom 15 for mr python and that's not counting five soul fragments so actually bottom nine <laughs> uh, for yeah. for Mr. Python. Brutal, it's because they're brutal yeah, draws. Yeah, it's the it's the amount of dust, it's the density that sinks them to the bottom. They like settle out to the bottom. Just because of the weight. Justin really doesn't need to do anything here. Like basically all of his plays right now are irrelevant. And this seems fine. I don't know if there was a way that his opponent could actually put a card into his hand that could burn something. But like, there's there's nothing. There's just nothing on either side that matters yeah. at this stage. Sure, clear the board, play the strong men. Justin wins, and Ilganoth these... gets drawn, <laughs> and we do the thing. And then it's just up to whether or not Justin, you know, hard throws it. <laughs> yep. I mean, this. Oh, Mutanus was the other out. Oh, that's uh, right, I forgot. Mutanus. I forgot about Mutanus. But of course, yeah. you would have had to have your opponent actually have drawn Ilganoth in order right. for Mutanus to, to do anything, which it did not. That's what it was. Justin was playing around Mutanus by having Ilganoth as the 30th card. It was strategy. <laughs> Genius. All right, and we are evened up. A uh, kind of absurd game where things could have gone then, you know, less awful. But uh, we are on to game three evened up one to one yeah the mage is through the demon hunter is through that leaves a uh, rhino hunter aggro hunter and rush warrior up against that control warlock and then of course a control warrior uh i'm interested to see what mr python opts to throw because the you know he's got two control decks left uh you'd I, if i'm python i'd really like my warlock to hit this rush warrior uh oh it's gonna be a warrior mirror all right so rush warrior versus control warrior yeah, I think this made a lot of sense from both players here. Um, you know, Python queuing up Warrior because it's favorable into both things. Justin really not wanting to just give the win to the Control Warrior by playing Hunter next. Right. <laughs> and this way, you have a little bit more of an opportunity for your Rush Warrior to get through. Um, it has some ch It has some chances. Uh, Watley in hand as an opener is a debatable keep. Yeah, this is an interesting uh, situation for the Rush Warrior because you're going to play big stuff and a lot of Warrior's removal is supreme. You know, Magtheridon, Bladestorm blows up anything. Bear off Rancor blows up everything and gives a bunch of armor. Brawl doesn't care what your numbers are. But the draw in Control War, it's possible to sort of outvalue a Control Warrior in the moment where you just run them out of if you're able to parse out your your threats at a pace where they have to keep using premium removal and can't get their draw off Outrider's Axe and stuff, you can kind of outvalue them all at once where they have no way to answer just a mid-range board, like a fourth or fifth mid-range board. True. Um, and interesting to see, you know, Mr. Python kept just the Scorpid made sense to go with the value generating card. Um, and Justin, I was thinking we might actually keep this entire hand because it lines up well together. Uh, and he, in fact, did full keep 
in this mulligan. So are we just going to see coin parade leader to try to set up bumper car? Python has a very nice answer with a minefield. Yeah, uh, I was uh, about to start making arguments for coin Watley. Um, I mean, there's only one copy of minefield, so fair play to just being like, I don't think you have it. I don't think you have the one copy of minefield in your entire deck. And uh, if that parade leader lasts, then all of a sudden bumper cars is scary. You know, new card hype. Talking. Yep, new card hype. Chaos. What do we got? Uh, a laughing sister. That's probably one of Control Warrior's least favorite things to get off of that. And Justin just going to play on curve here. Ooze, though, can kill a bulwark. Oh my gosh, you're right. Bulwark of Azanoth is a way. That is a one of <laughs> ooze, and it barely way to win this game so i think this card stays in justin's hand permanently until bulwark of azanoth comes down yeah because that's just such a tough thing to get through you know you want your minions to be hitting for six not durability <laughs> you want them to be hitting for actual real damage and mr python will probably hold on to the bulwark of azanoth for as long as possible in an attempt to deflect the most damage or maybe even try to catch an Alex Straza uh, battle cry. Yeah, and uh, Justin here just going smork, not going to commit any cards with two conditionings that are about to rank up and Watley in hand. Don't want to just throw out the Parade Leader and Ooze for nothing. Rakara gets killed by the poison. And... Two Laughing Sisters, huh? <laughs> yeah, those are, those are really underwhelming. You did a you did a poor job this game, Ark Druid. <laughs> Having some uh what were you dreaming about there exactly, Arch <laughs> Nerlex? What's uh this is not helping out Mr. Python very much, but I mean Watley on five with two conditionings in hand uh for next turn is gonna be it's gonna be bombs coming out from just in time. Yeah, Justin, you know, I think representing a lot of understanding of this matchup just Go and face all the time. Go and face your opponent will do the trading for you. You have rush minions to fight for board anyway. If there's a minion on board that can hit face, it hits face. Mill, and here comes a <laughs> card that gets burned. Uh, we burn a playmaker, I think. Yeah, I was gonna say Sword Eater might be tempting, uh, just to have something defensive, but knowing that you're gonna burn their playmaker seems stage pretty dive good. though is, is reasonable because it actually can help. Mr. Python, right? We do run a um a cargath. Oh true, a cargath. Grab a cargath. But yeah, I, I still like the playmaker pick better because it's just so much better to burn your opponent's uh powerful card and winds up burning two things that ETC could be huge as well. Yeah, we've actually earlier today got to see ETC successfully get there. Uh for Justin, I think it was uh no less. So True. Losing losing ETC, definitely a, definitely a bummer. I wonder, I mean, for Mr. Mr. Python playing Control Warrior, all of a sudden is representing a two-turn clock if nothing changes. So does Justin Time have enough time? The thing is with double conditioning, even a single writer is able to blunt so much of this aggression. I'm a greedy man. I want to play both conditionings. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe irresponsible. Uh, I mean, you could. You could double conditioning and double Dark Moon Rider. They're five fives that way. Take some value trades. I mean, like one value trade with the Watley into an to a Shield Maiden, a five five into a Scoundrel, a five five into a three five untargetable. Is this actually oh, there we go. all value trades? We yeah, are it's... always going face with the minion that can go face, and then we value trade the rest. Uh, yeah, I mean, that is, that's is—that's been the line consistently throughout, so I like it. Justin, just you got to find the damage where you can find it. Control Warrior gains too much armor. Oh, it's Mutanus on seven. What does it hit? Oh my gosh, and this is a gigantic Ward Mall Challenger wow. for 918 Mutanus. Wow, oh it's gosh. so insane. That's, that is a huge. giant Mutanus. It's a 918. <laughs> I think I think that's the biggest one I've ever seen. That's, I mean, it would have to hit like a conditioned 
death wing or something to get much <laughs> like you would have to hit maybe yeah, my a giant crazier did that thing start as a seven man of four four what is this no no that wasn't a it wasn't a nightmare <laughs> that did happen <laughs> <laughs> uh so this is going to be uh i mean the the strategy remains the same value trade oh, yeah. with rush minions and push damage face there's a minion on the board that can go face we played another thing that gave us the ability to go face. And then we have another thing that can rush and kill his thing and survive. Hey. <laughs> uh, Bladestorm going to be able to clear off both the bumper cars and the Dark Moon Rider left over. And might be able to find something and off this Scorpid, Scorpid, like an Execute, <laughs> in order to push this 9. Uh, well, that's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. Shield of Honor. Shield of Honor, you <laughs> can make it even bigger. Yes. Oh, actually going to take the value option, taking the in formation to just grab some more taunt minions. I mean, Mr. Python has seen Justin's Yeah, control plan. warrior going to do control things, I guess. Yeah. And Mutanus continues its rampage. <laughs> I was very up. tempted by the hilarious other options, like pushing nine damage or getting a divine shield buff on this to make it a 12-14. But I think it was the wisest play from Mr. Python to take generate taunts and gain more health yeah yeah i mean firmly like as as you said uh control doing control <laughs> it's i uh, can't can't really argue with the okay, parade leader the comes there. down gets to buff a dark moon rider that clears out that scorpid we have something that lets us go face we go face <laughs> so we will continue to do that we re-equip so we can go face some more and I don't like the rider being played all that much compared to the stage dive, but he probably has enough mana still to play stage dive in conjunction with everything else anyway. And was expecting maybe Parade Leader dies here, so get that last bit of value off of it with rider. Yeah, and a shield slam uh, in hand looking a little stranded for Mr. Python to try to deal with. I mean, obviously this is a huge, majestic... Mutanus, but the just easiest in time. brawl Mutanus wins of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely time for Mutanus to win this brawl. I guess do we throw Laughing Sisters into it to try to? I just... mean, no, it, it it goes so spectacularly poorly if your um, Mutanus does not win the brawl. I think you pretty much have to do something like this. Uh, I think this is the right move from Python if. The one three lives, one of the one three lives, it's the only way that um, Justin has any board at all. And right. It in fact does not live. So this is in almost every case a full clear. And even when it's not a full clear, it just means that your opponent only has a one three. Now, of course, the 12 12 on board, Justin needs to answer or just ignore it and try to push with a lot of damage incoming. Yeah, an interesting turn of events where it would take Runthak and a Tent Trasher, you know, or both Tent Trashers or something, to actually kill this Magtheridon. But also charging into Magtheridon is the only way to get Runthak buffs. And since we had to stage dive, oh, we don't have 10 mana anyway, but even if this was a 10 mana turn, we couldn't play two five True. cost cards after the stage yeah, this dive. is a brutal outcome for justin here there's not really much of anything good that he can do so he just plays the biggest minion and saying okay i just have to pray he doesn't have bulwark at this point oh Tanking takes 12, 12. damage just to kill the mag theridon too i think this just is a. you just don't win from this spot this justin's is, out of gas yeah this is tough I mean, in formation, coerce will provide additional resources with taunt, which is, of course, as we all know, cheat. And then the coerce will remove this seven six, and and really, all Mr. Python needs to find is a bulwark oh, at this point. Wow! Wow! Enhanced Those are Dreadlord. Incredible minions from in formation as well. Uh, Dreadlord seems like the play here. Yeah. Uh, but you could just coerce the minion too, and say, you know, I can reload on a a future turn. There's no reason to leave up a 7-6 that could hit me and... Oh, do it. Open disrespect, Playmaker. Bro. Yeah. Yep. Playmaker, <laughs> not going to press the button, just getting the board presence with Laughing Sister. I like it. I think it's time to push back for Mr. Python. And Justin does have a way to clear up this board. Put another board up that needs to be answered. 
after this, it's down to basically Nazoth and hoping that, you know, Alex can get there with that final over the top damage. The Ganargs haven't showed up at all and are going to be extremely slow as a way to try to get that final damage in. Oh, you're right. That's right. The Ganargs just lurking in that bottom 11. And finding that Kargoth. Kar they're clear from Mr. Python. Justin now down to a 2-7 Samuro with his opponent at 17 health. Top decking studies. I mean, Crash sure, yeah, yeah, it does something, <laughs> but it's not even close to enough. I'm just going to load up stats, and all of a sudden... I mean, Python Ysera can play, you can probably play Ysera, right? Ysera Dream the Trasher or something. Yeah, yeah, that seems great. And you could also Sarah. Dreadlord Vendor or something too. Like, there's a lot of plays that are really good here for Python. I think it's just he's in a commanding position. So, do we and... have a very quick minute? Mm -hmm. I just want to thank Corodin who donated sixteen dollars and fifty two cents to Trevor. Whoa! Project. Oh, that's excellent. awesome! Thank you so Th much, Corodin. Thank you, Corodin. Fantastic, and. Probably what Mr. Python was thinking about. Like, I wonder <laughs> what I'm going to spend my... Because uh, once uh, Mr. Python successfully gets a hold of this board, I mean, oh my gosh, Justin having to heal Mr. Python for an additional five uh, at 22 now. This was, of course, a yeah. big Alex Straza, but it didn't go it's face. Brutal. Yeah, I was, I was a bit surprised by that line from Justin, too. I figured we would want to um, trade our uh, our trasher into the Dreadlord and then maybe trade Samuro into it or something. And then Alex, the lifesteal to try to block some of the life gain. I don't think it really mattered. He emotes the oops, but I mean, maybe there's a little bit of better ordering there, but I don't think you're winning this game. So yes, Sarah uh, coming down, Alex Straza is not necessarily something you want to dream back in most cases. Yeah, but it still represents eight damage incoming right now. Yeah, so maybe could do it. Maybe just taking the eight eight off the board because this two seven Samuro does not look threatening, and it's no there's no way for it to get more threatening uh, at the moment. Considering a vendor, I mean, I think Dream is perfectly fine on Alex. Dream on Samuro, okay. I okay. mean, it changes it from a two seven to a one six. Uh, and, you know, it costs four to come down, which just is rough for Justin. And, yeah, this isn't really doing much of anything. Mr. Python has enough health to weather the damage from this eight power. And, yeah, I suppose just really didn't want to see uh, Alex coming right back. And, I mean, if you're just in time, what's a Wormall Challenger, you must choose an enemy minion if there is one. <laughs> so you can't... Yep. You you can't just throw it down as a three mana one ten. It has to fight someone, and uh, they have to fight to the death. So it's real, just a really awkward pickup for Justin. Uh, imprisoned Ganarg level awkward for in terms of top decks. Wow, that's uh, uh, prime if I'm not mistaken. Like that's a. Why wouldn't we just play? Okay, I thought for a second he was actually going to trade Alex and Yus uh, trade Yasera into Alex and play the. Ysera Awakens, which is like okay, but you top decked Kargath, so you should probably just gain that 10 armor and clear the 8-8, eight eight, and that's the move. Yeah, uh, that that's so just, good. It's just so over for Justin at this point. I mean, Nizoth still buried in the bottom seven. That's like the only possible out that can get there. Uh, crucially, Justin's list, if you remember, does not run Troublemakers either. So has less right. total. There's a crash. There's a Nizoth. And there's nothing else that matters. A couple Ganarchs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we're we're just see. to die. Yeah, it's, uh, we're, we're surviving, but are we living? I mean, it's a tournament. It's the finals. It's a best of five. You don't just want to give up. But oh, for sure. at the you same have time. To. You know, yeah, it's yeah. super over. And this is a hilarious combo that was enabled from Mr. Python's generation here. Gets the lethal with the Alakir nightmare. 
gosh, and didn't even have to do something like play a bad shaman deck. Like I used back in my day, I, had to, <laughs> I used to have to play a bad shaman deck in order to try to do stuff like that with a diligent note taker and try to do silly Alakir stuff. Turns out you just play Control Warrior. <laughs> and you can, uh, yeah, scorpage your way into Information, into Alakir, into Ysera, into Nightmare. And then uh, early on you play the... Uh, Archdruid uh, Naralex get another nightmare or two, and then you can really juice up your Ooh, there you your go. Alakir. That's <laughs> you mean you don't just get three fives off of your um, Naralexes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as good at Control Warrior as Mr. Python is, so they have to help me out a little bit more. Okay, so no surprise, Justin going to avoid the um, unfavorable. So. That he can give us the best chance for a game five. You'd love to see it. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. <laughs> so in this game four, Hunter has a reasonably favorable matchup into the Warlock. Um, we've got Mancrick in the opener, which is very nice. We don't want to keep anything else. Uh, the Warlock full tossed here as well. There's that ticket is finally from that Demon Hunter game. Just a couple games too late. Yeah, man, if that card actually had been in the opening hand in uh, game two, Python probably would have won that one with Ilganoth being as buried as it was. Yeah, with the possibility of 10 mils to try to hit it. <laughs> yeah, uh, early uh, early Refa, of course, the demon companion, of course. Always In the Refa. tradition of always Refa. We just coin a man crick, right? I think so. It's. I mean, I guess there's an argument to maybe try to hold it to coin out a war song, but I like Man Crick on three quite a bit, especially with a tracking available to it's try a to decent bridge. Chance it survives the board, and then you could maybe play adorable on it. Um, you're going to be sad when a Scorpion hits the board, but maybe you could track into a way to remove it. Um, Justin, what really wants to see if you coin if you plan for like coin war song, it's not like you have a great follow up to it. Because it right. needs to curve four into five. The minion you're discovering is a five, so you don't want to save coin for it. I think it has to be coin man crick. Yeah, it's the same predicament you hit when you're thinking about coining out Kazakas, right? So you Justin disagrees. He's gonna track. Let's see what he finds. Got a wolper, gonna jam that wolper real quick right before the rope burns out. All right, so, here we go. So maybe holding that coin for something else, because regular man crick on three seems uh seems like it would be Okay, I guess Mancrick coin adorable infestation does allow the Vulper Tingers to take out. Oh, nope, there's a value trade. Never mind. Hmm. I don't know about this line here. Um, you get yeah. a little bit more on the board, but Mancrick, of course, is going to die very sadly to this 1 3 uh, that was on the board already. And we saw right from the top deck, tracking plus the top deck later, uh, if we had coined Mancrick, we could have tracked into an Arcane shot maybe and uh, had a way to clear. Uh, it turned up new card hype. That was a last gasp. Hey, look at that. Or final gasp, sorry. And it gets you a, a random adventurer. Here's the Wrangler into Rhino, ready to go on turn five. You know, spell Seven, damage. Seven, six, Rhino. <laughs> that is gigantic. Everything you want to see is the hunter. And a school and spirits. The going arcane to... adventurer uh, winds up being able to use that spell power ability to clear up the minion and block three damage. And there's no board for this rhino to hit into, which is very good for Mr. Python. Justin, though, no hesitation. Uh, efficient use of mana, pushes some more damage, gets a little bit more minions on board. And this is a great setup because uh, every crystal of mana you get makes this coal car pack runner a lot more interesting as well. Because you could, we already see Wound Prey and Arcane Shot available as activators. Although this Arcane Shot may be earmarked for face. Actually, the Wound Prey may be as well. But it allows you to send those face and still battle for the board with your pack runner. If Whoa, Python, Python even comes up with it. Python's the board. mousing the Ticketus. Okay. We burn five of our own. Okay. Yeah. Get an 8 eight. I, get an eight I like eight. it. That's kind of cool. Kind of some Fell Reaver, Fell Reaver vibes there from the Fell Reaver you days. You could also Tamsin Spirits, which clears the entire board and still leaves no target for Rhino, which Justin would hate. And I, I like that. Yeah. Being okay, able to that's what he's doing. Get the value off of this. And crew, it's, it's 
it's kind of funny how important it is to remove your own Tams and Roam because the worst thing you can have on board is a one health minion with Rhino on the other really side. I also really like this because Mutanus is in hand for Mr. Python and he knows that Justin would have picked that Rhino. Rhino doesn't want to come down onto a board and just get cascading killed or something. So right. Justin's going to hold it back and the way the hand works out looks like Justin should be playing Kolkar and Spells. That will leave no minions but Rhino lining up for Mutanus to do some work. On the oh other hand, gosh. it is a minion that doesn't do anything right away, so Justin can just have license to continue pushing damage and ignore the Mutanus. Yeah, I mean, Justin... Very intriguing lines of plays that are developing right here, so... A lot is going to hinge on what Justin does, but I don't know if you really can do anything but Polkar and stuff. But maybe oh. he was anticipating a Mutanus. So he just plays that Rhino, generates a minion, and hopes that his opponent doesn't have the removal for it. Well, how, Cascading how does, is a 50 50. Uh, how does Hysteria interact with Trampling Rhino? it would do damage to the enemy hero. So that it does, it does. if you hysteria, <laughs> then I six damage, and you clear a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> <That would, laughs> oh, we're not oh. fighting on 50-50. Oh, you're a Justin fan. You hate to see it. Uh, that is yeah. Mr. Python right here. Oh, and with a strong man available, a twisting nether available, strong man is one of the creatures you can put out if you suspect rhinos incoming, just because the... The rhinos, the the wrangler buff helps the attack a lot more than the than the health. And even though you might take a little bit of over the top damage, true. Uh, unless they're able to whittle you down with spells first, always a always a possibility. Oh wow! And finds Draxus. Um, thought we might have seen the uh, lucky soul go face and twisting nether and strongman get played there. Um, <gasps> Python Sorry. was going for the Mutanus high roll and missed, and Justin right off the top finds that trampling Rhino and might actually have a way to get there now. Things really turn it around fast. Yeah, that, that Mutanus play uh, really baited Mr. Python, and he could be in a lot of trouble. But finds a frag off the top. Okay, here comes this is Nether the twisting Nether yeah. strong man. <laughs> We the also problem. get to play a Jailer as well and get more frags in deck. Yeah, because this, I mean, as we all know from the Imprisoned Felmaw, this is five face damage that's about to hatch. And once this Felmaw goes face, as they always do, face exactly. Maw? Yep. Face Maw! And that's going to do it. <laughs> always <That's> gonna... <laughs> face Maw. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Now, so, I mean, in fairness, Python won a 50-50 with... Uh, a cascading and then justin won a 33 percenter with that face maw there but i mean let's be real that was a 100 percent face maw gonna face maw yeah it's got to be who it is you know it's got to it's got to reach down and look inside itself and decide who as a as a fell maw as an imprisoned fell maw who is it really at the core <laughs> and the answer is face maw and so that's gonna it's time it's time ron it's time That's for right. the best the go. best words. It is time for a game, game five. <laughs> hey. hey, you love to see it. And this is going to be Warrior versus Warlock, uh, Rush Warrior versus Control Warlock. Uh, we had talked, uh, you know, five games ago. We talked about how the the Warlock can, can feel pretty good going into the Rush Warrior. It tends to be favored, but you know, Rush Warrior. Uh, also, I wonder if we're going to get to see the lack of troublemakers uh, tech decision made by Justin. Is Are we going to feel their absence in this matchup? Yeah, it will be interesting to see. Uh, Justin, with a pretty decent opener, actually has the Ganarg on one. Python, finding Tamsin and Drain Soul. Uh, some good options early for both sides. Yeah, I wonder... For the, I'm trying to, because th the, I mean, Cascading Disaster, I would, I would make an argument that Cascading Disaster, especially Triple Corrupted Cascading Disaster, is just one of the best removal spells in the entire game. It can be awkward to actually corrupt them, though, <laughs> surprisingly, because you just have to wait so long and corrupting them twice. 
but I just every time I play fully upgraded cascading disaster, I just feel powerful. Oh, my game has crashed. Hold on just a second. I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves, Ron. You got this. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Uh, we see pretty straightforward plays from both players on these first two. Uh, Justin with the Ganarg on one and Vendor on one from Python. Um, I mean, what can you do but just play a parade leader on two if you're Justin? Just continue trying to curve out. The hand gets right. awkward after this play, though. Yeah, not that much on Justin's side. I don't know if there's a specific game plan he was looking to follow here. Just hoping to pick up other uh, useful rush minions early, because you definitely like having Ganark Parade Leader in the early game. Um, Mr. Python, yes. not under a ton of pressure just yet, gets to tap, take a, a bump. All right, well, picks up a playable turn three minion, but it's one that can be immensely valuable at other stages of the game, and not one you love just throwing down on curve on turn three. Yeah, I don't know. This kind of looks like button from Justin. Yeah, push two, and maybe we just clear the minion with our face, or maybe you just hold the weapon swing. Pushing face is also reasonable. Yeah. Oh, you know what just happened, Ron? A Zonix just donated $5. Um, nice. Thanking us for hosting this tournament and supporting a great cause. Well, thank you, A Zonix. We appreciate you. A Zonix, the hero we need, the hero we deserve. Okay, <laughs> made it back. Welcome back. Uh, and it looks, let's see, when I was, oh my gosh, since I've been gone, Mr. Python has drawn a hundred cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's been full resource accumulation for Python so far. Um, not under really much pressure as of yet. And I think for Justin, you know, the Ganarg lived, so you probably just have to play the playable card in Tent Trasher. Uh, it should be fine hitting into this armor vendor and staying at four health. Four health is a more crucial break point than three. Yeah, yeah, it lines up much better. I'm actually this looking This is through. also reasonable, too, trading the Ganarg to try to get a tiny bit of value out of it and keeping Tent Trasher out of range of some other clear possibilities. Um, but Python had the clear for it all along. Tamsin, Coin, Drain Soul, double hits Tent Trasher, gains six health. Uh, works out pretty nicely on his end. Yeah, and Tamsin just... also a minion that has to be answered. Tamsin is a a resource that is just so dangerous. It might as it's one of those might as well have taunt minions. It's just, it just represents so much additional spell power. Runthak waiting in the wings to come on down. Not the highest value Runthak though. Uh, obviously, having a bigger Nazoth is great. A adding additional stats to Playmaker and Parade Leader is not bad, but those aren't. Those are some of the very few cards that don't say rush on them. Unstable Shadow Blast, new card. Hey, yes. new card. Hey, we're doing it. The the inverted piercing shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crash on curve. Don't mind if I do. That seems great. Yeah. Because uh, next can turn, swing your weapon right into the one three push four, and. Turtle hype. Turtle hype. New cards. Yes. Yes. With the emote <laughs> from it too. Oh, I love it. <laughs> well memed, Justin. Well memed. Indeed. And the turtle, one of the side effects of its huge health total, is it's kind of it's not hysteria proof, but it's hysteria resistant. Uh, and hysteria also guarantees the armor, which Python could take another 50-50 on this cascading. Just oh, play true. a drain soul and cascading and try to hit the crash. I mean, does it matter if your opponent gains eight armor? It's not really like uh, how you win, but I mean, I guess you don't really have better plays. Oh, he wins a 50 50 <laughs> again. Oh, he's good at this. He is he's just... so good at these cascadings. Was it the other, was it the other Mr. Python game where we were talking about 360 no scopes and, uh, <laughs> and uh, just making it happen? And so now, I mean, just in time now has a 10 damage over five turns weapon, and that's assuming 
the athletic studies never finds a Krastanov, uh, which a yeah, pipe dream I to be sure. Maybe, but... uh, do you just playmaker here? Do you just playmaker crab rider and stage dive? You could hold playmaker too. Maybe uh, it's a little bit too optimistic to just play it right here. I think the important part was corrupting stage dive to draw again right now. Yeah, and honestly, yeah, you yeah. don't want to play bumper car yet, not with playmaker in hand, right? You're just pressing the button now. Yeah, there, there is a yeah, especially with the if this was the eight mana turn, I would probably make an argument for a bumper car to load up Nazoth for just a turn nine Nazoth, but we have an extra turn, and maybe Mr. Python will play something we can rush into. Mutanus. Yeah, <laughs> oh, but what does Mutanus hit? Okay. I mean, okay. Justin doesn't hate, uh, doesn't love that it gets the parade leader right, but it, it probably was the best possible hit because right. you really didn't want to lose your bumper car that was going to get copied. You really didn't want to lose your playmaker that does the copying. And you really <laughs> didn't want to lose Nazoth as your way to reload and kill him. Don't you hate now, it when a, <laughs> when a gigantic Murloc comes in and eats your copier? <laughs> It's like, come on. That, that damn Murloc. <laughs> All right, so just taking the trades, going to push the damage with the weapon uh, and hold back these other riders and press the button, right? Yeah, I would, I would imagine so. Uh, being a, Oh, okay, actually just going to value the tempo and the ability well, to get more duplicates. At least one, actually. One is better than the button here. Uh, being mana efficient didn't matter. Going wider... Uh, stops a cascading from getting better hits True. as a guarantee. Um, you go even wider, it's going to be tougher for you to dodge some of the other clears. I like this the best here. And now Justin is pretty well set up. If the board does get cleared, Nizoth can come down for reload. Yeah, and seeing a Hysteria get committed. Hey, those two one ones, which are actually just duplicates of each other. So these two identical twins... That's right. Gonna, yeah, going to be able to ride on down the road. And then a lucky soul hoarder. And Justin, uh, we can see in the hand that Mr. Python can't seem to find a twisting nether. Yeah, and serious trouble right now, although Jaraxxus and Strongman is a very big power play that can um, you know, help things out quite a bit. The Nazoth summons, what, a Trasher, a... Crab Rider, a bumper car, and I think a that's... Ganark. Oh, that's right, the Ganark, of course. I don't. A Sword Eater has and been crash. In this and crash. Oh, oh wow. And crash. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so how many is that? Uh, Two, four, four, five things. Oh, plus yeah, plus Nazoth itself. Yeah. So you uh, just need to trade a one-one. That seems doable. That okay, seems like a thing seeing, we can probably. <laughs> yeah. Wait for the player to reconnect. All right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think the play is... Oh, oh mm. man, I really wanted to see Nazoth. Okay, so holding the Nazoth, I guess, wants to... Nazoth probably would have made it impossible to go Jirax's Strongman. And now Jirax's Strongman is getting played. Yeah, I assume Justin perhaps succumbing uh, Justin, to greed. A to load little bit board. too greedy, I think. Uh, what just wanted the Sword Eater as the pirate, too, so Nazoth summons even more things. Yeah, I, I, I mean, get the I feeling... respect the greed for yes. sure. <laughs> I was gonna say I can't really say anything. I love greed. Uh, I guess Justin may be thinking about a post twisting Nether Nazoth. Like, what what would be the best oh, version? Well, oh, it, it wound up working out unbelievably well for <laughs> Justin with that top decked twisting Nether. Seeming like, I mean, you assume right, your opponent would have played Nazoth if he had it on that last turn. Right. So he probably doesn't have it. So it's safe <laughs> to play your top deck twisting nether and bam, there's the Nazoth. Surprise. It works out incredibly well for Justin here. He gets to push the additional three damage with the weapon right now. Um, you can ignore the spirit jailer, but three is going face and you just hold back the rest. Do you ever play a rider to try to make things harder for cascading to deal with? Uh, I do like, like rider adding... does it's not a battle cry, so it can only hit once, so you can't possibly clear the jailer anyway. Huh, just taking an attack on it. I guess it doesn't change any school uh, spirits math well, or anything. Sword eater. Maybe that was some logic behind it. I'm not sure. But uh this looks like it's game over. 
Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how Mr. Python gets out of this one alive. The uh, cascading disaster is fully corrupted, so it is a remove three for four. Oh, and it hits poorly. Um, but Python's not dead yet. Nope, is able to hit some fragments. Oh, finds a strong... You mentioned the power play of Jirax, a strong man. As long as Justin survives, which it looks like they will, although conditioning Ro conditioning Rokara. Big hand yeah. of stuff. Yeah, this is a gigantic Rokara. This turtle is about to do some lifting as well. Rokara can rush in, buff herself. A <laughs> turtle can rush in. Although now we're back to that same question you were you were raising on earlier turns. With a cascading having already gone. Are we more worried about Cascading Disaster, a second Cascading Disaster, or a second Twisting Nether? Yeah, it's, it's a tough call. Um, you don't necessarily want to just commit everything and then lose to Nether Strongman. And then just be at the mercy of top-decking Alex. Yeah, which is about where we are. Okay, gonna go for... Okay, gonna get around a fully upgraded... Uh, I guess it's all... Oh, okay, I'm going... They never have other nether. <laughs> yep, Actually, never... does the list run one or two? Because that might also have informed that decision. It, it does have two. Okay. So there, there is a they second never nether, have it. Is, but they don't have it. Justin's uh, logic here. And okay, Yashiraj has to be played right in order to find that other cascading and strongman. This corrupts the other strongman as well. This is going to clear three, and, I mean, pretty good hits, all things considered. Lucky Soul to... maybe draws yeah. some frags and gets some healing. Does not, but double 6-6 six, six taunt, and it's still going to be pretty hard for Justin to get through. Yeah, uh, and the... Not the over off, yet. Off, also off. killed the turtle in advance of this turtle spike. 2-5, gone. Ganarg wakes up and overrides it with a 3-2. Oh, that's right. Just missing out on a bunch of overtime damage. Athletic studies, studies rip. Studies could be good. Not that good. Ooh, nah, yeah. It's funny because ordinary in any other game state, I'd be like, oh, yeah, these are all pretty okay. You could broomstick maybe to give your... Uh, probably has to be bumper car because of how these minions line up with the 6-6s. Six yeah. Justin is still almost there. And actually can use the riders, can use the new riders that come off this bumper mm -hmm. car. And in, in addition, gosh, he's, he's going to be able to land weapon face. It has to. And the <laughs> weapon is... face prevents your opponent from being able to tap to lead off their turn. Unless, of course, they draw a frag. Yeah, I was going to say five frags in deck. This is close. This is really, really close. Uh, I mean, obviously, I... Jaraxxus is going to have to be played by Python to not die to the weapon. And Justin is a top decked Alex away from winning this game, almost just impossible to stop. So here comes Jaraxxus. This is a lot of damage incoming, too. And just adding even more soul fragments, just saying as long as Justin's next draw is All not right, it's Alex a one in 13. Here we go. And a does Justin have time to hit a Watley as well to potentially hit? I think he does. Yeah, he doesn't just die on the next turn. Yeah, sword uh, eater. Well, <laughs> is... that stalls things and gives him the ability to win over two turns, but it's not enough damage even. Uh, two okay. swings, and there's so much damage coming back. Python finds a frag. Oh, this is nuts. What is inside the Scorpid I mean, that can heal? Do you, do you play Ticketus to try to burn the Alex? Probably not, because you'd get him closer to drawing the Alex if you whiffed. Right. <laughs> it's, it's a strange uh, game of chicken there, where if, if you... Maybe do it. it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess. He's doing it! <laughs> like, please hit Alex. Please don't get him closer to drawing Alex. Athletic what do we see? Studies, playmaker, Gnar, no Alex. No Alex. No Alex. No Alex. Who's? Oh, there's no <laughs> Alex! And no Watley. Oh, oh, that's a the brick. worst possible draw off the top for Justin, and that is game over. Mr. Python finds a way to get the win ever so close. Whew. Oh my gosh. Wow. What a you, know, you know, we were talking about this at the very beginning, before the tournament even started, the philosophies of coming in with either full control or, you know, full tempo. And here in the finals, we see... Full control, Mr. Python, and full, not full aggro, but just like tempo combo stuff. 
and quite a bit of aggro, honestly. <laughs> and uh, they both made it to the grand finals. Both of the strategies incredibly powerful and good enough for first and second place. Big congratulations to Mr. Python. And, you know, well played to Justin Time as well. I mean, an excellent showing. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations to both players. Big congrats to Mr. Python. Uh, just showing up and winning THL tournaments. It's what he does. Uh, but uh, very well played uh, just all the way through, I think, by both players. Sorry. I just saw the picture you posted in the production chat of uh, THL event, Mr. Python winning. <laughs> oh, yeah. I will... Sorry. Make a separate call just of that, Mr. Python. I don't think he's in this Discord. Okay, perfect. We can meet up with you there. Uh, I'm sorry, Ron. I stepped on. Hey, Ron. Hey, hey. Adding who that we have missing right now. Awesome. So, uh, wow, I, that, was, that was quite the thriller. And I assume yeah. Mr. Python is uh, going to be joining us soon as well? Yes. Nice. And in Python right now, um, Dollabiz needs to friend with us. This was really crazy. Yeah, that was a, a pretty nutty match. Yeah. Series for sure. Welcome, Mr. Python. Congrats. Hello? Hey, Hello. Hey, congratulations. Yes, and thank you. How did it feel? Um, it feels pretty good. Um, I, I do want to say, though, before the interview begins, I made my lineup to target priests. And yeah. I, played, <laughs> oh, I, I, played, I played one person that had priests in their lineup. That was pretty funny. And <laughs> the funny. one person that you played just played Celestial. Yeah, three and times. they didn't even play it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which was uh, possibly my favorite uh, match of the entire series. The shenanigans that were happening uh, with you playing against Celestial was pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. That was a pretty that was a pretty fun set. I think the the funniest part was when uh, I was on the mage and he had just popped off on like a pretty big turn. And then I had like I like top decked flow and I was able to play like all my zero mana cards. It was pretty fun. Oh yeah. In that second game, the Druid versus yeah. El Mage game. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think he actually wins there if you don't have like, exactly well, flow to yeah, just Okay, now my deck is zero. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, can you talk to us? One one big highlight I thought at the end of that game was the decision: Do I play Ticketus or not? I want to burn Alex, but I also yeah. don't want to get him closer to drawing Alex. Right, Were you exactly. agonizing about that? Yeah, I was, and I it didn't really hit me until I didn't burn Alex, and I was like, oh, I just made a deck spinner. <laughs> he might actually draw it now. He top deck conditioning, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, he had um he had a chance. I it was the turn I played. Uh, Yashiraj and I had the double strongman. He, uh, I think he top decked athletic studies and he had a chance to get the Dark Moon Rabbit, but he missed it thankfully. Yeah. I had to sweat out those last few turns of that game for sure. It was an exciting uh, thing to watch throughout though, but uh, once again, we are here at the end of a THL tournament with Mr. Python taking down the victory, uh, as is, I guess, becoming common now. How does it feel to be uh, the, uh, the consistent THL tourney champ? Yeah, I, I just like playing tournaments in general, so it's always nice to see THL uh, hosting a tournament. So I join those, try to do the best I can. And fortunately, the past couple ones I've been able to, I think um, the past couple I've like either finished in the semifinals or like I, I remember the last one I lost in the final. So it feels pretty good to uh, break through and get the win in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned at the beginning that you were aiming for a target priest uh, strategy. Uh, obviously, yeah. not not a lot of uh, priests out there for you to run over. But yeah. for the field, uh, we we didn't get to see all of your matches 
Um, how did your, I mean, full control, even against Priest, seems like it still got there. How are you feeling about your lineup at on this end yeah. of the tournament? Yeah, I it wasn't, the matches that I played, I faced some pretty interesting lineups, not exactly what I expected. There's more like aggro than I expected would be brought. Um, I think in my semifinal match, I faced like an aggro shaman, a weapon rogue, a face hunter, and like something else. And I thought I wasn't going to get through there because I brought like control warlock and spell mage, both pretty bad into uh, aggro decks. But with uh, with encanter's flow, anything is possible. So uh. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Uh, and just a quick follow up on that mage. Uh, we noticed that you are playing the one shooting star, two combustions, no. Uh, deck of lunacy version uh, obviously there's a, a yeah. several versions floating around just uh no no deck of lunacy you prefer the 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 burn or what uh yeah well like i said since i was expecting a kind of a slower uh slower lineups from people i thought that the more consistent burn approach would just be better in hindsight it looks like lunacy probably would have been the way to go with all the aggro lineups that were there um but I, I also disenchanted Lunacy when it was... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I disenchanted it when it was for 1,600 dust, and I haven't made it again. So I guess that also Fair. swayed my, my decision. Fair. Um, I have a final question. I, okay. We've already been live for four hours, and I do want to make yeah. sure the stream ends at some point. Um, <laughs> I just want to say if you have any shout-outs, anything you would like to say, um, floor is all yours. Yeah, I just I shout out the biggest shout out obviously goes to the whole THL community and um, the people that, you know, came up with this pride tournament idea. I think it's a great idea and supporting a great cause. So kudos to the THL community as a whole. And um, yeah, I was just happy to be a part of it. Awesome. Um, I want to take this time to thank Ron Mexico, Dollabiz, and Two Star Mako for casting today. I hope you all had a lot of fun. Oh, it was a blast. Yeah, happy oh, yeah. to be here. Um, you know, big congrats to Mr. Python again, and thank everybody for tuning in and, you know, being a part of this. It, it's always so much fun when we get to have an opportunity like this, and uh, great to spend this time with you guys. Absolutely. I, did, I had no idea it was four hours until you said that. I was like, no way. And then I looked at the clock, like, oh my God, he's right. <laughs> Yeah, I had fun. I was laughing the whole time. I was just really enjoying this tournament. I want to congratulate and thank Mr. Python for playing. That was amazing. And I also want to take this time to thank every single player who played today and all our viewers. Special thanks to Justin, who made second place. And I don't know if we have the result of third and fourth match yet, but thank you for those who were over there. I believe it was Azionix. Uh, Azionix uh, yes, taking it, Azonix taking took third a three one over Roadrunner, so he is our third place, and Roadrunner will be our fourth. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations to Azonix. And with that, I believe that is it for us tonight or today. Um, I don't know if there's a show tonight or not. Um, I don't think so because probably not. Um, but I want to thank everyone who watched, everyone who played. And the final thing to say is Battlegrounds Tournament incoming in two weeks, so we hope to see you then. That's right. Later, everyone. Have a good one. Take care.